This is the Match Game 74, production number 0141. Air date to be announced, VT Yard 119.74, and it's take one. Get ready to match the stars. Horse and Bean. Brett Summers. Charles Nelson Riley. Meredith McRae. Richard Dawson. And Marsha Wallace. As we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 74. And now, here's the host of Match Game 74, Gene Rayburn. Can't talk without a microphone. How are you, Johnny Olson? Good. Listen, I'm very happy to see everybody here, uh, both uh, there and there and there, and especially welcome. Uh, it's always nice to see new faces here, and we've got some. We are very happy to see Marsha Wallace of the it's Bob Newhart. It's the same face. It's the same face. Time I'm here, yeah. Are you happy to be here? Oh yes. Good. And we're happy to see this. Oh. <laughs> Boy, are we happy to see you? <laughs> She just made a movie in Spain with her husband, Greg Malavy. You right. started it and co-produced it, right? It wasn't in Spain. It was here. It was here? That's right. Oh. Yeah. All right. Well, go to Spain. <laughs> we just came back from Spain, but we didn't do a movie there. All right. What did she... No, don't answer that question. It's a scar. And Orson, what are you up to? <laughs> <laughs> You're down there. No, it's just... <laughs> See, that's his... Uh, <laughs> we'll try it again the next show, Orson. Are you all right? Yeah, well, I'm fair to middling. No. Yes, I've just been signed to do the uh, life story of Gertrude Stein. That's why I've... Uh... <laughs> all right. Now, let's say hello to our two players, Phyllis McDaniel and Jim Dunn. Hello there, two players. Jim Dunn's a current champion. He's won uh, one game, right? One game. You got 600 bucks to your credit. Yes, I do. I like that outfit. Thank you very You're much. You're a very uh, well-dressed fellow there, Jim Dunn. Well, thank you. You ready to have a go at it? I sure am. We started this game last time we were all together, and we finished round one. And, Phyllis, you finished your end of round two, didn't you? Right. You're up to four. And when we pick up here with the second and final round, you're going to have to score three matches to stay in the game. Four, however, will win it for you. We're going to get to that right after we get to this message for you. Tune in, turn on, and blank out. With that. All right, here we go, friends. <laughs> Almost walked in front of the shot there, didn't you, right there? Oh, he's quick, that tall, skinny Iris Kutch. All right. This is for you, Jim. Remember, three to tie, four to win. Oh, mercy. Now, last time, uh, uh, Brett, you do not participate. Because okay, dear. Uh, you were matched last time. Yes, Everybody else does. Though. Here we go. Sir Lancelot said, I better look for another job. My pet dragon just blanked on King Arthur. <laughs> Sir Lancelot. Do you remember him, Richard? Yes, sir. Sir Lancelot said that. I better look for another job. My pet dragon just blanked on King Arthur. No peeking, Brett. No. She's not in. She can pee. I, I, oh, I, I, that's I'm right. not doing anything. Pee. I, I get to pee. All right. Gee, Charles, what a wick. I see the audience likes the question. Well, you hear the answers. Everybody ready over here? Okay. Now, Jim, we call on you. Sir Lancelot said I better look for another job. My pet dragon just blanked on King Arthur. Just sat. Just sat on right. King Arthur. Okay. He sat on King Arthur. Yes. Orson, what do you say to that? Well, I was afraid that he was going to do something terrible on King Arthur. Oh, I see. Fortunately, he was castle broken. Oh. <laughs> So he breathed fire on he him. He breathed fire. A dragon would do that. Of course he? he would. Yes, indeed. Nasty oh. thing to do. But... All right. Charles Nelson Riley. Rather than take the time with saying breathes fire, I said flame. He flamed on him. Now, Jim, I point out to you, you must match your three remaining celebrities to stay in the game. Meredith, we call on you. Well, I sort of agreed with him. I said breathed. He breathed. <laughs> so, Charles McDaniel's the winner. Congratulations.
I see people are squealing for you. She's got a lot of rooters there. And Jim, you've got a lot of rooters here. Who's rooting for you in the $600? Somebody there? My, Good. My wife does. Listen, it was a pleasure to meet you. And Thank I'm you. happy you're not leaving here empty-handed. Jim, you've been a marvelous contestant. Jim Dunn, ladies and gentlemen. Bye. Bye. Okay. Isn't that neat the way that works? The whole thing turns around like that. You ready for it? Okay. All right. I'll start. Okay. We polled a recent studio audience, Phyllis, and we got their best response to this. Club blank. Now, the answer they gave most often is worth $500 to you if you match it. Second most frequent response, $250. And if you match a third, it's $100 for you. Now, you can get a little help from our celebrities. Three, to be specific. Which ones do you want? Richard, of course. You want Richard? Yeah. Of course. Yes. Well, uh, actually, the night I had to spend the evening with two golf pros, we became a club sandwich. <laughs> club sandwich. <laughs> club sandwich. Brett. Brett, say, what do you say? I, I say clubhouse. Clubhouse. Mm, that's where I became a sandwich. All right. So you got a sandwich and you got a clubhouse. One more celebrity. Marsha. Uh. Marsha's thinking. Yeah. Had two. What's that? I had two. You had two? Yeah. You can't think of another one? Club soda. Club soda? You accept that? Okay. So you've got clubhouse, club sandwich, and club soda. You may choose one of those or give us one of your own. What would you like to do? Clubhouse. House. House. She chooses a house. We are looking for a clubhouse. She hopes it's up there. We're going to find out if it is up there right now, and if so, where. First, may we see the $100 response? Club sandwich is there. It's the one that Richard gave you. That may be a good omen. Let's find out now. We're still looking for clubhouse. What's under the $250 response? Clubhouse it is! Congratulations. Well... What do you think's under the $500? Steak. Club steak? Yes. Club soda. Club soda. All right, here is the $500 response. Club soda's right. Okay, Marsha's the one you gave. Club soda. There yeah, was right. a large group from the Benet Brith in that night. That's right. Now, Phyllis, you've got the $250. That means you're going to be playing for 10 times that amount, or... $2,500. Now, to collect, you got to match one celebrity. Head-to-head -head has to be an exact match. Choose one now. I'd still like Richard. You'd still like Richard. You get ready to write, Richard? I certainly will. <laughs> and you'll face me, if you would, please, Phyllis, and I'll get the $2,500 question. Blank wheel. W-H-E-E-L. Blank wheel. <laughs> Okay, Phyllis, he has finished. Now we need an answer from you. How do you fill in the blank? Blank wheel. Wagon. Wagon wheel. Okay. Now for $2,500, Richard, may we see your answer? I have a terrible feeling that Ward Bond is going to come back and beat me up. I said spinning wheel. Spinning wheel is good. Wagon wheel is good. There are a number of good choices there. Well, listen, Phyllis, you're still a champ. You've got $350, and in a moment or so, you're going to meet another player. But first, we've got to pass along a message for you, and this is it. GSN presents... Mark Goodson, I don't think he ever created a show. But he could take a bad idea and turn it into a good one. He could take a good idea and turn it into a blockbuster. He had that talent. Stay tuned for more of that 70s hour on GSN. But he was a cheapskate. He never paid me the bastard. <laughs> now, we're all set to start another game, and to do that, we have to introduce a brand new player, and we're very happy to see Nigel Johnson. Hello, Nigel. You know Phyllis? Now, Nigel, would you tell us a little bit about yourself, please? Oh, I'm just so excited. <laughs> Are you excited? Yes. You like to hold my um, hand. Will that calm you down? Or does that get you more excited? Gets me excited, I'll tell you that. I imagine it calms her down. <laughs> Where are you from, oh, Nigel? Uh, I live in California. <laughs> Camarillo. 
From where? In Camarillo. Yeah. And are you married and all that? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else you want to say? Oh, I have a wonderful five-year-old boy. My I'll husband's bet. in the audience. Where is he? <laughs> He's sitting there somewhere, is he? The sixth one. The sixth one? And six more days. Is your sixth be... husband? What kind of... No, that's not... Like that? <laughs> okay. And in six more days, we'll be celebrating our 10th anniversary. Oh. <laughs> okay, Nigel. Good luck to both of our players here. Shall we begin? I'll push the button, reveal two questions, and Nigel asks you to make a selection. Yes, A, please. She wants A. Everybody plays, and this is it. The Sultan has 3,000 wives. Some of them he's never even blanked. <laughs> the Sultan has 3,000 wives. Some of them he's never even blanked. I'm finished. You're finished. All right. Okay, oh, Orson, put in the slot up there. Oh, yeah. mercy, and away mercy. we go. All right, now let's get a response from Nigel. The Sultan has 3,000 wives. Some of them he's never even... Uh, seen. Seen, okay. <laughs> Some of them he's never even seen. Yes, because he's <laughs> too tired to open his eyes. <laughs> Why do you say that? Very <laughs> good. <laughs> Seen is her answer. You, you yes, did actually, write something. Actually, it sounds like a wonderful deal, but when you picture the poor sultan, he gets up in the morning, he stumbles into the bathroom, and there's 6,000 stockings hanging there. That's it. <laughs> Met. Met. Same as seen. Yeah. Met and seen is a match. Okay, that's one for you, Maggie. Brett, what do you say? I know you're not going to believe this. I believe it. I said seen. Ah. Seen. Seen. You're doing okay. How about you? Since I was known as Four Eyes in high school, I said seen too. Seen. <laughs> Meredith, what do you say to this? Well, I'll keep the record going. I said seen too. Uh -oh. This is very unusual. On a first round question, isn't it, Richard? Now the bad news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, Sultan's wives should be obscene, but not heard. <laughs> so I said love. Some of them is never even love. Nigel says she thought of that, but she didn't say it. What did you say, Marcia? Well, I said, I figured he met him at the reception, you know, with coffee and cake. So I said, kissed. He kissed. That's beautiful. He was too puckered to pucker. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Four for you. And now, Phyllis, this is for you. Everybody plays. Mm. Near-sighted Mr. Magoo flipped his cigar ashes into Mary's blank. <laughs> Near-sighted Mr. Magoo flipped his cigar ashes into Mary's blank. Okay, upper tears ready? Don't think too hard, Marcia. <laughs> Okay, now they're all set, so Phyllis, we'll get a response from you. Flipped his cigar ashes into Mary's... Mouth. You... Mouth. Sorry, mouth. Mouth. She was a big talker. She was a big talker. Yeah. Mouth. She says mouth. Flip the cigar ashes right into her mouth, Orson. I'm sure that most of us in the panel would put mouth. I, I didn't, but I, I was going to say soup. I figured that was a little disgusting, but then I didn't know she was going to say mouth. I put lap. Into her lap, yes. huh? Yes. Okay. It flipped him into her lap, and I landed there in a neat little pile, and she looked down and let out the tiniest scream imaginable. <laughs> okay, Brett. There was a hot call in them. <laughs> we just forget this round. No, no, no. <laughs> you gonna show your uh, I actually, this actually did happen to me once. Yes. I w but it wasn't Mr. Magoo. Well, it's another story. A neckline. Into the neckline. Yes. Yeah, right, okay. But, you see, that's not exactly right, because you see, she put mouth. Right. She started out with mouth. It didn't go in her mouth because it went past her neckline. <laughs> and it didn't go into his lap because, you see, the bosom got in the way. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I'm <all the> best. <laughs> Speaking of love with Meredith, would you... <laughs> Well, May we see your answer, All please? right, after he dropped it in her bazoom, yeah. he dropped it in her glass. In a glass. Yeah. She had drink, a, a, <laughs> all right, a little club soda there. Richard, what do you say? Oh, there's only one place to put it. My own mouth. In the mouth. 
There's one, Phyllis. Okay, Marcia. Uh, well, into her drink, I think she was having a lime phosphate at the time. A lime phosphate, yes, yeah, good. So at the end of round one, it's four to one in favor of Nige Johnson. We're going to get to round two right after we get to this message for you. Go. Okay, we've finished round one, and we'll go to round two and ask Nige to make a selection. Yes, A again, please. A is what she wants. Last time you matched four of our celebrities so that only two will participate. Richard and Marcia, you are the only two who will respond to this. I'm not surprised. Yes. P.T. Barnum would do anything to make a buck. He even sold tickets to his blank. <laughs> Peaky Barnum. All right. Let's see how Nige feels about P.T. Barnum, who do anything to make a buck. He even sold tickets to his... Shower. To shower? That's all I can think. <laughs> they don't give men showers. What kind of shower do you mean? Would you clarify Just that? Shower. Oh, when oh, he was taking a bath. The shower bath. Oh, I see. He had this glass enclosure, and apparently people walk up and put their dollar down and say, "Oh, there's P. Oh boy, what did you say?" Very, very interesting. <laughs> I said funeral. Funeral. Okay, Marcia. I'm so proud to have like minds. Funeral. Funeral. Right. Okay, so you remain at four, and now, Phyllis, I point out to you, you need three to tie. Four, however, will win it for you, and this is what we have for you. Richard is the only one who will not participate. Everyone else will. Alice said. Oh! Alice said, our new neighbors are really weird. The wife keeps her husband in a blank. <laughs> That's what Alice said. Our new neighbors are really weird. The wife keeps her husband in a blank. <laughs> if that makes you laugh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Very fun. <coughs> all right. We're all set over here, so we got a call on the champ. Alice said our new neighbors are really weird. The wife keeps her husband in a... Cage. Cage. In a cage. Now, she said cage. That answer hadn't we occurred to her. me. What did you say, Orson? We heard her. What did you say? I was gonna say cage. Do you know that over at The Exorcist, they do an enormous business at the popcorn stand before the movie? Why? Because nobody likes to have the dry heaves. <laughs> I changed it to box. Box. That's a word I like the sound of, box. All right. Well, that does not match cage, so we'll call on Brett. Uh... I uh, keep it. I'm the neighbor. You are the neighbor. I'm the weird neighbor, and I keep Jack Klugman in the deep freeze. In the deep freeze. That's how he's Now so you young. must re uh, match three of our remaining celebrities to stay in the game. Charles Cage. I put closet. Oh. Closet is on that cage, so Nigel is the winner. Would you come down, please? Congratulations, Nike. You've got $100 now. You've won the game. We've got to say goodbye to Phyllis McDaniel. She's not leaving empty-handed either. She's won $350. Nice to meet you, Phyllis. Goodbye, dear. Hello there. Hi. What would you like to do now? Okay. All right, let's do it. Here it is. You want to hold my hand? All right. You know how this goes? Yes, I do. We polled a recent studio audience, Nige, and we got their best response to this. Blank million dollar. Blank million dollar. Oh. Million dollar blank? Oh, it's... Well, that changes everything. Yeah, they, uh, all right. It's not printed that way, but you understand, don't you, Nige? The blank goes at the end. It's million dollar blank. And, uh... If you match uh, the answer given most often by that studio audience, you know, you'll win the $500 and $250 and $100. A little help from our celebrities. Which ones do you want? Uh, Richard, please. What you were when you were born, a million-dollar baby. Million-dollar baby. All right. Uh, Charles, please. Charles Nelson Riley. Million-dollar prize. I know it's not the best answer in the world, but you think a number two. <laughs> 
Million dollar prize, he said. All right, one more celebrity, Nike. I'll settle for 500,000. Uh, Orson. Orson, can you think of something? Million dollar blank. Yes, I can. What can you think of? You Another day. Oh, no, right. Another uh, million dollar... <laughs> million dollar... And now stay tuned for million dollar. <laughs> Orson's answer is million dollars. Okay. All right, so you got million dollar baby and million dollar prize. Now you can choose one of those or give us one of your own. Can you think of something that you'd like better than either of those? I like baby. I say baby. Million dollar baby. I found a million dollar baby. Okay, you think she's right, audience. All right, we'll find out if million dollar baby is up there. First, may we see the $100 response? Million dollar legs. Yeah, that was a good one. None of us thought of that. Okay. Here is the $250 response. Million Dollar Baby is up there, Richard. Congratulations. What's under the $500 if you're so smart? Million Dollar Movie. Okay, here it is. The $500 response. Million Dollar Movie, you were right. That's a very smart audience. Okay, you've got the $250. We'll get back and tell you what happens next. But first, we've got a message for you, friends. Here it is. Gene Rayburn asking you to join us next time for Match Game 74. Bye. Today's Constellation Prizes are a Eurasian Fellowship Action Cleaner with powerful fans, jet motor, convenient 7-piece tool pack, which really cleans everything from rounds to curtains. This is the Match Game 74, production number 0144, our date to be announced, VT Yard 119.74, and it's take one. Get ready to match the stars. Orson B. Brett Summers. Charles Nelson Riley. Meredith McRae. Richard Dawson. And Marsha Wallace. As we play the star studded at Big Money, Match Game 74. And now, here's the host of Match Game 74, Gene Rayburn. Microphone before you say, how do you do? Nice to have you with us. How is everybody over here? We're wonderful. Yeah, you look great. Just yes. fair. No, no, you're not no. just fair. Bless you. You're... Can I have the rest of your three musketeers? Don't oh, know. Yeah. Are you eating on this show? She, and we ate, just... she ate one of my three musketeers. It was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're all ready. Their blood sugar is up and all that. So <laughs> let's say hello to our two players here. Virginia Shook and Julie Roach. Hello, ladies. This lady has won a lot of money, hasn't she, John? $5,600. Wow. And she's being challenged by Virginia, and we finished round one, and we're going to start round two in a moment or so. Are you ready for that? Okay. Okay. Round two coming up, folks. But first, we've got this message for you, and here it is. <laughs> here we go. All right, ladies, if you're ready, I'll push this button and reveal our second and final round and ask Virginia Shook, our challenger, to make a selection. I'll try B again, please. B. Her daughters keep advising her to try B, and that's what she's going for, and this is it. The Chinese mustard Albert ate was so hot. Would you like to know how hot it was? How hot? I'm glad you asked. It made his blank curl. I had my hearing aid 
turned down. Could you do that one more time, the sweetheart? The Chinese mustard Albert ate was so hot it made his blank curl. Oh, I get that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, is something I can do for you, sir? Have you finished writing your answer? I have. Anyone ever told you you have very lovely hands? <laughs> Are you finished up there? Yes. They're finished down here. So, Virginia, we call on you for a response. The Chinese mustard Albert ate was so hot, it made his... I can't remember what it's called, but hair. Hair? Yeah. You mean the hair back well, here? Well, you know, they got the long thing, but I'll say hair. Oh. Well, the whole head. Hair. You know, the hair on your head. Yeah. Made his hair curl. I thought she was pointing Honestly. the nape of her neck or something like that. Orson, she says hair. What do you say? I said it made his doo-doo curl. It doesn't fit, but I wanted to work it in the show. No, I said hair. Hair is a match. <laughs> okay, Brett, what do you say? I say Orson Bean should leave the building. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said... What did I say? Oh, oh, yes, it's all right. I said hair. Hair is another match for you, Virginia. All right, Charles. I was going to say hair curl, but it's a very sensitive subject because mine can anymore, but my toes can still do it. Toes. Okay, what curled, Meredith? The last time I had uh, hot mustard, I made my tongue to uncurl. Made your tongue so curl. Oh. It'll do that. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Okay. That's Richard, eating trick. mustard again. Would you give I me a call? Terrific. Get your hands off Just that my, fat. my uh, hair curl. Yeah. Hair curl. Yeah. You're doing very well with that, Virginia. What do you say, Marcia? What do I say? Yeah, what do you say? Hair. Hair. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that's four for you. Now let's see. You've got to match three celebrities to stay in the game and achieve a tie. Four, however, will win the game. Here we go. Last time you matched Meredith. No. Yes. Oh, so right, you were, last time. Right? Last time. So I you, thought it was my time, yeah. but no, you're right. I'll run the show. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Meredith, you're not in production yeah, yet. Right. I was the only one that got it right yesterday. Shall right. we push forward? Shall we do that? Here it is. Moving along. Bob lost one of his contact lenses down Ellen's blank. <laughs> Bob lost one of his contact lenses down Ellen's blank. Julie is thinking about that one. All right. Everybody ready? Here we go, Julie. We need an answer from you. Bob lost one of his contact lenses down Ellen's... Bra. Yeah, speak up. She said bra. Her answer is bra. Now, we'll find out what your answer is. Right now, it's show-and-tell time, yes. Orson. down Ellen's drain. No, I put it down her dress. That's what I meant. No, they don't oh, match that. Oh, dare you. A show no. of hands, people. Whether well, no. that should match. No, <laughs> no, no. no they people can't. Have <laughs> the people, people have spoken. spoken. Brett, what do you say? I say you are so cute in beige. It's your best color, outside of pink. Yes. Oh, yellow. Yellow is a very good color. It matches your skin. I think you're uh, in love. Now, don't want that buzzer coming up here. Now, I mean it. If hers matches, mine shouldn't. Neckline. Yes. Yes. Yes, they say yes. Okay. You need two more to stay in the game, well, Julie. Where else but the neckline of a dress could have contact lenses well, fly? Well, now, hold everything. Contact lenses Dude. don't fly up, you know. Hold everything. The logic over there, you yes. see, is... Never mind the logic over there. Conceivably, uh, well, you said dress, right? Yes. All right, it could, could have fallen down the back of her dress, you oh, see. And specifically, front. that's the or front. the side. Okay, Charles Nelson Riley, may we have your response? Kiss me. <laughs> uh, okay. One more for the tie, we go over here to Richard Dawson. What do you say? Out. You're out. I say, what about some drinks over here? <laughs> oh, uh, no, I meant the neckline. I said dress, but obviously that's where I meant. No, no uh, match there. Now, you second. must match Marsha to achieve the tie. Let's the see if it happens. getting surly. Can't it's all up to you. Pressure. You can. No. You're a trooper, Marsha. Remember that. Blouse. Blouse. No. Okay. You you Virginia Shook is a winner. Congratulations.
Okay. Will you, uh, thank you. <laughs> you may hold on to my arm while I say goodbye to Julie Roach, who's been a splendid contestant. Thank you. You have a beautiful smile, a marvelous personality, and $5,600. Good night, Julie. Don't we make a lovely couple? Well, this couple will return to you in just a moment or so, but first we've got a message. Shall we take a stroll through the garden, my dear? Yes. <laughs> No, you're not hallucinating. This lady has won her first game. She's got $100. Now she's going to have a try at over $5,000. You ready for that, Virginia? Not yet. <laughs> We're a symphony in beige, aren't we? Okay, well, let's have a try at it anyway, shall we? We pulled a recent studio audience, and we got their best response to this. Light blank. Now, the answer they oh, gave most often is worth $500 to you if you match it. Second most frequent response, $250 if you match that one. And if you match a third one, it's $100 to you. Now, which uh, celebrities would you like to get a little assist from here? Uh, Richard Dawson. Richard, what do you say? How do you fill in that light blank? Oh, I answered an ad for light housework. Light, light house? house. Lighthouse. Lighthouse. Just nod your head once and... <laughs> I'm not interested in whether you're groaning or cheering, folks. Yes. I've got money. I've got money. <laughs> Lighthouse. Lighthouse and is And we've been going around response. together ever since. Okay. Meredith? Meredith McRae, what do you say? I think I would say light bulb. You'd say light bulb. Especially okay. now with the energy shortage, right? Right. One more. Marsha. Marsha, what do you say to this? Hello. <laughs> 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 well, let's let's go for lightning. Lightning. <laughs> lightning. You thought lighthouse was bad, huh? <laughs> we got Ning over here. That's she put a Ning on the light soda. there. So you've got light bulb, lighthouse, and lightning. You may choose one of those as the You're answer, or give us one of your own. Right now, we have to call for a response. Light bulb. Light bulb, it is. Light Brigade? Yeah, you thought of I'm going to go Light Brigade. Light Brigade? Bulb. You want to go for the bulb? Yeah. Okay. We are looking for a light bulb, folks. Let's find out if it's up there first. May we see the $100 response? Lightweight is a good answer. None of us thought of that one, did we? Okay, still looking for a light bulb. Let's find out if it's under the $250 response. Lighthouse is there, the one that Richard gave you. Now, when Ning is under That's the right. next and one. They <laughs> <you. laughs> Ning, you Ning. think it's going to be Brigade? Ning. If it is, I'm going to be awful <laughs> mad. Oh, all right, find out right now. Yeah, Here is the $500 response. Terrific. Okay. Good luck. Well, Virginia, you've got the $500. That means you'll now be playing for 10 times that amount or $5,000. And now. a date with Gene Rayburn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you'll take it anyway. Now, you've got to match one celebrity head-to-head. -head. It must be exact match, and you have to choose one now. I'm going to go for Meredith. You're oh. going to go for Meredith? Good. Yeah. I've been going for it's Meredith for years, but she keeps Thanks, turning Jane. me down there. Everyone's okay. been going for Richard all week, so I'm happy to be gone for him. Meredith, you get ready to write, and Virginia will face me, and I will get the $5,000 question, and this is it. Write your answer to this, if you would, please. Jelly blank. Or jelly blank. I'll give you both accents. Meredith is finished, Virginia. We need your answer now. How do you fill in that blank? Jelly? Roll. Jelly what? roll, you say. Oh, jelly roll is not... For jelly roll. You say it was either fish or roll, and you went for jelly roll. That's because she's right. standing next to you, Rayburn. <laughs> <laughs> Meredith, for $5,000, may we see your answer, please? It was either fish or roll, and I went with fish. Oh! oh. Two good answers there, really, ladies. They were both excellent I was trying answers. I to do my ESP with you and hoping that you get it. Do you do ESP? Well, I was trying. You came close. You both thought of fish and roll. All right, Virginia, you've got $600. You're the champion. You're going to play another game. So let's meet another player right now. Here comes Patty Addison. Hello, Patty. Patty, 
you know Virginia Shook, do you? She's congratulating her. That's very sportsmanlike of you. <laughs> Patty, would you tell us a little bit about Patty Addison? Uh, other than I'm scared to death and nervous, <laughs> I'm from the Valley, and I have two small boys, Sean, five, and Ryan, two, and uh, I'm a wreck. <laughs> You're a wreck? <laughs> She doesn't look like a wreck to me. Does she look like a wreck to you? I think she's got it all together pretty good. Well, good luck, Patty. You know how to play our game. Let's uh -huh. get right to it, shall we? I'll push this button, and you as the challenger will make a selection. We ask you to do that because some contestants find some questions harder than others, and it's your choice. I'll take A, so Virginia can a. fail her girls. <laughs> a it is, Patty. Here it is. Everybody plays. Hmm? The nurse said to the psychiatrist, Doctor... Why is the couch covered with tomato sauce? And the psychiatrist replied, Because my last patient thought he was a blank. <laughs> Nurse said to the psychiatrist, Did you hear that, Patty? Doctor, why is the couch covered with tomato sauce? And the psychiatrist replied, Because my last patient thought he was a... Brett is finished. Oh, no, Brett's not finished. Now, Brett, now don't do that. Oh, oh now, just Brett, a minute. Now, on, now, now, just be nice. Now, oh, that's... that's, that's, that's All right, she's changing her mind, stage. and that's her okay. privilege. Okay, okay, now, I'm still ready before... Stage. Before Marsha. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody ready over there. Patty, the nurse said to the psychiatrist and so forth, because my last patient thought he was a... Bottle of ketchup. A what? Bottle of ketchup. That's bad. Because he thought he was a bottle of ketchup. Yeah. I don't think she's got it so together. <laughs> We're going to find out right now if she's got it together or not and see if anybody else says bottle of ketchup. What do you say, Orson? And one of the worst things that can happen to any doctor is a leaky patient. <laughs> a hot dog. A hot dog. Okay, no match there, Brett. I tore that answer up. Oh. <laughs> I what said did you put? Spaghetti o You know. Spaghetti. Yeah. Thank you. Tomato yeah. sauce. Okay. I said a one a meat One a meat to ball. <laughs> <laughs> one a meat to ball. <laughs> Bottle of ketchup is what she's looking for. What do you say? I at first was gonna say pizza maker, but I said a tomato. A tomato. You're getting close to a bottle of ketchup, but not yet. Richard? I happen to know that the patient was a hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> and Marsha. Ditto. Hamburger. Okay. Bad. So there's no match there, bad. and we've got a question for you, Virginia. It'll come your way in a moment or so, but first, we've got this message of interest for you. GSN presents Behind the Blank. What game show was inspired by the bonus round on Match Game? Was it Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, Trivial Pursuit, Family Feud, or Name That Tune? Stay tuned for the answer. You know which game show is inspired by the Match Game's bonus round? The correct answer is C. The polled audiences inspired the Family Feud's now infamous survey says. And former regular panelist Richard Dawson kissed Match Game goodbye and kissed a host of women hello. Stay tuned for more on GSN. Play Mind Games online now. Now let's finish round one and see how Virginia does with her end of this round. Everybody plays, and this is it. Hi, Here's a little poem. <laughs> Count Dracula said, with a leer and a drool, I married my wife because she's a blank. <laughs> Count Dracula said, with a leer and a drool, I married my wife because she's a blank. I hate to keep asking you to repeat these things, but... Just, uh, can you... Uh, oh, would thank you. Like... <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, I forgot you don't have it. I don't have my glasses. Does that help? <laughs> oh, I get it. Got it? Okay. 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 Uh, the red. All right. <laughs> We are waiting, Marsha. I know you are. God love you, Jane. We've waited all week for you, <laughs> okay. Marsha. We're getting tired of it. Now, I Virginia. Should be a... <laughs> Count Dracula said with a leer and a drool, I married my wife because she's a... Ghoul. A ghoul. All right. Ghoul is what she says, and let's see if we get any ghouls over here. There's a ghoul from Orson Bean. Brett, wanted, before we go on, I'd like to ask Virginia if she needs a partner. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Brett. 
That is the obvious answer, isn't it? Cool, good answer. <laughs> I mean, anybody would have gotten it like that, yeah. right? Except me, I said fool. Fool. <laughs> What is it? Um, Charles, you'll never marry me now, will you? Charles. <laughs> when there's a vacancy on the floor below, would you call me in the dressing <laughs> room? Vampire. Vampire. Vampire and ghoul do not match, I take it. Or what do you I? say about well, this? I didn't know poem either, somehow, and I said vampire. Oh, really? Was my reading that bad? At least bad? I knew it was a poem. With a leer and a drool, I married my wife because she's a blank. Oh, All right. Oh, Go ahead, Richard. Oh, rhymes with campfire, oh, wow. so should he ever come up with a poem with campfire? <laughs> I said ghoul. Ghoul is another match for you, Virginia. And now, Marshall. I don't enjoy being embarrassed on national television at all. Are you embarrassed on national yes. television? You're never going to guess I had trouble with this one. Texan. <laughs> well, Marsha. I guess we all have to agree she's embarrassed on national television, isn't she? Now, may, may I just pause for a moment and ask what your logic was in that? Absolutely none. Okay. Okay. Out and I, I don't ever want to be attacked on this show again. All right. <laughs> Okay, so it's two to nothing in favor of our champion at the end of round one, and we go to round two and ask Patty to make a selection. I'm taking B this time. <laughs> she wants B this time. All right, you didn't match anyone the first round, so that means everyone plays, folks. Mercy. So the king wouldn't lose the key to the queen's chastity belt. He tied it around his blank. <laughs> he tied it around his blank. All right. Lower tier is ready. So is the upper tier. All right, the upper tier is ready. Patty Addison. So the king wouldn't lose the key to the queen's chastity belt. He tied it around his... Body. Around his body. Waist. Body. His yeah, waist or body, yeah. she said. Waist or body is her answer. Is that okay right. with the judge over there? The judge is nodding his head. Waist or body is the answer. Orson, what do you say? Horse. No, I said neck. Neck. So that can't match body or waist. Brett? He had this terrific gold chain. It was yeah. fabulous. He left it to me, actually. And of course, he put the bloody key around his neck. Around his, his terrific neck. Gold chain. So so got two necks here, Patty. Charles? <laughs> okay, another neck. Three necks. All right, Meredith. I guess I like to go a little lower than that, Gene. Already? Yeah. Where, how far did you go? Race. There's one for you. You need one more here to stay in the running. What have you got there, Richard? Oh. If, uh, if you're ever going that way again... Let me know. <laughs> come up and see me sometime. <laughs> next. next. Okay. You've got to match Marcia to stay in the running. And Marcia? Temporarily redeemed here. Neck. Oh. Neck. Oh, no, no, no. no. She was looking for body. So Virginia is going to... All right, no, she's calm now. Two games, see how it is. Patty, it was a real pleasure meeting you. Thank you very much. Lovely lady, we've got a gift for you backstage. Patty Addison, many thanks for being with us. Now we got a message for everybody out there, and then we'll come back to you. We just have a moment to thank all of these beautiful and talented people and say goodbye to you, to thank you for joining us and hope that you're going to join us next time for Match Game 74. Gene Rayburn here. Goodbye. Today's Constellation Prizes are the Weekender by American Tourist Tour, designed to go everywhere by land, sea, or air, fiberglass reinforced construction, strong, lightweight luggage by American Tourist Tour, and a supply of arrow wax with acrylic and wax with the ruggedness of acrylic, the rich, warm glow of wax in one great shine, arrow wax. And Rice-A-Roni, the big flavor side dish is so quick, so easy, saute and simmer to flavor perfection. Rice-A-Roni, the San Francisco treat. This is Johnny Olsen speaking for Match Game 74. A Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. Stay tuned for Secret Storm next over most of these CBS stations.
This is Match Game 74, production number 0255, take one, Mark. Get ready to match the star. Joey Mitchell. Brett Sommer. Charles Nelson Riley. Patty Deutsch. Richard Dawson. And Marsha Wallace. As we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 74. And now, here's the star of Match Game 74, Gene Rivers. How's old John? Great. Are you all right, John? Ready to go. Good. You got a wild bunch out here? Yeah. Okay, we got a wild bunch out here. This what are you doing right. there? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you waving at somebody? <laughs> Don't you love him in his striped turtleneck? He looks like a prisoner. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you're on, Skelly. That's a pretty good straight line, isn't it? Yeah, I bet when she goes to the movie, she talks to the screen, too. You know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. If you're a... If you're all ready, yeah. I would like to say hello to our two players over here, Susan Warren and Barbara Jenkins. Hello, ladies. Say hello now. Here's our current champ. Susan has won $600. She's got a lot of money to her credit. And we started this game last time. She's being challenged by Barbara Jenkins, who uh, had her first round question scored one match with the word tonsils. It's a historic uh, moment on the show. The only time I ever thought Richard Dawson would be wrong, but he was right. <laughs> and uh, in a moment or so, we'll start uh, where we left off last time with your question around one. But first, we've got this for you, dear friends and gentle hearts. Do not leave us now. Hello there, friends. Here we are. <laughs> Push a little button and got this question for Susan Warren. Everybody plays because it's your first round question. Oh, oh thank God. Okay. When Tom Thumb goes to the beach, He's too tiny to use an inner tube, so he floats on a blank. <laughs> oh, he darling, do. now, I, that's one of those things, you know, that's hard for me to catch on to. You All don't right. have to do it again. You know what an inner tube is. You it's know it, the baby. old thing. They used to have them inside tires. They're about so big. Tom Thumb is so big, you see. When Tom Thumb goes to the beach, he's too tiny to use an inner tube, so he floats on a blank. <laughs> you really don't understand it at all, do you? You know, I never understand that. Yeah. Oh, you're blowing your smoke away from me. Is that what you're doing? Hmm? Huh? No, I was thinking. I, I have a nervous reaction when I think. Oh, you do that? I see. Besides, I didn't want anybody to know I was smoking. <laughs> That's all right if you smoke. We don't care if you smoke here. It's perfectly okay. As long as the, the, the uh, fire folk don't get you. Thank you, Everybody ready down here? Charles is ready, Brett is ready, and now it's going I have a terrific turn. answer, and I know it's That's right. That's splendid. Okay, Susan Warren, when Tom Thumb goes to the beach, he's too tiny to use an inner tube, so he floats on a blank. A thimble. A thimble? I think the audience is trying to tell you something, Susan. <laughs> They not like yeah. that answer, I can't tell. They did not like that answer. Really? Thimble, they say, is rotten. Now, Scoey, <laughs> her answer, according to the audience, was rotten. But audience, you want to hear a rotten answer. <laughs> Show us your answer, would you? You tell them, number 47853. <laughs> Go, Scoey, go. Uh, go, oh. baby. Well, I, I was just, uh, you know, the there's an operative word. <laughs> <laughs> there's an operative word. Word, and it was Tom Thumb. Yeah. And I was thinking those little rubber washers, you know, the little rubber washers? Yeah, that you put in faucets? Yeah. yeah. That's what he used to float on, a little rubber. A little washer. Come on, yeah. come on. Yeah. That's pretty good, right? I mean, he worked hard for that, didn't he? he he must have used 80 calories trying to figure that out with brain power there. All right, brainy lady. Well, I feel mine is the perfect answer. What? But of course, I've always been a little bizarre. I thought mine was the perfect answer. <laughs> I said rubber band. And a rubber band. It's smaller than an inner tube, but That's larger true. than a thimble. But it will not float. 
Of course a rubber band would float. A rubber band will not float. Don't argue with me. I'm a star. Honey, I was yeah. in my pool today with a rubber band. We just flow. <laughs> Charles. Is, do I speak to the producer or what do I do? <laughs> I said donut. <laughs> donut is a pretty good answer. Thank you. Donut, he said. <laughs> you heard him. Yeah. What do you say, little lady? Oh, God. I said an eraser. An eraser? <laughs> they don't float either. Sure they do when they're little and they're rubber. Well, when we're all finished, I'll tell you what the perfect answer is. Richard okay. may have it. I don't oh, know. Hello. Yes, right. <laughs> oh, perfect Richard. Perfect Richard. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me a second. <laughs> Head up, your hamburger. <laughs> you have to know a way to talk to him. A glazed donut. A glazed donut. All oh, right. that's perfect. Poor Tom Thumb is drowning there We're because drowning. no one's throwing him anything that he can float on. Marsha. Gene. It is Gene, isn't it? It is Gene, Marsha. <laughs> Yes. So I should have known that it was really dumb. <laughs> A little lifesaver. There's the answer. That's the answer. Right. Ain't no float. Yeah. I know they don't float. Well, but it's dumb as a rubber band. It's called a lifesaver, and it's a teeny little thing. Well, the next time you're drowning, I'll throw you one of them. <laughs> Today. Yeah, all right. So there's no score there. And as we go in a round two, it's one and nothing in uh, favor of the liberated lady. Liberated lady, what uh, would, you, would you like here, A or B? Oh, I think I'll try A. A, okay. Here we go. Now, let's see. Last time you matched, uh, oh, the genius <laughs> who keeps surrendering. Uh, but uh, So you do not pretend. Steve went to sleep and dreamed he was a jockey in the Kentucky Derby. When he woke up, he was whipping his blank toward the finish line. <laughs> now, I just want to make sure Barbara heard it. Steve went to sleep and dreamed he was a jockey in the Kentucky Derby. When he woke up, he was whipping his blank toward the finish line. <laughs> this is getting sillier for the day. Yes. Well, we never claimed this program was the Dead Sea Scrolls or anything like that. <laughs> Where's Burke and Evans today? That's right. Whatever happened to him? Yeah. Brett, are you finished? You're going to fiddle around there. Well, I'm Good. trying to figure out what's the best thing to put down. Put something, Brett. But what you put the last time? Rubber band. Dear Sam. <laughs> Come on, Brad, I'm double right. parked. Okay, now we're all set. What, dear? And we'll come over here and get a response from Barbara Jenkins. Steve went to sleep and dreamed he was a jockey in the Kentucky Derby. When he woke up, he was whipping his blank toward the finish line. His bottom. His bottom? Oh. Oh. Hey, that's not a bad answer now that I think of it. Uh, and, uh, and now that I hear it, she's he's whipping his bottom toward the finish line. You see? That's what he's doing there. Crazy about her. <laughs> okay. All right. Scully, she said he was whipping his bottom toward the finish line. Well, I, I guess if you're liberated, you say bottom, but uh, I, I'm, I'm captivated. I said buns. That's a match. <laughs> you used that earlier in the week, is it? You have a limited vocabulary. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I get it there. It's a good answer, and it matched her, and she's happy about that, and now we go to Brett. What does Fanny Flag have? <laughs> no, a front side. <laughs> so what do you whip when you want to win? A backside. A backside. That's another match. Okay, Barbara. Charles. I said wife. Okay. Well, Whipping his wife. Cocktail waitress from Encino, but they were married. <laughs> <laughs> Would you uh, sober us up here? No. 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 Well, then show us your answer. All right, I said wife. You too. said wife also. 
Okay, and Richard matched last time, so it means you go right to Marsha. Yes, well, I'm so tired of embarrassing myself on national television. Well, she said bottom. I know she did. Oh, it's not that. I well, just... you, you're not afraid to say bottom, are no, you? No, I didn't get anywhere near that area. See, I thought it was what he was... Uh, I oh, said the object. Blanket as in Gubby. Oh, I see. It's oh, his pillow. Oh, I see, he's whipping his pillow. We don't have to discuss it anymore. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that means you're up to three. Your question is yet to come, but right now, the business before the house is this commercial message. <laughs> okay, now, we've got this for you, Susan. Are you ready for it? You need three to tie, four to win another game. Everybody plays, because no one, she didn't match anyone in the first round. Melanie uh -huh. got blank in the Astrodome. <laughs> <laughs> Melanie got blank in the Astrodome. Is that the one in Fort Worth? I don't know. Wherever the Astrodome is, Melanie what? got blank in it. I only want to ask, what is an Astrodome? You don't know what an Astrodome is? Well, I might, but I'd like well, to... Well, the Astrodome is a large, enclosed playing field in Houston, Texas. Oh! Where they play baseball and football and all that. Oh, what happened then? I know. <laughs> I'd like to Did you? You what? I'd like oh. to redeem myself in this round, if at all possible. Well, your at your last round was terrific, Marcia. <laughs> well, you're a terrific oh. person. Oh, I am, in yes. my own right, That's and a right. fine dancer. That's right, a peachy kid and a good dancer is yeah. Marcia Wallace. Everybody, Charles, are you fiddling around up there? Are you going to play this game? I thought, I thought he was finished. He was chatting with you. I figured Just he talking. Had. Okay, now he's all set. Ready? Here we go, Susan. Melanie got blank in the Astrodome. Mugged. What's that? Mugged. Mugged? Oh. She got mugged? Houston's gonna love you. <laughs> got mugged. Got mugged in the Astrodome, she said. Scoey, what do you say? Well, there's an operative word. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us what it is, Scoey. Uh, well, well, I won't... Uh, Marsha got ball-gamed in the... <laughs> struck in the stomach with a ball once and in, in an astro wasn't well, actually in an astrodome but anyway what happened was uh, she was made love to <laughs> Susan Lawrence finally got mugged in the astrodome and I was scared to save mine <laughs> Charles what do you say I said that she got dizzy. <laughs> All right, now you've got to match the three remaining celebrities to achieve a tie, and let's see what happens with Patty. What do you say, Patty? I, I said that she got bagged in the Astros. She got bagged. <laughs> that does not match. Barbara Jenkins wins the game. What do you got, Kirk? Which tie? Okay. No mug. Congratulations, that's a hundred dollars for you. Stand by for a moment or so, Barbara. We'll say goodbye to Susan Warren. Susan, you'll be leaving with six hundred dollars. We thank you for thank being you. here. Thank you. It's great to meet you. Goodbye, Susie. Did you all wave to Susie? Yeah. You didn't wave, Charles. You didn't Charles, wave to Susie. Wave, to the wave right I'm now. still in love with Carlotta. <laughs> Well, you can wave you can't wait to every chick that comes by here. <laughs> See you around, chick. All right. <laughs> we have Barbara Jenkins is here now to have a go at a big money super match. And you know how this goes, and you have a chance at over $5,000. We polled a recent studio audience, and we got their best response to this. Blank Hopper. Now, the answer they gave most often is worth $500 if you match it. If you match the next one, it's $250. And if you match the third, it's $100. Three celebrities are allowed to help. Now, whom do you wish to get a little assist from? Uh, my prisoner, Richard. Uh, <laughs> your prisoner, Richard? Aren't they an adorable new couple? <laughs> Grass. <laughs> What's that? Grass. Grasshopper. Yeah. <laughs> OK. Another one of you, please. Marsha. Marsha. Jean. Marsha. Oh, El Blanco. Oh, no, this is terrible. 
Something must come to me. <laughs> Nothing comes to me. Marcia! Shane, Marcia! Oh, I'm sorry. Right. So there's a blank. It's now, all right, one honey, more celebrity. Right. Okay. Uh, Charles. Uh, Dennis. Dennis Hopper. Dennis Hopper. Very nice friend of mine. A very sweet, talented man. One of the two uh, answers so better than the chick with the polka dot dress in the front and row. And you may just choose the one of the. <laughs> You may choose one of those two answers or come up with one <laughs> completely your own. You know, it's entirely up to you, Barbara. I think I'll take Grasshopper. You'll take uh, Richard's answer, the Grasshopper. Going all the way with Richard, eh? Okay. Grasshopper is the answer she's looking for, and she hopes it's under there, under the $500 response. We're going to find out where it is right now. First, may we see the $100 response? Hippity Hopper. That week beyond would you Hippity would you have said hippity hopper? No. No. I never even what heard kind of audience hippity was that we had up here? Okay, we're looking for grasshopper. May we see the two hundred and fifty dollar response? Hedda hopper. Hedda hopper. That's a good that one, was right? mine. Third and last chance for grasshopper. Here is the five hundred dollar response. Grasshopper it is. Congratulations. <laughs> so, you've got the $500, Barbara. That means you now play for 10 times that amount or $5,000 to collect. You've got to match one celebrity head-to-head. -head. Choose one now, as if we didn't know. Richard. Richard. Okay. Here when do they you. take you away in chains? That's the part I like. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you face me for the bondage and discipline part. <laughs> you get ready to write, if you would, Richard. Fill in this blank. Danish blank. Danish blank. He's finished. Now, Barbara, what answer comes to your mind in order to match Richard in filling in this blank? Danish... Pastry. Danish pastry. Are you Danish? No, I'm Polish. You're Polish. All right. Richard, for five... Did you, did you say you're Polish? She is Polish, yes. It's the Half nicest Polish. Polish joke I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> for five thousand oh, dollars. question? The yeah. question is Danish blank. And what, what did... She it? said Danish pastry. I must get a room. I'm so confused. Danish pastry? <laughs> yes. Oh, I think you're going to hate me. It's show and tell time, Richard. Can we do something else for a while? <laughs> now pick up that card and show it to us now. This is for this is for Pomona, Jean. <laughs> Don't get involved with him. Will you get your own show, Richard? Wait a minute, that's a married man. I want you the money, for right. you got $5,600, and you're going to meet another player in a moment or so, but first we've got to do this message of interest to one and all. Here it is. All right, listen, we've got a new player here. Paul, we're going to do a little interview with you later, but right now we want to get right to this game, if it's all right with you, okay. Paul Rodkin. Okay. Uh, I'll push the button and ask you as a challenger to make a selection. B, please, Gene. B is what he wants, and B is what he gets. Everybody plays, folks. Soon after King Kong was drafted into the army, he was court-martialed for blanking an officer. <laughs> Soon after King Kong was drafted into the army, he was court-martialed for blanking an officer. Everybody write down something if you please. I see you're all busy writing. Charles is busy thinking. Now he's writing. He's always busy thinking and never busy writing. He's writing now. Marsha is writing. <coughs> <coughs> And we'll call on Paul Rodkin. Soon after King Kong was drafted into the army, he was court-martialed for blanking an officer. Eating. For eating an officer? <laughs> well, dear me, Scoey, he said King Kong was court-martialed for eating an officer. Well, I could have said that myself. <laughs> but it just didn't make much sense to me. So I said saluting an officer. Saluting an officer. 
Okay, that's a good answer. <laughs> Even though you got the buzz on it, Brett? Living in the jungle, he said capturing. For capturing an officer. Okay, Charles? <laughs> I said kissing. A kissing oh, officer. Now you say kissing. Yes. Well, you know King Kong. <laughs> what do you say about I Kingdom? said eating an officer. For eating an officer. And what do you say? I said swatting. For swatting an officer. Okay. Marsha? Uh, Gene, well, Marcia. I had another one of my flashes. Yeah. And I was thinking of the movie when he carried off Annette Funicello, whoever it was, so I said carrying off. For carrying off an officer. All right, so you scored one match there, and your first round of questions yet to come, but right now we've got this message for you. We've had a good time, haven't we? Say yes. yes, yes okay, yes. so I had a good time. <laughs> hey, I had a real good time. That's great. I'm from Love It, Join Texas. us next time, then we'll get together, we'll have these people. McLean Stevenson. Brett Summers. Charles Nelson Raleigh. Joni Summers. Richard Dawson. And Ann Elder. Gene Rabin from Ad 74. Join us next time. Goodbye. Match game 74, production number 0282, take one. Get ready to match the stars. Charlie Brill. Brett Summers. Charles Nelson Riley. Joyce Villapont. Richard Dawson. And Marsha Wallace. As we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 74. And now, Hey, what have you done now? You, you people. It, Brett's chewing gum is holding the mic. Uh, no, there's something wrong here. Now, wait a minute. There's something wrong. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're right on the sea, Dave. I, I can see by the shenanigans you're already. Now, Brett, what have you got there? It says West Hollywood Olympic 74, four score and seven years. You got all that up there front you there. Think, right in front. <laughs> West. You think I'm just another dummy, right? Right. I won many awards in this West Hollywood Olympics, I, 74. In what event? Well, I'll be telling you that, Jane. Oh, you will? Yes. By day. You She's won in to... several divisions, and we'll be hearing a new division every day, which should pump up the ratings Are you going to do bit. the first one? Yes. Uh, the first division, she won special mention for the Charles Nelson Riley Good Taste and Grooming Award. <laughs> Tomorrow we'll hear another one, will we? Tomorrow you'll hear another, Another yes. tomorrow. That is Senior Citizens Division, of course. <laughs> I see. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> now, let's say hello to our two charming players over here, Silvana Cavallero and Roy Fortune. Now, Silvana's a current champ. She's won one game. She's got $600 to her credit. How do you feel about that? Mm, okay. Good. Nervous? Are you nervous? <laughs> Silvana, take a deep breath. Say, Gina Lola Brigadiga. Gina Lolo Brigida. Oh, okay. See, now you're, you're not nervous anymore. Oh, yeah, I'm not. Oh, really? No, I'm even more nervous. Gina Lola Brigadiga makes you nervous? Mm -hmm. Say, Silvana, what was that other, what is that other act? Man Mangano. Silvana Mangano. Mm -hmm. She makes me nervous. Why should you be nervous? She doesn't make me nervous. Okay. Yes? I should really talk to her because I have an Italian girlfriend. You do? Yeah, it reminds a lot of people of Sophia Loren. She looks like Carlo Ponte. <laughs> <laughs> now, we didn't... <laughs> Thank you, Joe. We didn't get a chance to say hello to Roy yesterday. Roy, we welcome you warmly, and we ask you to tell us about yourself, if you would, please. I'm a teacher from Madison, Wisconsin. I have four children, and I'm married, of course. 
It doesn't mean... <laughs> or we're on a summer vacation. Or you're you're on, on vacation? On vacation, yes. Now, the University of Wisconsin is at Madison. Is that where you teach? Yes, I'm in a public school. It's not the university level. Uh huh. Okay, nice to have you with us. Good Thank luck you. to you. We'll start a brand new game right after we pass along these messages of considerable interest. It's a... The lady asked me if I'm still doing needlepoint. I just want to point out I'm wearing my needlepoint. This is petty point, actually, this belt that I did. It's, uh, Let me see. it's an owl design. What's that? Do you do windows? No, I don't do windows. <laughs> just ask. Well, on Thursday sometimes oh. I do. And I do needlepoint. It, it relaxes me when I'm... And it assuages my guilt when I watch television. <laughs> I'm only kidding about that, uh, Mr. Wood. Listen, uh, would you make a selection here, Mr. Fortune? B. B. All right. Brand new game. Are you ready? I'm ready. My pen is I'm in my winner hand. in the West Hollywood Olympics. <laughs> On an old tombstone just outside of Dodge City is inscribed the following epitaph. Here lies Luscious Lil, the old West's first exotic dancer. She died with her blanks on. <laughs> Roy? You got four kids, you say, eh, Roy? Yes. Bring them with you? Are they here in this room now? Two of them are. Two of them are. <laughs> Just outside of Dodge City's inscribed the following up a taff. Here lies Luscious Lil, the old West's first exotic dancer. She died with her blanks on. You're fiddling around here, or you're playing the game. Okay, they're ready. Roy? I'm sick. Here lies Luscious Lil, the old West's first exotic dancer. She died with her dangles. <laughs> With their what? Dangles. With their dangles on. Is wardrobe here? Wardrobe! <laughs> you come out here, wardrobe, and explain what dangles are. Dayton, are you here? What are dangles? What are dangles? Yeah, I want to know what dangles are before Daniels we go are on. leaving tonight on a train. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming they're things that cover a woman's boosoms. Oh, boosoms. <laughs> I see. Okay, I see. You oh, yeah. Dangles. Dangles. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Charlie, what did you say? You uh, both. I didn't say boosum. <laughs> <laughs> My spelling's not good, but I said she died with her tassels. Tassels and dangles is a match. Okay. Oh, I see. Yeah, I call them tassels too, but he calls them dangles. Now I know what you mean, Roy. For the right? boosum. For the yeah. boosum. Yes. I think I misspelled this word. I'm not sure. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> That's help your Here lies Luscious Lil, the old West first exotic dancer. She died with her blanks on, and he said dangles. I said with her boobs on. <laughs> but actually, I think I meant boots. Yeah, boots. She died with her boots on. Huh? I said boobs. Boobs, oh. Sarah. Okay. Well, I would hope so. What did you say, Joyce? Being professional at this exotic dancing. Oh, really? Uh, which might surprise you. <laughs> no, really, I, uh, I, I, I think it's a type of thing because I used the right word, only I didn't know how to spell it for what they both said. Pasties. Pasties? Oh, that is, right. yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Yes, uh, Joyce, I've seen dangling pasties seen... in my lifetime. <laughs> I never uh, saw twirling yes, pasties. No. <laughs> Richard, what did well, you say? Well, that's a well-known song. Yeah. What? She's got boobs that dingle dangle. <laughs> <laughs> that's not an old song, man. But as a school teacher, you should know the words, sir, not dangles, but pasties. <laughs> pasties. Anyway, there's another match, and that matches. Marcia. Jane. Speaking of dangles. Speaking of dangles, which I don't care to, thank you. Oh. I have here what I consider to be your very tasteful answer. Oh, very good, good tasteful good. answer, and really wrong. Gonna raise the class of the show. Your veils. Veils. <laughs> she died well, with her veils on. Yes. Okay, yeah. The dance. That's the what they veils. know in Creston, Iowa. All right. You ready, Silvana? Say All right. Here's your first round question. He did three with that. That's pretty good for a first round. The only time. Charles Nelson Riley wears socks is when Charles Nelson Riley blanks. <laughs> You're staring at me like I'm from another planet. It's a simple declarative statement. Yeah. The only time Charles Nelson Riley wears socks is when Charles Nelson Riley blanks. Now, Charles, think about it. <laughs> you are Charles Nelson Riley. I think so. 
You always have been. I'm finished. You can't really in the name. business. Your wife was on this program. Yes, yeah, she, she was. was pretty cute. Yes, yeah, she used to be. <laughs> Chin, she body. fits under your chin? She, I saw her today. She fits right in here. Yeah. So I took her home and stopped her. <laughs> <laughs> Charles, we're doing his Do whole nightclub back Charles? here while you're with yes. me. <laughs> Good gravy, Marie. Yes. All right, Silvana. The only time Charles Nelson Riley wears socks is when Charles <laughs> Nelson Riley blinks. Makes love? Makes love? <laughs> Makes love. Well, she's from Italy and all that. You know. The only time Charles I hope Riley. I get one of these. Yes. <laughs> At least one sock. Listen, I saw a picture once of a guy. Well, never mind. Charlie, what do you say? I said the only time you wear socks is when he bathes. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Okay, bathes. She's looking for the answer makes love. Brett, what did you say? You Charles said next to Nelson Charlie. Riley is the oldest man in America with his innocence still intact. <laughs> right, sweetheart? <laughs> He's interested in more spiritual things. I said when he sleeps. He wears socks when he sleeps. Okay. His little feeties get cold. Now, here's the sleeps. moment of truth. Sleeps. sleeps. Okay. Uh, you remember that night that we... Well, I said sleeps, too. Sleeps, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Three sleeps there. That seems to be the answer. He's getting right Richard. A lot of people do not know that Charles Nelson Riley leads a double life. He does. He yeah. does. Now, judges, I want you to look at my answer, and I'm sure you will consider, because I put it as tastefully as possible, the same way of saying making love. Right. Charles Nelson Riley only wears his socks, and they're black, incidentally, <laughs> when he makes films in Tijuana. <laughs> those films are. <laughs> these films are people making love. Yeah, never that. Well, they're good. Yeah, Danny, yeah, go, play, play, go. No, no. no. For my compadre. Hey, basta, basta. Uh, possibly meet you a little later, no. dear? Oh. No me piace questo. Oh, yeah? yeah? <laughs> All right, Marcia. He's such a cut-up, isn't he? Yes, he yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this came to me in a semi-hot flash, and it is wrong. <laughs> You're too young to have I those. I know, but I, this came to me, and I said, sings opera. <laughs> but he does. Oh, yes, he does. Oh, well, you ought to hear him backstage in the dressing room. He'll he bore just walks you to up death. and down the corridors <laughs> practicing all the time. Give him a sample, No, sir. I can't. Yes. I haven't got my socks on. <laughs> While Charles is warming up for his next aria, we are going to have this message of interest. So I can embarrass. Go. All right. Roy Fortune, would you please make a selection? Second and final round. You have three. In the first round, let's see how you do with this round. A. A. Last time you matched Joyce, Richard, and Charlie, the three of you will lay out. The rest of you, please respond to this. When Rosita's new boyfriend tasted her hot tamales, flames shot out of his blank. <laughs> Good. I just saw you're not playing. Oh, oh, let me yeah. write. Let well, me write. Right. Let me write. I'll have a little game oh, here. Right. And I said, no, don't be looking at his hand. Oh. 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 Well, just to uh, make sure you heard it. When Rosita's ah. new boyfriend tasted her hot tamales, flames shot out of his blank. All right. <laughs> Listen, we've missed you. It's been a long time since you've been here. It wasn't that long. Yeah. Well, I, you know what I did in the meantime? What? I wonder if I can say it. You did a show on another network? Yeah, I did that. But I mean, what happened to me on it? No, what happened? No, what happened to you on it? If we, if you can't say it, we'll just edit it out of the tape. Say it. I got raped and murdered. <laughs> really fun. You That's a good that. idea. <laughs> What was that, on a soap opera? No, um, Police Woman. Oh! I knew with Angie Dickinson. Yeah. Why did Angie Holland. rape you and murder you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. They're all finished, Roy, so we <laughs> need an answer from you. When Rosita's new boyfriend tasted her hot tamales, flame shot out of his... Ears. Ears! Oh, that's a funny sight. Yeah. Brett, what'd you say? 
Listen, I thought once I got in the Olympics and won all those awards that I'd turn into a real winner. I said mouth. I don't know what you said. I mouth, okay? Sorry, Roy, I said mouth. Oh, we got two mouths there so far. Roy mouth. and Marsha, what do you say? Well, gee, the right answer so rarely occurs to me, but I thought it would be mouth and or tongue, but that's tongue mouth. Tongue and mouth, yeah. Well, you had no ears there, but you had three mouths. Now, let's see how you do with your second round question, Silvana. You've got to match three to stay in the game. Four will win your second game for you. Everyone plays since she didn't match the first time around. The Godfather said... Uh. <laughs> I double dog dare you. <laughs> Auntie Pasta. No. <laughs> no. He said... <sighs> You gotta start things off right. As soon as I met the new mayor, I blanked. Him. What? The Godfather said, yes. you gotta start things off right. As soon as I met the new mayor, I blanked him. What did he mean by that? <laughs> well, I don't know. You figured out. Oh, I'm sorry. I've got other things. Well, you gotta play the game. No Everybody game. gotta play. Did you hear that, Sylvana? You, have you seen The Godfather? I mean, you know what The Godfather is and all that. Si, si, she has seen The Godfather. <laughs> now, let's not think, folks. Trust your first instinct, and that's well, usually I'm a good finished. idea. It's only Mr. Riley on my right. No, he's finished. Or is it now? my left? All right, well, so. oh, now, Silvana, The Godfather said, Well, you got to start things off right. As soon as I met the new mayor, I blanked him. Killed him or shot him? Killed him or shot him? Well, I guess that's starting off right. If, if you're the godfather, let's not fiddle around with him. I don't know, you know, I don't know. As, uh, she says, uh, kill, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, uh, I was, uh, I put down, I erased him. Erased him. There you go. Okay, Brett. I put a downer. Yeah. <laughs> that's my Italian accent. Put a downer. Huh? I put a downer, stabada. Stabada. Well, is that a matula? No, that's not a matula because you didn't stab her in the right place and he lived. <laughs> oh, let's see. I know where the right place is. <laughs> Charles. How much do they spring for those beautiful uniforms? <laughs> <laughs> Shot. Shot. There's one match. That's three to two. You need one more to tie. All right. It's up to me. Up to you to tie. If you tie. I tied. You tied. <laughs> Okay, two to three. One more will win your second game. Richard, one more. You're not going to, you know, make any relationship with the mayor if you wipe him out, are you? That's a, hardly a mayor, proper no. interpersonal relationship, right. I would say. You've got to start off right and I always bribe him. Bribe him, yeah. yeah. Bravo, bravo. Yeah. It seemed uh, unnecessarily rude to uh, wipe him out so soon. I thought, toy with his emotions for a while and kissed him. You know those crazy attacks. Oh, well, you kissed him, yeah. 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 All right, so we've got a tie here, and we'll tell you what happens uh, when we do get a tie. But first, we've got to tell you about this, so pay attention. All right, shall we carry on? We've got a tie here. We'll wipe the slate clean, and we'll push the button here and reveal a tie-breaking question. One question for each. The one who scored the most will be the winner. Roy, please make a selection. B. He wants B. Everybody plays in the tiebreaker. Ken said. Ken. Oh, I sure wish I knew that guy was a blank before I hit him. <laughs> Ken said, I sure wish I knew that guy was a blank before I hit him. I sure wish I knew. I sh you're finished. You're the best, Richard. Oh. I sure wish I knew that guy was a blank I'm before finished. I hit him. I'm enunciating as clearly as I can. You're it's doing a question. beautiful job. Yes. Yes. Marsha. Fine little diction there, James. Good. Yes. Yeah. All right. Hi. Oh, Charles! He's gone into a coma, or is he just... No, he just oh. likes to... This is the only place he gets any sleep. <laughs> <laughs> now, Ken, uh, Roy. Ken said, I sure wish I knew that guy was a blank before I hit him. A fighter. A fighter. Okay, a fighter, a boxer, one of those. Yep, Charlie? I'm doing so well. You are? Boxer. There it is. There's one match. Okay, Brett. Is this a, is, is this a match? It's a black belter. A black belter. That's a person who owns a black belt. Yes or no? No? The buzzer says oh. no. Charles? 
I yeah. said cop. Cop. That's not bad. All right, Joyce. Well, I, I started know, to say cop. And what did you say instead of cop? Prize fighter. Prize fighter. There's another one for you. Here's the ex-pugilistic expert here. Oh, oh he's still well, a well. <laughs> No, I mean, a lot of the fighters that I've bet on lately, <laughs> she could knock down. <laughs> so I said cop. Well, you said cop. I'm That's really surprised. Idea. And you That's said cop, idea. too. Yeah. Surprised you didn't say fighter. You oh, used to fight, really? Yeah, yeah, but a lot of yeah, fighters are not going to hurt you. They were, oh, really? They're much gentler, but a policeman, well, it's oh. Al Clinko. Uh -huh. All right. Silvana, you need uh, two to tie, three to win. Everybody plays. Henrietta said, my cat is so finicky that before she'll even touch her food, she makes me blank at first. <laughs> My cat is so finicky that before she'll even touch her food, she makes me blank at first. It sounds more like a godfather question. <laughs> I think it's an easy one. Move along now, oh, you folks. You think it's easy? It's easy for you to say. It's easy You're not for up me. Here with your and, uh, and right, so uh, Henrietta said, "My cat is so finicky that before she'll even touch her food, she makes me blank at first." Taste it. Taste it, she said. Charlie. All right, Charlie. Nangerosa senza spina, signorina. Taste it, taste it. Taste it, taste it, taste it, okay. Brett, what'd you say? That's the Olympic champs always come through in the end. Right. El Tasto. Okay, tie score. One more cat food will win. El Tasto. Taste that. Eat, 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 taste. Okay, congratulations. There's another $100 for you. Okay. Uh, Roy, we've got to say goodbye to you. Uh, it was a pleasure meeting you. I'm sorry it was such a short trip up here for you. A gift for you backstage, together with our thanks for being with us in Match Game 74. Roy, right. Now, just stand by for a moment here. <laughs> We're going to do a little business, and then we'll come back to you, okay? 35 seconds. Uh, what can I do in 35 seconds? <laughs> <laughs> The same thing you used to do in 35 minutes. <laughs> what was that? I was saying you were interrupted. <laughs> no, okay. no way. All right. We hope you'll be able to join us next time for Match Game 74. This is Gene Ray. <laughs> next over most of these CBS stations. Get ready to match the star. Wayne Hickman. <laughs> Brett Summer. Gary Berghoff. Carol Lawrence. Richard Dawson. And Marcia Waltz. As we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 75. And now here's the star of Match Game 75, Gene Rader! All mussed up, and the show's just beginning. <laughs> <laughs> I was just a flame when I saw your vest. <laughs> Gene, what are those little things on there? Are those flowers? <laughs> well, my friends told me I died on the match game. <laughs> <laughs> You're dying. <laughs> He's a man of extremes. That's right. Okay. Those are, uh, I Essence. don't know. What, what, what are those? Essence. Birds of paradise, I birds suppose. Of, I don't know. What they name the bird of paradise. My wife got this for me for Christmas. Wasn't that nice of her? Very yeah, lovely. thank you. She must think Ask me old. what time it is, Richard. Why, well, what time is it, no. Jane? <laughs> oh, <laughs> half past kissing time, time to kiss again. 11.32. <laughs> well, that's New York time. Oh, of course it <laughs> is. Yeah. Isn't see. that pretty? Lovely. Beautiful, Gene. Richard gave that. To Actually, me. it plays it plays a tune, That's doesn't it? That's real gold, it? isn't it? There. It plays a tune. Nothing's too good for me. Thank the you, Richard. The theme song of the Third Reich. Nothing. 
Now let's say hello to our current champion. Here is Jim Lawrence. How are you, Jim? How do you feel? Good. Good. Jim, uh, as time ran out last time, he had won a game. He's got his hundred dollars. Now he's going to have a go at over five thousand dollars. How do you feel about that? I'm ready. Okay, we'll do it right after this message of interest to one and all gathered here on this day. Here we go with Jim Lawrence. Jim, we polled a recent studio audience and we got their best response to this. Young blank. Now the answer they gave most often is worth $500 if you match it. Now if you match the next one, you get $250 and the third, $100. Three celebrities are permitted to help. Whom do you choose? Richard. Young? Uh, yeah, young at heart. Young at heart. Which you are. Yes. Forever. Choose your gay Old and young body, at heart. But... Dwayne, please. Young blood. Young blood. Okay, uh, you got two now. Gary? All I can think of is young and foolish. Young and foolish. Why is it wrong young to foolish. say young and foolish? Okay. It was the only answer that I had. <laughs> All right. So you've got... <laughs> What was there the, will who's be no the editorial writer? comment at this stage of the proceedings, please. So you've got young blood, young and foolish, and young at heart. You can choose one of those, Jim, or give us one of your own. What would you like to do? Young at heart. You want to choose uh, young at heart. All right. Okay, that's the one we're looking for. Young at heart. Let's find out if it's up there, and if so, where? Is it under the $100 response? Is it young and restless? Oh, that was my answer. Young and restless. Right. It's another CBS. So. Was CBS, CBS uh, soap, soap, opera. soap opera? Yeah, it's on at around one o'clock or so in the east. Yeah. All right, we're looking for young at heart. Here is the two hundred fifty dollar response. Yeah. You've got it. Congratulations. So you got the two fifty. I know what it is. I know what it is. What do you think is up there? Young Mr. Lincoln. Young blood. Young blood. Young blood. Let's find out right now. Young love. Chinese. And I think of that as Chinese anybody. expression. The Chinese I have not experienced it for Don't years love. and years. Yes. Oh, that's beautiful. It's a great thought. It was a romantic audience we had. All right. Now, Jim, you're up to $350, and now you're going to try for $2,500 to collect. You've got to match one of them. This will have to be an exact match. Which one will it be? Richard, please. Okay, Richard, you get ready to write, and Jim will Jim, face I've me. Jim, I've been very unfortunate this week. I hope things turn out all right. I have faith in you. Well, just in case you pilot a plane that I'm on one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go. Ready? Puff blank. That's P U F F blank. Puff blank. As in puff. puff. Yes. So there'll be no mistake. It's puff blank. <laughs> All right, he's finished. Now, Jim, what answer would you give us that you think would match his? Puff blank. The magic dragon. Pray tell, who is Puff the magic dragon? <laughs> I remember it from a song. <laughs> That's about all. Okay. All right. Just want to know what your answer. All right. He says Puff the magic dragon will match you. What do you say? Well, I say, I guess I'll be traveling by other forms of <laughs> transportation. I have pastry. You're going to leave the driving to us and take the bus. I'm going on the Greyhound. Okay. I was better yesterday with Harry Truman. Yeah. All right, so Jim's got his 350, and he's still the champ. He's going to play another game, so let's meet another player right now. Here comes Carol Tucker. Okay. Carol? Hi. You know, Jim? I do. How's Carol Tucker at this moment? Well, a little shaky. <laughs> no, you're not shaky. What else do you want to tell us about Carol Tucker, aside the fact that she's a little shaky? Oh, well, she's just fantastic. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Isn't she fantastic? She sure is. I'm married to a police officer. I have two lovely children. Mm -hmm. I am a school teacher and a housewife. What do you teach, Carol? I teach elementary school, fourth and fifth grades. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is that a difficult job? Are they difficult to manage? Yes, they are. They are. <laughs> There's an honest lady. Okay, let's begin, shall we? Please make a selection, A or B. 
B. You want B. All right. This is for Carol. On the airplane. <laughs> oh, yes. Stephanie said to Jessica, I don't have much confidence in this airline. I just saw the pilot. <laughs> and he had a blank sticking out of his pocket. <laughs> just saw the pilot and he had a blank sticking oh my God. out of his pocket. Oh, I just was there. I was hesitant for a minute. Yes. This, uh, I think this is in... All right. Interesting. Very interesting question, in my opinion. Everybody ready down here? And everybody ready up there? So we'll come over here to Carol Tucker. On the airplane, <laughs> Stephanie said to Jessica, I don't have much confidence in this airline. I just saw the pilot, and he had a blank sticking out of his pocket. Bottle of booze. A bottle of booze. <laughs> bottle of booze. Oh, he had a, a learner's permit. <laughs> a learner's permit. <laughs> That'd make me nervous, I'll tell you that. What do you say? I say I think I'm in love. Is that a cute answer? That's a darling answer. He's just adorable. Yes, he is. But I'm not in Where love with him. Where be in love with him hair. if his answer was Harry Truman? <laughs> we won't go into that, Mary. All right. <laughs> uh, anyway, I don't know why she would say that. But I always try to draw on my own personal experience. Yes. And I never travel without one, a flask and or bottle. There it is. <laughs> There's one for you, Carol. She's looking for a bottle of booze. What are you offering, Gary? Nobody's ever called me Mary for years. <laughs> <laughs> You've like, changed. It's like old times. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said a parachute. A parachute. Okay. Had a parachute sticking out of his pocket. Just saw the pilot and he had a parachute sticking out of his pocket. That's what he said. Although she said bottle of booze. What do you say? I say bottle, too. Bottle. Okay. That's Carol's answer. That's two for her. And here we come. Yes, I'm surprised Mary didn't say bottle as well. <laughs> yeah. Three for you. <sighs> Hello there. Hello, Marcia. Margaret, Jean. Marcia. <laughs> Hello, it's Mary. It's not uh, attractive to watch a grown person go to pieces on national television. <laughs> no, it isn't. It isn't. It's never attractive. And uh, You're not going to I to once pe heard when the mind goes blank, say banana. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Banana. Yeah. You are going to pieces, oh, my dear. You know, that would, would you get the wet sheets too. ready, please, for Marsha? <laughs> and uh, we'll girl take care of her. <laughs> yes. Okay. So that's three for you, and now we've got this. Oh, no, we don't have that for you. I'll put it right back there. And we got this message for you instead. <laughs> I love the way they took it. Now, we go to second half of round one. Have this question for Jim Lawrence. Carol matched three celebrities in her round. Let's see how he does with his. Hey, Nate, the delicatessen owner, is a fantastic violinist. But he doesn't use a bow. He strokes the violin with his blank. <laughs> Everybody plays. Nate, the delicatessen owner. He's a fantastic violinist. But he doesn't use a bow. He strokes the violin with his... Finished, finished. Finish. Finish, finish, finish. Finish, finish. Bravo, honey. bravo. All right, Jim Lawrence, you are deep in thought. You are thinking deeply. You're getting sleepy. No. <laughs> Nate, the delicatessen owner, is a fantastic violinist, but he doesn't use a bow. He strokes the violin with his... Salami. Salami. He says it's, salami. It's, it's coming to me. Uh, what, what, what will you say? Salami. 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 Extrasensory perception is at work, and the psi phenomena is a rampant in the field here. Yeah. Hey, lady. What's the first cousin to a salami? A bologna. Know, bologna. bologna. No! Pastrami, is that a match? No, no. pastrami and no, salami are totally two different I things. I could have told Sorry, you Brad. that when you wrote it. It's easy for you to say you didn't have that answer. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> what do you say? My uncle told me I was doing bad on the show. Your uncle has good taste. <laughs> <laughs> When it comes to salami. The salami is very good. Okay. So now at this moment, score is three and two. What do you say? Oh, I said wiener. Wiener. <laughs> no, wiener is Sorry a, about that. It's not even a small salami. It's, it's a totally sort of a long hot dog. Yeah, well, no. Couldn't be done. A small violin. Oh, no, you couldn't. You'd have to be Tom Thumb to do that. What do you say? Shalami. Salami. Salami. <laughs> 
Tell them I like them. All, All right. right. You hang in well, with me, Marsha. Remember, Marcia. we're roomies. <laughs> I've done that. Now, Marsha, <laughs> there's nothing to cry about. No, there isn't. Marsha, we have to have there you back There is good more news often. tonight, Marsha. Remember this moment. Banana. Yeah! Be proud of you. <laughs> and he's gonna raise your salary for that, too. Three bananas a week. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, now we go to round two. Score is nice four to three in favor of the current champ. And Carol, please make a selection. B. B. Here we go. Brett does not play. You do not play. You do not play. Everybody else does. A weird Sylvester was thrown out of the department store when they caught him blanking the mannequins. <laughs> No, weird. Weird. Sylvester the weirdo. Weird Sylvester was thrown out of the department store when they caught him blanking the mannequins. I told you, never write your questions from personal experience of no. the people. Oh. I never wrote this question. All right. Okay. You finished? You, everybody ready? <laughs> I'll take the mic cable if you don't mind, please. Oh. All right. Here we go, Carol Tucker. Weird Sylvester was thrown out of the department store when they caught him blanking the mannequins. Loving the mannequins. Loving the mannequins. All right. They caught him loving the mannequins. What do you say? I had something a little more exotic in my undressing. Undressing the mannequins. Yeah. That would I be a preliminary a step, I would it think. Is that a match? No, that is not a match. <laughs> May we see your answer, please? I, wait, wait till they finish laughing over that terrible yeah. joke. I said kissing. I think that's a match. That's kissing a match. Kissing and loving? How about that? All right. There's one for you, Carol. Now we have one more person to call on, and it's sweet, lovable Marcia. Oh, Is your... Marcia, you can do it. You can do it, Marcia. Oh, Marcia, you know what they say, good dress rehearsal. Uh, fame is so fleeting. <laughs> Well, Short I, lived. you know, I'm an all-American person, dating the mannequin. Dating. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Judd is dead. <laughs> well, for okay. one moment, you were our favorite. Let's see, what do we got here? Four to four, and you're in a good spot. You need one to win, that's all. But we're not going to find out right now if that'll happen. We've got to do a little business first. This is it. Okay, here we are. Sir, We're going to finish are. this game. Now, the score is tied at this moment. Jim Lawrence needs one match to win his second game. Let's see if it happens. Jack said, Jack said, I dreamed I was a circus performer who jumps off a tower into a tank of water. When I woke up, I found I had jumped headfirst into the blank. Three people play. Two. Big and Brett, Brett and who? Brett and Carol. Oh, I know. Hi, Carol. Hi, Brett. No socializing. Do your job. Jumped into the what, honey? I dreamed I was a circus <laughs> performer who jumped off a tower into a tank of water. When I woke up, I found I had jumped headfirst into the blank. We're going to have such fun later on. You're just going to love it. That's room 1207. <laughs> <laughs> on an 11-story on an house. All right. All right. Oh, wait a minute. It's not that. It's the other. Well, oh. No, that's right. A woman is allowed to change her mind. <laughs> you didn't. <laughs> the woman. The woman okay. is allowed to change her mind. Okay, Jim Lawrence. <laughs> Jack said, I dreamed I was a circus performer who jumps off a tower into a tank of water. When I woke up, I found I jumped headfirst into the... John. Into the John. <laughs> All right. 
One John wins a Why game for him. Why is Carol Lawrence, who likes ravioli, going like that? Me piace ravioli. Si, si, si brinca. Into Jump what? into the brink. <laughs> Jump into the brink. Oh. That's worse than motel. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the oh. new record holder up there. See why I was going like this, because I said... Yeah. 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 So there's another game for you. Carol, I'm sorry it's been such a short meeting for you. I hope you had a few laughs while you were up here. I had a great time. Good. All right, Carol Tucker, we've got a gift for you together with our thanks. Goodbye. Now, you know how this goes, so we might as well get right to it, right? Yes, sir. Okay, we polled a recent studio audience. We got their best response to this. Valley Blank. Now, the answer they gave most often, worth 500, 250, and 100, you know all that. Whom do you want here? Richard, please. Valley Richard. Forge. Valley Forge. Carol? Carol? Valley of the Dolls. Valley of the Dolls. Brett? Valley of the Jolly Green Giant. Valley of the Jolly Green Giant. So you've got those three. Valley of the Jolly Green Giant, Valley of the Dolls, and Valley Forge. You want one or do you want to give us one of your own? Valley of the Dolls. I'm going to say Valley of the Dolls. All right. Let's find out where the Valley of the Dolls is. First, may we see the $100 response? Valley of the Jolly Green Giant. Hey, hey, girl, Brett. A likely story. Yes. We are looking for the Valley of the Dolls, dear friends. Let's see if it's under the $250 response. Valley Forge. Oh, All right, last well, chance. That was Richard Cancer. Cancer. <laughs> now let's see if Carol Lawrence's answer comes up as we reveal the $500 response. Yeah. Valley of the Dolls. Very good. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Okay. You got the 500. Now, you're going to have a go at 5,000. Which one do you want to try and match? Carol? Okay, Carol, you get ready to write. Here is the $5,000 question. Face me, if you please. 12 o'clock blank. 12 o'clock blank. Okay, Carol's finished. Now, what do you say to that? 12 o'clock blank. Noon. And you're a pilot? May we see your answer, please? 12 o'clock high. 12 o'clock high. You thought of it and didn't do it. Oh, that's too bad. He's a pilot. Yeah, and he is a pilot, too. Oh, boy. Crossed his mind, he rejected it. Okay, you got $950, Jim. Stand by now. Here is a message for you. Hello there. Oh, listen, just time to say goodbye here. Oh, thank you from the bottom of my black old heart. Gene, you were thank splendid. You. Thank and you. Oh, I love heart. your birds of paradise. Thank you. Those yeah. are yeah. birds of paradise. paradise. Marsh, I'll never forget known. this moment. I hope you'll come back often and make a fool of yourself over and over again. Gene, <laughs> <laughs> I'll certainly try. Coming up next. Who, oh, listen, you want to know who's going to be here next yeah. time we get together? I'm going to tell you right now. Avery Schreiber, Brett Summer, Gary Berghoff. Chris Stewart, Richard Dawson, and Patty Doyle. Team Raver, New Match Game 75. Join us next time. Bye. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game 75. A Mark Hudson, Bill Trotman production. Stay tuned for Tattletales next over most of these CBS stations. Get ready to match the stars. Leslie Nielsen, Brett Summer, Gary Bergoff, Eddie Doyle, Richard Dawson, and Marsha Wallace as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 75. And now, here's the star of Match Game 75, Gene Rivers! Are you ready? Oh, ready? Ready? I love your suit! 
That's Thank really you. snazzy. That's yeah. one of my new ones. That's Super snappy. duper. Mm. Oh, you look terrific. Do I fall in love all over again? <laughs> You'll only hurt you, Brad. You're a very perceptive lady of terrific taste. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's our current champ, Terry Sonleitner. How are you, Terry? Fine. Good. Great. Last time we were together, Terry won the game. We ran out of time. She got her $100, or at least it's credited to your account. Now she's going to try for over $5,000. You ready for that? Oh, yeah. You are? <laughs> you excited about it? Yeah. Okay, you see how it's going to turn out in a moment or so, but right now this message for you. Here we are. It's Terry and me. You ready? Oh, I'm ready. Okay. Going to try for over $5,000 here now, Terry. We polled a recent studio audience, and we got their best response to this. Murder blank. Now, the answer they gave most often is worth $500 if you match it. If you match that next one down, you get $250 and a third $100. Whom do you call on for a little help? Richard. A gang that Brett was the head of, Murder <laughs> Incorporated. Murder Incorporated. Okay. Leslie. Leslie, have you got one? I got Murder, She Said. Murder, She Says. That was a song, wasn't it? Yeah. I think so. It was popular. It just popped into my mind. All right. It's well, disappeared right now. That's what we ask you to do. Gary? <laughs> that's funny. I have Murder, He Said. <laughs> <laughs> this is a toughie, I think. Yeah. Don't you think? I, I, really, that's all I have. Is that I'm all you sorry. got? That's all I had. Murder, He Said, and all Murder, right. Incorporated. They're a lot of help, aren't they? They gave you Murder, He Said, Murder, She Said, and Murder, Incorporated. You want one of those, or have you got one in your head? I'll take Murder, Incorporated. You want to take that? You thought of that? Yeah. Okay. Let's find out if it's up there, Terry. And if it's there, where is it? That is the question. I didn't ask the question yet. Did I ask the question? But that's take the answer. Back. Put it back there, and don't do it until I ask you to. Yeah, I'm talking to you. I'm a star. <laughs> now, shall we begin, my dear? Yes. Yes, sir. Is it too late to make a wager on what's under $100? No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's too late. <laughs> We're looking for Murder Incorporated. We're going to find out where it is. If it is under the $100 response. Now. <laughs> Murder weapon. Oh, well, that's a surprise. That's a surprise. Yeah. Wow. That's a surprise. Uh. <laughs> Looking for Murder Incorporated. Here's the $250 response. Murder wow. one. Oh, oh that's, that's what Jack Webb says all the time. Yeah. Is that what you had? Book here yeah. for Murder One. Mur yeah. All right. Last chance for Murder Inc. Here is the $500 response. Oh. Murder Inc. You got it. Congratulations. Now ah, you got 600 bucks. What happened? Wait a minute. Her yep. watch guard crossed here. on her. Okay. There it is. Oh, didn't want you to break that little gold chain there. Now, you got the 500, Terry. You're going to play for 5,000 now. To collect that 5,000, you've got to match one of them head-to-head. -head. And this will have to be an exact match. Now, whom do you choose? Richard. Okay, Richard. She's chosen you. Now, you'll face me. Richard will write his response to this. Here it is for 5,000. Eight blank. That's E I G H T blank. All right. He's finished his. And now, Terry, we call on you for your response. What do you say to match him? Eight blank. That's E I G H T blank. Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Well, I mean, I don't owe her. I was kind of playing this game mentally myself, and I said to myself, well, I guess I'd say 8 o'clock. I don't know what else to say. All right, Richard, she says 8 o'clock will match you for $5,000. May we see it? No, they were right owing her. 8 ball. 8 ball. That's where you and I are. We both thought of 8 o'clock, and we're I behind the 8 ball, I get a kiss from her for winning her $500, so... You didn't even get a kiss for winning the $500? All right. Try the big one again. Cut, time. That's enough. Cut, cut. That's enough. Stop that. I, 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 I have an important announcement to make. <laughs> She's a good child Come over here, Terry. She's a good kisser. <laughs> she is a good kisser. I haven't found out yet. Man, that does not constitute an offer. I'll tell you what. 
We're going to do now, Terry, you got your $600, and we're going to play another game. To do that, you've got to bring out another player, so let's welcome Suzanne Gormley. Hello, Scott. Hello, Suzanne. You know that lady? So you're Suzanne Gormley. Yes. Well, what a pleasure to meet you. You too. You have pretty dimples, don't you? Too. Doesn't she have pretty dimples? <laughs> she does, Jane. Have you noticed very, her dimples? Very, very pretty. <laughs> okay, now we've, we're going to leave that topic and find out a little about your background. My background. Your background. Yeah. Well, my present background is I'm studying um, dancing, singing, and acting, and I hope to make a career in the field. No kidding. And I'm also happily single like Terry. Oh. All right. Good luck to you in your you. theatrical ventures, and good luck to you here, too, Suzanne. Here we go, Suzanne. A, please. A. She wants A. <laughs> There's some place. You dimples, eh? <laughs> Should we uh, hurry this up? I have oh. to start rehearsals with Suzanne and Terry. <laughs> Gary Berghoff said, I'm late. He said, yeah, no. <laughs> he said, yes, the late Gary. He said, yesterday after the show, I went out to the parking lot and got a real surprise. I found Brett in the back seat of my car with a blank. <laughs> Are you looking at me? <laughs> it's hard to tell, I know. It's <laughs> I didn't want to influence anyone, but this card was left at my place. <laughs> it says, with Cal, eat your heart out. A real surprise found Brett in the back of the car. I went out to the parking lot and got a real surprise. I found Brett in the back seat of my car with a blank. Did you hear that, Suzanne? All right, you think about that while they're finishing up here. On Brett. In the back seat of a... You dozed off again I there. I did. did. Marsha, we're doing the best we can to keep <laughs> oh, it lively so, and gay I for you. No. Toujours gay. Toujours gay. Toujours, toujours. A good friend of mine. <laughs> toujours gay is a friend of yours? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you don't know? I truly don't know. I said look. that before, but this time I don't know. <laughs> now, now look at him. Gary Booker said, yesterday after the show, went out the parking lot and got a real surprise found Brett in the back seat of my car with A. With A. With a... With a blank. Well, with a blank. With a blank. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, see? That oh, way. well, I have no frame of reference for this. Yeah, well, <laughs> there the light bulb finally lit over her head. We call on Suzanne. Gary Berghoff said yesterday after the show, I went out to the parking lot, got a real surprise. I found Brett in the back seat of my car with a... Man. With a man. <laughs> Is that time. is a surprise. <laughs> now, what are you offering? Now, I want you to know that there's nothing personal. Oh, I mean, you do like her at all. I like Brett very much, and she could be in the backseat. But you're doing this for the sake of the people. show. No, not at all. No? But I just I'll took my off. first pick. I put a dummy. <laughs> Anyone we know? <laughs> what? The late Gary Burgos. Oh, I see. <laughs> what do you say to that in response to your own life? I say, are you new in town, sailor? <laughs> <laughs> how, about, how about a man? It's a man. It's a man. It's a man. It's a sailor is sailor not sailor. a man? What is a sailor? No, hold on. Let me hear a girl? Oh, sh quiet. It's my show. This will be interesting. Quiet. She yeah, didn't say it wasn't. Time. Now, she said man, and she said sailor. Now, I don't understand why they don't match. Just explain it to me. <laughs> or a sailor. I'm going to say there's a man, isn't it? Right, well, all right. No, I'm no, a, let's settle I, this one I just wanted to hear it because I'm going to join the Navy right away. <laughs> don't move on, don't move what, on. Yes, uh, we got to move on, Gary. <laughs> Well, I, actually, the most un, the, the most obvious thing was she's sitting back there with a gallon of gasoline, and a little sign that says a dollar forty nine. But uh, I said a man. I don't understand. Hey, man! So there's one for you, Suzanne. <laughs> Yesterday after the show, I went out to the parking lot, got a real surprise, found Brett in the back seat of my car with a blank. And that lady said, "Man, what do you say?" I said a well-known game show host. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to ask one thing. How many, going, how many female game show hosts are out there? And then name two. Well, come on here and explain. I really don't understand this. Can't match a generality with a specific. That's all I'm asking for. I'm not arguing with you. I'm just seeking information. All right, Richard. Well, I am arguing with you. That's silly. It is silly. On with it.
No, I won't. I found Brett in the backseat of my car with a blank. Show I'm not and moving tell. until we find out what a sailor and a game show host is. <laughs> well, I guarantee if a war came, they'd be called up like that. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, I put vegetable. <laughs> well, I said man. Who's <laughs> <Here's> Suzanne? <laughs> you don't often get your dander up, do you? I haven't oh, had it up for, oh, well, what's the time now? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Marsha. <laughs> oh, I guess fire. Oh, Where's yeah. my fan? <laughs> oh, America, weep for my social life. Oh. It occurred to, yak occurred to me. Yak. Man did not. Man. Man! Three for you and your question coming up in a minute or so, but right now, we gotta do a little business, friends. This is it. All right, here we go with the second half of round one. Terry, you ready for this? This is yours. Listen carefully. Pinocchio went to a party and accidentally set his nose on fire. Pinocchio put the fire out by sticking his nose in the blank. Yes, he did. Pinocchio went to a party and accidentally set his nose on fire. Pinocchio put the fire out by sticking his nose in the blank. Hmm. <laughs> All right. Now, to be perfectly grammatical, I suppose, we should say sticking his nose into, but grammar doesn't count here, spelling doesn't count here, we just give what the... What does count here? That's what I want to know. Your first impulsive instinct. Pinocchio went to a party, Terry, <laughs> accidentally set his nose on fire. Got that picture? Got now, it. he put the fire out by sticking his nose in the blank. In, um, in his drink, I guess that's... In a, his drink. Mm, the drink? In the drink. <laughs> Whose drink did he stick it into? The game uh, show. Sailors. The game show. The sailors. <laughs> All right. She said into his drink. That's what she said, Leslie. In his drink. Does it have tinkling ice in it? <laughs> yes. I, if it's at a party and he stayed in one room, I said in the punch. In the punch bowl. Okay. Mm. No match there. Punch mm. bowl and drink. drink you know. Well, yeah, but he was drinking champagne. I saw him later. <laughs> yeah. Brett? How was he? He's a little drunk. <laughs> well, With a charred he nose. <laughs> <laughs> I figured he would go straight for the place where there was water, right? He yep. didn't have time to turn on faucets and all that. So straight for the toity bowl. Oh, I see. <laughs> okay. Gary? He was drunk and a little flushed. And I said, the toilet. <laughs> Into the toilet. All right. She is looking for the answer into his drink. Put the fire out by sticking his nose in the drink. What do you say? I said he stuck his nose in Geppetto's punch bowl. Geppetto's punch bowl. Yep. Good response. Richard? Toity. Toity? Hello, Marcia. Oh, hello, Jean. How have you been? Don't toy with my emotions. Okay. <laughs> now, Ira, don't cross me on this. Oh. I have it that he drank Ripple. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now that was his Put drink. the fire out by sticking his nose in, in the his, ripple. In his ripple. <laughs> in his ripple. Oh, yeah. That's hair fire. 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 Do you think we should try Sailor and Game Show Host again? Is no. <laughs> <laughs> Three to one at the end of... What are house lights up for? <laughs> Three to one at the end of round one. <laughs> and uh, there go the house lights down again. And now we go to round two, that's all. Suzanne. Me, please. <laughs> What's going on out there? They're just having a party, and the people are nice. We're having a party. Uh, did you say, oh, you want B? Yeah. Anything you want, Suzanne. <laughs> okay. Your wishes are my commands. <laughs> Watch out. You sure are crazy about dimples, aren't you? <laughs> All right. Celebrities, listen to this carefully Hello. now. Oh, so. Hello. 
Oh, yes. Bob said uh -huh. the mayor's wife doesn't know her own strength. Uh -huh. At the bridge opening ceremony, she not only cut the ribbon in half, she cut the blank in half. <laughs> yes, she did. The mayor's wife doesn't know her own strength. At the bridge opening ceremony, she not only cut the ribbon in half, she cut the blank in half. Why are the stage oh, lights on? <laughs> you finished. First, well, second, I'm not third, bing, bong, bing. I'm playing. Oh, three I'm do not play, finished. right. Why is the camera light on? Why is that light over right. on his head on? Ready, ready, ready. Now, Suzanne. Bob said the mayor's wife doesn't know her own strength. At the bridge opening ceremony, she not only cut the ribbon in half, she cut the blank in half. The bridge. She cut the bridge in half. What a strong lady. She says she cut the bridge in half. What do you say? I don't believe that can be done. No? But oh. I put it down. Bridge. Bridge, there it is. Four for you, Suzanne. Did she cut that bridge in half, Brett? Oh, honey, the way they build things today, they fall down practically. Bridge. Bridge, it is. One to go. Hello there, lady with the red oh, roots. Hello, 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 hello. How are you? Well, I, I, I just fine. Thanks. Good. Uh -huh. Something you'd like to tell us? Not really. Well, yes, you would. Oh, uh, I, okay, okay. I said that she cut his honor in half. She cut his honor. Two <laughs> better than one. That's right. There are two ways you can take that, yeah. but I'm only taking it one way. <laughs> All right, Suzanne, you got five. You got one with another question coming for you. And now this message is coming your way. Oh. Hello there. <laughs> okay. Now you got a shot at it. Yeah. Give it your best try here. You need four to tie and five to win. Ready? Here we go. Everyone except Marsha. Oh, Marsha. Did I get you right? Yes. Yep, Marcia. you did. Oh. <coughs> you missed it. The Countess said, mm -hmm. the Marquis de Sade is really mean. <laughs> how mean Yesterday, is he? I'll tell you how mean he is. Yesterday, <laughs> I caught him in the kitchen whipping the blank. <laughs> the Marquis de Sade is really mean. Yesterday, I caught him in the kitchen whipping the blank. <laughs> I may be wrong. I've gone quickly again. Well, oh. keep trusting your own judgment. Yeah, You're right. Twenty percent of the time, nothing wrong with that. Twenty <laughs> percent of the time. Oh, you know how to hurt a girl, don't you? Yeah. You know that the prospect of motherhood has slowed down her brain. It has. Well, everything's more crowded now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hold everything. The Countess said. The Marquis de Sade is really mean. Yesterday, I caught him in the kitchen whipping the... Maid. Whipping the maid. Well, she's got to have a maid in her kitchen. Yeah, I guess she would have a maid if it's a fancy highfalutin castle with a real live count. What do you have, Leslie? Well, he was whipping the maid who was holding the whipping cream. Whipping the cream. Oh, well. Got to match everybody else. Right, Stay in the game now. Let's see what happens here, I Brett. It's terrible because I feel I'd finally caught on to all that play on words and all that blank. Yep. But, and I put cream. Uh, that's two creams. That's the answer. What have the rest of you got here? Cream cooked on stick. Okay, Suzanne, you win the game. Come on down. Congratulations. Now, there's $100 for you, and you stand by while we say goodbye to Terry over here. Terry, you'll be leaving here now, but we've got $600 yeah. for you, together with our best wishes. It was a Thank pleasure you. meeting you. Thank you very much. Terry Sonlifer. Goodbye, Terry. Okay, and you're going to stand by for another second or so here, because we've got to do a little more business, and this is it. Time flies when you're... <laughs> Talking about yeah. yourself. No, you really were just dandy today. Now, before we go here, i got to ask uh, Leslie a question here. You're leaving the country soon, aren't you? Uh, yeah, I'm the Where are you going? Uh, the, the, the Philippines, Manila. What are you going to do there? I'm going to do a feature called Project Kill F-134. Project Kill F-134? Yeah. yeah. It's a contemporary drama. Chase How long are you going to be there? Oh, about four weeks. You got your shots and everything? Oh, not quite. I got to get another cholera shot. Yeah. Very painful. I don't want you to come back here with any disease, because we don't allow that on the show now. Oh, you don't? I'll get all your shots and go to the Philippines. I've been watching the show, you know, and I'll oh. just be careful. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good luck to you in that thank adventure. Thank you, thank you. And I thank you all from the bottom of my black hole heart. You, you know? should. Yes, yeah, I should. Heart. You certainly should. You're just dandy today. And any day. Thank you. And you're still pregnant, huh? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Well, what are you do about that? This is Gene Rayburn here for Match Game 75. We ask you to join us next time. Thank you. Goodbye. This is Johnny Olson.
speaking for Match Game 75 of our Goodson Bill Tubman production. Stay tuned for Tattletales next over most of the CBS stations. Get ready to match the stars. Johnny Brown, Brett Summer, Charles Nelson Lowe, Tracy Stewart, Richard Dawson, and Marsha Wallace. As we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 75. And now, here's the star of Match Game 75. Here. Eyes and teeth, everybody. Eyes and teeth. Eyes and teeth. Eyes and teeth. Oh, yeah. Eyes and teeth oh, all right. You've got them. Too bad you don't have some teeth. But <laughs> you never run out of clothes, do you? Oh, you're <laughs> no, so sure. Thanks to CBS. <laughs> Listen, there's something I want to show you. What? I don't know if Mark uh, Breslow, our director, can get a real tight shot of this or not. Oh, oh, cheapest uh, man in show business. No, no, wait a minute. No, it is. Uh, can you? Can you get a, can you say, uh, if you can't see what it says? For a How much? How much? <laughs> if you don't put your hand there, we may get a tight shot of it. Oh, I see. This won't hurt at all. <laughs> can you read what that says? It says, audience? for sale. How appropriate. Yes. <laughs> He's been marked down from $1.95. <laughs> Thanks, awfully. Let's say hello to our two players, Bev Owens and Henry Griff. Bev is our current champion. She's got a pretty good bundle of money. She has a uh, $9,000 even. <laughs> this is pretty good. Now, we have finished round one, and the score is tied one to one. She's being challenged by Henry Griff here, and we'll go to round two right after we go to this message especially for you. All right, here we go. Push this button. Reveal our second round <laughs> questions. Final round, Henry, what do you say? I think I'm going to take A and B and give the millionaire C. You want A and B and give her C. Right. You're a card, Henry. You're smart. You'll take A again. Right. Okay, last time you matched one person. That was Trish Stewart, so uh, you will not participate. The rest of you listen to this. Stella said, the neighborhood I live in is really tough. How tough? I'll tell you how tough it is. Or she said, my husband won't go out after dark, and he's a blank. The neighborhood I live in is really tough. My husband won't go out after dark, and he's a blank. My husband... Did, do I, did I read well, it you, badly, You're Victor? breaking it up in a way I'm very confused. Stella said... I'll read to you. Stella said, the neighborhood I live in is really tough. My husband won't go up. Oh, my husband won't go out after dark, and he's a blank. Oh, I got it. You got the idea. So you have to, he's English. You have to read it with that accent. Yes, of course. <laughs> from Connecticut. Thank you. From Connecticut. <laughs> and from the bad end of the block. All right. Finished. Finished. Finito. Are you All talking right. about my career? No, no, no. Your Just uh, put it in the slot there now. Oh. But you. you you were reading it to him, and you're not even finished yet? <laughs> I was just trying to help. <laughs> oh, good gravy, Marie. <laughs> there we go, sweetheart. Let's get on with the game now. Hurry up. Everybody finish. All right, Henry. Did you hear all that? Stella said the neighborhood I live in is really tough. My husband won't go out after dark, and he's a blank. He's a cop. He's a cop. Hey! Now, Johnny. He is given what appears to be an excellent answer. A policeman. A policeman. Here come the judge. <laughs> here come the law. Here come the judge. And here come a member of the fuzz. A member of the fuzz is a policeman. Is that right? Right. You are not. Do you need all of that song and dance and everything? Can't you just write cop like some smart? Okay. <laughs> Now, let's see if you capture Richard. 
I love Henry. He's got a great Henry's sense of humor. Henry's wonderful. Yes, really. he's okay. You're a delight to be. I only Thank wish you. I had policemen written down here. For you me. didn't have policemen written down there? It was so tough, the neighborhood. That. He was afraid to go out. And her husband was a mugger. <laughs> Tough. That is tough. <laughs> Are you a muggy or a mugor? Oh, Henry, you little dick and you. <laughs> a cop or a copet? Cop or a copet, right? Yes, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Ben, you okay. need four to tie, five to win. Ready? Here we go. Mildred, the astrologer, said, It's easy to tell my husband's sign is Pisces the fish. He blanks like a dead mackerel. <laughs> no. No. You don't participate I know, much. But I know the answer. You do? Yeah. You may whisper it in my ear. <laughs> Stand up so you get away from the microphone. And whisper it in my ear. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> That'll be enough of that. Listen, uh, All this attention would be more flattering, except that you find lint attractive. <laughs> you rascals. We're just waiting for the others to finish writing. Is everybody finished? No, I'm not no, finished take your, yet, dear. Take your time, Brett. <laughs> You're very alert for a man your age. <laughs> He blanks like a dead mackerel. There's nothing to it. Now just put an answer down there. <laughs> okay. This one. <laughs> okay. Now, Pam Owen. Have you been paying attention? Yes. Mildred the astrologer said, It's easy to tell my husband's sign is Pisces the fish. He blanks like a dead mackerel. Makes love. He makes love like a dead mackerel? My He's temperature's still gone up. Yes. Go ahead, Johnny. Show us your answer. Uh, I said floats like a dead mackerel. Floats like a dead mackerel. You must rematch the remaining ones to stay in the game. Brett, what did you say? What? <laughs> Show us your card. Oh, there are several spreads. No, 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 no. The, the one you got the slot there. Oh, golly, gee whiz, because good gravy, Maria. Oh, they hate me. I said float. Float. So that means Henry wins the game. What's the rest of you have? There for a moment. My dear girl, you want a bundle of money, $9,000. What are you going to do with all that? Oh, I'm not sure, but we're building an addition. Run away from home. Right. So. Well, we hope it's a very it's beautiful one. I know it will be. Bev, it was a pleasure meeting you. Oh, and the very my pleasure. <laughs> Goodbye, <laughs> Bev Owen. Now, while we're spinning her off, we'll spin this commercial message for you, and then you come right back and see how Henry does. Here we are with Henry Griff. Are you ready, Henry? All ready. How do you feel at this moment? Huh? Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, <laughs> I think I'll make it. <laughs> sure you will. Just hang on to me, Henry. You could okay. win over $5,000 here. Let's find out what happens. Henry, we polled a recent studio audience, and we got their best response to this. <laughs> Speed blank. Now, the answer that group gave most often is worth $500 if you match it. If you match the next one, you get $250. If you match the bottom one, you get $100. Three of our celebrities are permitted to assist. Whom do you call on? I want to take that sweet gal up there, Brett Summers. Brett, oh. sweet lady, he's calling on you. Oh. What about Speed Racer? <laughs> Speed Racer? <laughs> Speed he Racer? He used to be a cartoon. Yeah. Speed Racer. Okay. A, a uh. sweet lady, but yeah. a sour answer. All right. Who's, <laughs> put him down there. Awesome. You going to... Choose Richard. Speed limit. Speed limit. Okay, that's two. Go ahead, Trish, do it. What do you say, Trish? Uh, how about Speedway? Speedway. So now, Henry, that means you got Speedway, Speed Limit, and Speed Racer. Do you want one of those, or do you want to give us one of your own? Try Speed Limit. Speed Limit is the one he's looking for? Okay. He, of course, is hoping it's under the $500 response, but as usual, we'll begin at the bottom and work our way up, okay? All right. All right. May we see the $100 response? Speed Racer. Okay, take it back. 
<laughs> All right, here we go. Looking for speed limit. May we see the $250 response? Speed limit it is, Henry, you got it. Very good. What do you think is under the $500 one? Speedway. Speedometer. Speedometer? All right, speedway. Queen. Cool it. <laughs> All right, Earl, slide it. Speed Did you think of that? I didn't think of that either. Okay. I had speed demon. Had speed demon. Now, Henry, that means you're going to play for $2,500 right now. Who gave you speed limit? Richard gave you speed limit. You're going to play with Richard? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm uh, stick around when you're talking, because I've got the microphone, Henry. Is it? When you <laughs> you look better that way. Uh, right, 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 right. Right, right. Okay. <laughs> ready. May I have this dance? If you can. No, no. <laughs> you're ready, Richard. Yes, sir. Here it is for $2,500. Far blank. That's F A R blank. <laughs> He's finished. Henry? All I can think of is far away. Far away? That's all. No other answer came to your mind. I only got a one mind, one, one blank mind, that's all. One you got a one, one blank at a time. All right, he says far away will match you, Richard, for $2,500. What do you say to that? It is far away, Henry, but it's far east. Far east. Far east. Way up here. Yeah. All right. <laughs> now, Henry, you've got three hundred and fifty dollars, and you're going to meet another player. Shall we do that? Let's go. Okay. Let's welcome Maxine Goolsby. Maxine, we'd like to find out a little bit about you, please. Yes, we would. Okay. <laughs> uh, I live in Gardena with my family. We have four children. Uh, my father and one of my best friends, Emily, and my brother and my husband are in the audience. And we're avid bowlers. You're an avid bowler? Yes. Well, that's I'm a, a fanatic marvelous, bowler. That's marvelous right. sport. And you've got your own rooting section here, and we yeah. wish you well. And shall we begin? Okay. Now, Maxine, please make a selection. B for bowling. B for bowling. Uh, All right. The warden was a real practical joker. How practical, How practical. was he? How much of a joker was he? Well, just before they sat Rocco down on the electric chair, the warden put blank on the seat. <laughs> just before they sat Rocco down on the electric chair, the warden put blank on the seat. <clears throat> Think about that. Not too long or hard. All right. That's good. He was awake. I think that's, that's good. good. All right. All right. Everybody's ready. Now, Maxime, the warden was a real practical joker. And just before they sat Rocco down in the electric chair, the warden put blank on the seat. Glue. Glue? Something sticky, eh? Oh, he was a cut-up, wasn't he? What do you say? She says glue, Johnny. What do you say? He put water. Water on the seat. All right. Brett, what did you say? I say, what does his answer mean? <laughs> well, I don't know, and I'm not going to ask. <laughs> well, honey, he put thumbtacks. Thumbtacks. Yeah. That's a practical joke. Hey, tack. Charles says attack also. The answer that Maxine is looking for is glue. The warden put glue on the seat, according to her. What did he do according to you? I thought of water first, and then I came up with gum. I'm sorry. Gum! You were kind of on a way, same wavelength there with something sticky. What'd you say? Mm -hmm. I said liquid. A liquid. All right. And Marsha. There's a reason I put this. I certainly won't tell you. <laughs> Toothpaste. <laughs> Toothpaste. Marcia. Well, there is a reason. There Darling. is a reason, and we're not going to explore that one bit further. <laughs> so, uh, Henry will have a question for you in a moment or so, but right now we've got this for you. Today's Castle 
consolation prizes are West Bend's Big Gripper, the quick trip coffee maker that automatically brews and doubles filters up to 10 cups of coffee in minutes from West Bend. And Sarah Coveney Quality Jewelry, textured golden tone links in rectangular shape for a modern tailored ensemble by Sarah Coveney, the jewelry you buy in your home. And treat your kids to a good hot nourishing dish with a supply of Franco American spaghetti or spaghetti oats. They only cost about 15 cents for serving. And we'll be serving up some hot flanks from Match Game 75 continues in a minute. Here we go. All right, you ready for yours, Henry? All set. This is it. It goes like so. Paul said, when my wife drinks, she gets vicious. So when we go out, I have to take along a blank. <laughs> when my wife drinks, she gets vicious. So when we go out, I have to take along a blank. No, I understand English. You understand? Yeah. Yes. Uh, English. Oh, yeah. honey, there are so many alternatives. Well, yeah. just uh, think of a, a likely one that you think Henry might say. Because you're going to try and match each other. That's why we call it the match game. Oh, I've game. got it. I've got it. Isn't that amazing? Now, notice she got it, yeah. and mine is in there for ten minutes already. Right. Just right. remember that. the same that. answer? It could be the same. It could be a coincidence. Just put you it in the slide. You know, I did not even look in your direction. Children. I choose not to look in your direction. Eyes and teeth. Then stop bickering. <laughs> okay. Are we ready? Marcia. Oh, I know, I know, Jean, I know. I know. Usually you're so dependable. I am very and quick, reliable. usually, and reliable, and a fine bowler, too. Yes. <laughs> but I get rattled sometimes. The dye it... has seeped into her brain. <laughs> uh, and then I don't print well, and America sees that. Yes. <laughs> but America's ready for you. Henry Griff. Yes, sir. Paul said when my wife drinks, she gets vicious. So when we go out, I have to take along a blank. A muzzle. A muzzle. A muzzle. <laughs> well, I guess he was thinking of a vicious dog. That was his association. So he said, you know, you muzzle a vicious dog. Johnny, what did you say? I said whip. A whip. Oh. Little B and D, what do you say? <laughs> well, from a, a lot of earlier marital errors, I started to say straight jacket. Yes. But I changed my mind and said muzzle. Muzzle. Okay. Charles, what did you say, Chuck? <laughs> muzzle! Muzzle! This turned out to be one of those muzzle-tough questions for Henry. Uh -huh. there. Uh -huh. <laughs> Eyes and teeth, look into the camera and show your answer. <laughs> we were on the same wavelength, Henry, but uh, I said a whip. A whip? Yeah, yeah. You know, like for cats. And... <laughs> All right. Richard, it's up yes. to you. Very, very close. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Moselle. Moselle. That's amazing for a first rounder. Now, you were doing, a, you wrote a lot of words there. What, yes, I did. What do they add and up to? And they're all wrong. And they're written badly. A pair of hand cuffs. A pair of well, hand cuffs. Yes. Well, we go out, I have to take along a pair of hand cuffs. All right. It was. Now, that's round one. Score is three to nothing in favor of Henry. And now we go to round two and ask Maxine to make her selection. Be again. Be again for bowling. King Arthur said to Lady Guinevere. He Hello. said, he says, Gwynny. <laughs> how many times do I have to tell you, don't blank my suit of armor? Speaking to Lady Guinevere. How many times do I have to tell you now? Don't blank my suit of armor. Don't, bl oh, Don't blank I got my it. suit Honey, of armor. I've got it. What is that word that they use for doing that? Do you need help? No, I it's oh no, I have it. You I got have the oil. idea. I can't help you, but I might be able to. Uh, no, I have clarify. it, sweetheart. It's all right. I've got it. Okay. All right. All finished up there. All finished down here. Yes. Here we go to Maxine. King Arthur said to Lady Guinevere, "How many times do I have to tell you? Don't blank my suit of armor." Oh, I'll have to go with what I thought of first, I guess. What was that? Starch. Don't start. That's very good. That's not bad, Maxine. That's a very good answer, I think, Johnny. Yes, what do you say? It's a good answer. I can't match it, though. I said, don't paint. Don't paint my suit of armor. Mm. All right, Brett, what did you say? I say, I just said to Charles Nelson Riley, they're getting smarter and we're getting dumber. I said, oil or grease. Oil or grease. Charles? I said, don't dust. Don't dust my suit of armor. Got to match the remaining three to stay in the game, Maxine. Let's see what happens. 
It's up to you, Trish. Well, he was getting a little squeaky, and he said, don't wash mine. Don't wash mine. So that means Henry wins the game. Longer and more. So you did it again. Maxine, you had a very short trip up here. Sorry about that, but we've got a gift for you. Thank you. Uh, together with our thanks for being with us here at Match Game Thank 75. Match Game. Now it's rolling around again, Henry. We're ready to do it? I'm all set. Okay, we polled a recent studio audience, got their best response to this. Without a blank. I remember oh, I got it's a good one for that, Henry. Five hundred dollars, two fifty and a hundred. <laughs> Whom do you call on? My little girl up there. Without a song. Okay, there's one. Uh, Trish. Yeah. Trish. Yeah. I just went blank on the thing. I thought, oh, um. Without a. Uh, uh, without a. Uh, uh, without a. Uh, without a, ch a chance. Without a luck. With, without a... Just say one. Without a. Without a doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt. <laughs> All right, one more. Richard. Richard? Well, I have <clears throat> without an answer. Um, <laughs> sort of without a doubt. Without a prayer. Without a prayer, okay. An atheist. So, you want one of those or have you got one of your own? Without a... I'm going to go with Brett, without a song. Without a song. All right, let's find out if it's up there and if so where. Let me see the $100 response. Without a cause. Without a song is what Henry's looking for. Are you under the $250 response? Without a song, congratulations. Okay. So, before we go on here, let's find out what's under the $500 response. Without a doubt. All right, Henry, you stand by for a moment. We'll do a little business with America and then come back to you. That's it. You were just dandy. Okay. Join us next time for Match Game 75. Gene Rayburn here. Goodbye. This is Johnny Olsen speaking for Match Game 75. A Mark Crutzen, Bill Todman production. Stay tuned for musical chairs next over most of these CBS stations. Get ready to match the star, Avery Schreiber, Brett Summer, Charles Nelson Rudd, from Busting Loose, Barbara Rose, Richard Dawson, from the Bob Newhart Show, Marsha Wallace, as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 77. And now, here's the star of Match Game 77, Gene! Do you have the feeling it's like the first day that school has started? Yeah. Yeah. Is that the feeling you have? Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but we have that feeling here. It's like the first day. Number one, it's too hot in here already. So turn it down, would you please? why. We've been on vacation. Yes, right. I, We've... for one, am very glad to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Testing one. No, it's my microphone oh. that is uh, uh, acting up a little bit. Oh, and I'm going to hold the cable well, like that here. We've only been on two minutes, and already the microphones are breaking down. And uh, No, we've uh, been, been away a little bit, and... Uh, and we're all back, and we haven't seen he each other in a long away. time. Yeah. We had a vacation. You all look wonderful. Thank you. What so did you do on your went vacation? To Hawaii. Went to Hawaii. You're going to write a composition for English I will. one. And, How right. I spent my summer vacation. Yes. <laughs> did you ever get to meet that wonderful guy who loves his show? Who's the TV? I sure critic? did. His name's Dave Donnelly. Yes. And he writes a column called Dave Donnelly's Hawaii, and he th he thinks it's the greatest show on the air. Well, I've got to I've got to meet him one of these days. Uh, I'll say hello to him. It's not bad being number two. That's it. No. It's <laughs> Listen, we haven't seen you in a long I time. Know, I know. Huh? You're wearing a heart on your chest. I beg your pardon. <laughs> <laughs> I'd forgotten how unusual you were. <laughs> and you? What can you say about her? I don't know. Well, I'll tell you about Gorgeous. Not now. You've lost weight, haven't you? 
Just a few pounds. You want to give your non-smoking <laughs> announcement? Is it nine yes, months? It's ten months, and I have laryngitis. Now our two players here, Pam Hoffman and Tom Taylor. We welcome you. Pam is our current champ. She's won $1,200, right? And she's being challenged by Tom Taylor in the middle of round one here. Tom had, did very well with his first round question, which right means now. Pam has to work real hard to catch up with him. We'll see how this goes on right after we see about this. Now, shall we carry on? Here we go. Now, this is your first round question, Pam. Remember, you got to catch up. Now, George said, I think my wife is trying to kill me. Yesterday for dinner, she served me a pig with a blank in its mouth. She served me a what with a blank? I think my wife is trying to kill me. Yesterday, she served me a pig with a blank in its mouth. A pig? Well, you know, the way they have roast pig and w with something in its mouth, and they bring it, and four them? guys Let bring it out say. on a big uh, tray there. My, I think my wife is trying to kill me. Yesterday she served me a pig with a blank in its mouth. Okay, Pam Hoffman. George said, I think my wife is trying to kill me. Yesterday for dinner she served me a pig with a blank in its mouth. Razor blade. Razor blade? Yeah. yeah. Well, no, you know, on Halloween they put razor blades in apples. You know, yes, that right. apple thing. Okay, they do that. So, yeah. I mean, you take the apple out, you can what put is razor the razor blade in. What, in your opinion, would be the traditional thing for roast suckling pig with, <laughs> in its mouth? An apple. An apple, okay. That's why I said razor oh, blade. Oh, that's why she said razor blade. All right. <laughs> yeah, I, that's right. Something round oh, like I'm an apple. Like, <coughs> what I had I in mind. I love breads. I had a gun in its mouth. A gun in its mouth. <laughs> yeah. Did you get the idea? Well, I just thought about what people have called this show, and I said a bomb. A bomb, yeah. Hi, hi. A little hand grenade would look like an apple, <laughs> wouldn't it, Charles? Chuck shows bomb or grenade, Gene. Bomb or grenade, very good there. Bomb or grenade seems to be the answer, Pam. What do you say, Barbara? I said something nice and round like an apple, a grenade. A grenade, Simple. yeah. You got the idea. Did you get the idea? El Hando Grenado. That's the perfect answer there. Did you get it? Well, huh. what, what, Jake? Like <laughs> grenade. Grenade, you got it. Yeah. I wasn't That's grenade. right. That can't be a trend, though. No. <laughs> we won't let it be. No. Now we go to round two, and we'll ask Tom if he wants A or B. B again, please. B. There is one person who plays. Oh, Marsh. And that's Marsha, because oh. he didn't match that person who sat in your chair when we were together last time. Well, I had nothing to do with this. I time. know, nothing I to do with it. shouldn't have all this pressure. That's right. Harold said, I just eloped with Fat Frida, and it was tough. Mm -hmm. She's so fat. Wait a minute. Oh. Wait till I give you the cue. I mean, it was rough. It, it, was, no, it was rough. Not tough, yeah. <laughs> Luckily, I'm reading the question. <laughs> Should we all read it aloud together? Should we have a trio? Did you ever see an R? Yeah. It's like a roof Well, I haven't sound. got my glasses on, you see. Normally, when I read it, I hold them out there, you gotcha. see. Yeah. Harold said, I just eloped with Fat Frida, and it was rough. She is so fat. How fat is she? Okay. <laughs> to get her out of the bedroom window, I needed blank. Rough <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Hey. Get her out of the bedroom window. I needed blank. <laughs> she's, Been a while. She's so fat. Yes, I know. Okay. I needed a lot. I don't think she's going to help. <laughs> All, right. All right. All right, Tom, she's given us her answer, and you give us yours. Harold said I just eloped with Fat Frida, and it was rough. She's so fat. To get her out of the bedroom window, I needed blank. Lard. Lard. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. Anything oh, slippery. Of course. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Now show us your rotten well, answer. She was thinking of Lord. <laughs> yeah, she was thinking of a heavy How do you really feel about it, though, Jim? You never could speak your mind. <laughs> Hurling abuse the first day. I said a crane, but you a see, crane. I was thinking to get it in. Into... <laughs> That's okay. Like that. I like it. Yeah. All right. Now, Pam, you know what you have to do? You're going to have to match five when we get back to this commercial Achieve a Tie. However, you could win it if you match all six. Right now, we've got this for you. All right. Now, Pam, five to tie, six to win. <laughs> you got one rooter out there. Who is that, Pam? Who is that? I think it's my cousin-in-law. Your cousin? <laughs> the person I sold the Edsel to. Oh, yes. All right, here it is. 
900-year-old Methuselah saith, This year marketh my bicentennial. It beeth two hundred years since I last blanketh. <laughs> Yeah. As a, as a director, could I hear it on the reverb? On the reverb. reverb yes. Well, I took the beat pause thinking it would be on the reverb, but it didn't. I couldn't hear it. it may, well, let me try it again. 900 year old Methuselah saith, This year marketh. No. coming now. Is it working now? Yeah. Now. It beeth 200 years since I last blanketh. Thank you. <laughs> One out of three ain't bad. Yeah, that's right. It's really like the first day at school, you know, nothing works. <laughs> and now it's working too much. <laughs> Ready? Okay. Now, Pam, 900 year old Methuselah saith, this year, Marketh my bicentennial. It beeth two hundred years since I last blanketh. <laughs> Make it love. Make it love. Yeah. By Jove, she got the idea, Avery. By Jove, she did, didn't she? Yes. Maketh love. Well, in my vernacular, this is exactly the same. Did it. Did it. <laughs> so that's one for her. <laughs> Old Methuselah, he didn't think it was too bad. He didn't mind. Time flew for him. That's right. Right. I thought about Charles and what he's told me about his life and everything, and I said, Maideth loveth. Maketh loveth. Maketh loveth. Yeah. All right, I Charles. went a little further. I said, maketh loveth with a broadeth. With a broadeth. <laughs> How do you feel about maketh loveth? Oh, just fine, thank you. Good. <laughs> Your place or mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm real close here. You are? <laughs> I, I think maybe I cleaned it up a little too much. Well, let's see it. I said, had a date it. Had a date it. No. Yeah, but no, you don't know about my dates. it could have been just dates. a simple candlelight dinner for two, no, you no. know. No, no. my dates. Oh, really? <laughs> you have to start somewhere. I think that's, that's a good right. Thank you. Now, you've got to match the two remaining ones, Pam, to stay in the game and achieve a tie. All right, Richard? Made loveth. Made loveth. That's tied to four the score. Hello, it's all up to you. Again? Again. <laughs> Well, you know, it's a shame, too, because I heard Dr. Joyce Brothers say on Celebrity Bowling just the other day <laughs> that we could be sexually active through a thousand years of age. Oh, really? Made oh, love. Thank you. Yeah! Good job. Good so, Pam, you pull it out, the game ends in a tie -eth. and now we go to the tiebreaker And I push us a th this button -eth and reveal us one question for Thomas. B. You want Beeth? Yeah. Okay. The one who matches the most will be the winner. We have one tiebreaker for each of you. And here we go. Rodney the rich kid is so proper he calls a popsicle a blanksicle. <laughs> you know Rodney the rich kid. Rodney the rich kid. What did he say? He is so proper he calls a popsicle a blanksicle. This is a good one, I think. Yes, I like it. Everybody ready down here? All right. Okay, Tom. Rodney the rich kid is so proper, he calls a popsicle a blanksicle. So proper. Ice cream sickle. You didn't thinketh enough of. All right. <laughs> okay, Avery Schreibereth. Yes, that's right. He's so proper. He that. calls a popsicle a fathersicle. Fathersicle. <laughs> yeah. Listen, listen, listen. Fathersicle. Fathersicle. There are other variations of that. 
The old father sickle, but a better one because what was his name? Rodney the Rich. Sugar Daddy. <laughs> Sugar Daddy. <laughs> Popsicle. See, pop is a euphemism for father. What do you say, Barbara? I'm trying to uh, make up for the last one, but it didn't help. Father, father Sickle. You got it there. Thank you. Richard? Mm -hmm. uh, really proper. It would be oh. a Pater. Pater Sickle. Rodney the Rich made it so proper. He calls a popsicle the Pater Sickle. Hello, Pater. Father. Father Sickle. <laughs> yeah. So, Tom. What happened to you? You had a momentary lapse there, and you opened the door to let Pam in. All she has to do is match one, and she will have won another game. Honolulu Lulu. Oh, no. <laughs> you were just there, then. Honolulu Lulu was arrested for blanking her grass skirt. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a good one. Why? Honolulu Lulu was arrested for blanking her grass skirt. Honolulu Lulu. You got it. I never used to get any of them. Your son damn. Your I skin see, is warm. I see you come out of your shell since yes. last we met. <laughs> okay. Oh. You're attacking. Everybody ready? Thank you. The Dodgers refused you. Uh, okay, Pam, you ready? Here we go. Honolulu Lulu was arrested for blanking her grass skirt. Trimming. Oh. No. All is not lost, Tom. <laughs> Another momentary lapse. <laughs> They're coming more frequently, aren't they? It's okay. Avery, what do you say? <laughs> I don't even trim my mustache. Smoking. Smoking. Yeah. Oh. Yes, you got it. Buster, what do you say? You brought her, you smoke her. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Chuck. Oh, here we go. <laughs> He's done this so many times. It's one of my best routines. <laughs> Smoking. Yes, of course. <laughs> oh, child, you're too much. Uh, really. Barbara, Honolulu was rested for trimming her grass skirt, according to her. What according to you? No, I was there. She was smoking it. She was smoking her grass skirt. By Jove. Tom, it's getting better every time for you. <laughs> Smoking. <laughs> All right, Tom. If if she doesn't match, what's her name? There? What's her name? Whoever she is. Marsha Wallace. It'll be another tie. Uh, two, uh, let's see what you got there, Marsha. We're all waiting for it. Well, I don't know what it means, but I said smoking. Yes, you did. So there we have another tie, and that means we got to go to another tiebreaker. But first, we have to do a little business with America. Here we go to another tiebreaker, second one in a row. Remember again, the one who scored the most will be the winner, and if you don't score, <laughs> you're gonna go inside the box here. <laughs> Forever. There. Okay, Tom, you may have A or B. I'm gonna have A. You want A? That's uh, this one here, right? Okay. Diane said to the psychiatrist, she said, Dr. Hastings, I really don't think you should blank while I'm telling you my problems. <laughs> Doctor? Do come here, sweetheart. Dr. Hastings. Dr. Hastings, I really don't think you should blank while I'm telling you my problems. I know that part. What kind of a doctor was He was it? a psychiatrist. Oh, well, then actually your psychiatrist is what you call your operative word. Right, psychiatrist. Okay, Tom. Diane said to the psychiatrist, Dr. Hastings, I really don't think you should blank while I'm telling you my problems. Sleep. Sleep is a good one. He said sleep. What do you say? I don't. I really don't think a psychiatrist should laugh. Laugh. While you're telling him your problems. That's a good one. Laugh and sleep are both good, Brett. Hang in there, Tom. All is not lost. You're looking at a woman who hasn't had a cigarette for ten months and she has laryngitis. I'm going to kill somebody. Nod off. Nod off. There's one match for Tom. Yes. Sleep. Okay. Sleep or laugh, Barbara? I'm very polite. A giggle. A giggle. No giggling while I'm telling you my problems. <laughs> and you, Richard? Sleep. You sleep. So Tom's got three at this moment. Marcia? Gene, would you tell me how I dropped my pen on my shoulder? How did that, that happen? I have no idea. It, it just flew up in the air and... 
Let me just hit see. Hit me. It was not unpleasant, folks, actually. No. It's right there. Oh, well, isn't no, it? I didn't. Make it design. Yeah. We're not going. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. I forgot to tell you, it's indelible. It never comes off. I'll treasure it for always. <laughs> that was not altogether unpleasant either. <laughs> I'm so easily entertained. Would you show us your answer? Laugh. Now? Laugh oh. at it. Okay. All right, Tom, you picked up three, and now, Pam, you need three to tie again, or four to win. Let's see if we end this game. Hot tunas. Ronald McDonald said, last year I went to prison. And the food was terrible. Every meal, it was the same thing, a bucket of blank. <laughs> Ronald McDonald said that. Is that our Ronald McDonald of, of McDonald's? I, 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 I don't know. It's just, just a guy named Ronald, Ronald McDonald. McDonald. You yeah. attach anything you want to it. we got to speed it up, though. Yeah, we got to speed it up there. Someone hears that. <laughs> that was the whole one. That's the whole record. <laughs> Now, Pam, right. Ronald McDonald said last year I went to prison and the food was terrible. Every meal, it was the same thing, a bucket of blank. That's a hard one. Really? Yeah. Would I'll like? have to say a bucket of French fries. French fries. Well, I, I don't know. Avery, what do you say? <laughs> I say, wow. Uh, a bucket of Kentucky Fried Chicken. Well, thank you. You heard of Ronald McDonald, haven't you? Okay, Brent. Oh, I'm sorry, Pam. I said uh, the Colonel's Kentucky Fried Chick. That's it. Chick. 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 Okay. Chuck? Chuck said a bucket of slop. <laughs> Got to match them all now, Pam, down here in the bottom row. Barbara, show us yours. <laughs> well, I'm from this one. I, I, I... I, I don't think I got this one. Uh, I didn't understand. I She's looking hamburgers. for French fries. You have hamburgers, get... so that means Tom wins again. And you have a hamburger and a hamburger there. All right. Right there to the little blue dot, sir. And we congratulate you for winning $1,200 in game number one. Thank you, Pam Hoffman. I had a lot of fun. How do you feel? Join us next time, Magic Game 77 Gene Wright, we're here for the hour. Barbara Rose. From Family Feud, Richard Dawson. From the Bob Newhart Show, Marcia Wallace. As we play the star studded big money match game PM. And here's the star of match game PM, Gene Say hello to Chuck Buttermeyer and Naomi Phillips. Hey. All right, I'd like to find out a little bit about each of you. We welcome both of you. And Naomi, let's begin with you. Tell us your life story, if you would, please, or anything you want to say. I'm a steno for the city of San Diego. I have four children, three grandchildren, and that's just about all I can say. Now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. You look wonderful to me and certainly not old enough to be a grandmother. You Thank you. Well, when you 
Isn't she beautiful? Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. Well, I hope I look like you when I'm 29. Oh, you know. okay. <laughs> Chuck, what about you? Well, I'm a paramedic for the Los Angeles City Fire Department. Oh, and, uh... Yeah. You're okay, Chuck. And, uh... Orange County, and I have a hobby of magic and swimming. Here on Match Game PM, each of you have three opportunities to match as many of the beautiful people as you possibly can. And the one who has done that most often at the end of the third round will be the winner and will go on to play that big money super match which can pay off over $10,000. Here we go. All right, my dear Naomi, you may have A or B. B. You want B? Yes. Anything you say is okay with me. Richard Dawson said, uh, Richard Dawson said, outside the studio today, I met a weird guy. He actually tried to sell me a nude picture of blank. <laughs> Almost ready, Naomi. I'll read it to you slowly while they're doing it. Richard Dawson said, you know who he is. He's the one yes. in the middle there. Hi. <laughs> he said, outside the studio today, I met a weird guy. He actually tried to sell me a nude picture of blank. Howard Cosell? Of who? Howard Cosell. <laughs> Howard Cosell. <laughs> Listen, I don't think you're going to win any points with that answer, but I think it's very funny now that I think about it and try to visualize it. <laughs> you do want one of those. They're you hard have, to get. They are hard to get. I'm trying to get one. <laughs> I'll trade you three Burt Reynolds for one of Howard okay. Cosell there. What do you say? Say, so tried to sell him a nude picture of Charles. Of Charles. Okay, Brett? Well, this man didn't know about his reputation. He tried to sell him a picture, a new picture of Burt Reynolds. Oh, Burt Reynolds. <laughs> okay. Keeping the bubbling answers going here. <laughs> Brett. Of uh, Brett. <laughs> I would too. I'd buy one of those. I would certainly buy one of Brett. Yeah. Well, Do you I have got, any, though? Yeah. I got some good ones. No. Now, Barbara, we're up to you. Well, I... He actually tried to sell me a nude picture of... I have no explanation. Brett. Of Brett. Okay. Yes. Why buy it when he can get it free? Well, I... Think... <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> I don't think we're going to explore the subject any further. Now, since she's been eating bamboo shoots, she's really come alive. That's here. right. Yeah. So on, the guy remember. said to me, do you have any nude pictures of yourself? And I said, no. And he said, do you want to buy some? <laughs> oh, me. You. Okay. Marsha, darling. Jean, oh, my sweet. sweetheart. Now, I felt probably Brett was the definitive answer, but she is my dear, dear friend, and I won't be a party to that. But I'll poke a little humor at you any day. Oh. Jean, my... <laughs> Never. Oh. I do have a beautiful body, but I'm you will sure never you see do. it. I'm sure you do. You've told me many times. <laughs> all right. What did she say? <laughs> now, for this question, we all have to take off our clothes. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. Stop. Hold everything. Mildred phoned the psychiatrist. Doctor, come quick. My husband's up on the roof, and he won't come down. He thinks he's a blank. <laughs> Trust your first instinct in the way we go. Now, Mildred phoned the psychiatrist. She says, Doctor, come quick. My husband's up at the roof and he won't come down. He thinks he's a... TV antenna. There he goes. Good simple answer. Yeah. TV antenna. That ain't bad. You know that, Avery? Well, it's in the right arena. I think that... Uh... Won't come down, eh? Uh, he thinks it's a chimney. Very good. Sorry. That's very good. TV antenna and chimney are two very good answers. Do you know that Avery and I keep matching? It makes me very nervous. I said chimney, too. Really? What are you supposed to do? You think one is cribbing the answer from the no, other? No, no. Certainly not. Moving along with some of the exciting answers <laughs> on the top row, weather vane. Weather vane. 
A gilded rooster, yes. something like that? Exactly. A gilded rooster, that's beautiful, hmm. yes. Doctor, come quick, my husband's up on the roof and he won't come down, he thinks he's a... This is a little strange, but nobody said I had to be sane on this show, right? Right. 747. <laughs> 747. You are insane, my dear. Well... But attractive. Thank you. Got good skin, <laughs> nice hair. Richard gave me a candy bar, made me a little crazy. I know? see. <laughs> what are you doing to her? You giving that little girl candy? The old, yeah. the old you want some candy, little girl. Yeah. Would you That's like a walnut, oh? <laughs> No thanks. I'm on to you. How about a TV antenna? TV antenna. Marsha? Gene? Show us your aerial. Oh. <laughs> the vapors. Oh, she's on cable. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just have to show you my weather vane, hon. Weather vane. Well, that's okay. Weather vane was good. All things up on the roof were all right. So there's the end of round one. It's one to nothing in favor of Chuck. Round two coming up after this. <laughs> Hello, Carol. Carry on. <laughs> Bing. Yeah. Now, Chuck, you're ahead. We're going to ask you to go first this time. You have A or B. I think I'll take B for Buttermeyer. B for Buttermeyer. Hey. 102-year-old Mr. Periwinkle said, Ooh. How about a walnut? It's been, a <laughs> it's been 53 years since my wife retired from the burlesque show. <laughs> to this day, she won't take off her clothes without blank. Okay. Oh, I got it. Right. I got it. I got it. Okay. Chuck Buttermeyer. Buttermeyer. Famous name. Famous name. 102 year old Mr. Periwinkle said. Oh, been 53 years since my wife retired from the burlesque show, and to this day she won't take off her clothes without blank. Music. Music. Yes. Well, I thought you wouldn't take it off without a hot drummer, but um, <laughs> having worked those rooms, <laughs> music, music it is. One for Chuck. You got a hot drummer there? Uh, I used to. <laughs> <laughs> but times have changed. The war is over. <laughs> I said without being paid. Without being paid. Oh, uh -huh. uh -huh. strippers, you know. That's Take right. It off, hot boys. Hello, I love music, but I couldn't think of music with... Uh, that was the last thought I had. You know, Shostakovich didn't... Uh, yes, of course. But I chose without the male nurse saying, take it off. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay? <laughs> all right. I don't understand. I'm getting to understand Charles less and less each day, but it's all right. You're getting healthy. It's yes. okay. How are you today? Just fine, thank you. Good. You look grand. Thank you. Would you like to play? Well, I... Uh, yes. Good. Um, I know what would make me take my clothes off. What? Music! You have to play, Chuck. Now, in that case, case, would you uh, please... Uh, 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 <laughs> 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 How can you not? Yeah. Uh, you can't pass up an opera. Let's say, what do you say, Could saying, if Mark? you were tasteful? Yes. <laughs> Which you are not. Of course uh, not. Well, I was a little too specific. I said you wouldn't take them off without a drum roll. A drum roll? Yes. Yeah. Oh. It's in the family of music. Oh. Or an egg roll. Not an exact match. Or an egg roll. It's not No, no there. All right, Naomi, you want A or B? A? Okay, fine, A. It's all right me. Anything you say. Unlucky Louis said, My lousy luck. I went on a diet, and a month later, I lost three inches. Unfortunately, it was off my blank. Wrong. Oh, it's very nice. Unlucky Lou said my lousy like I went on a diet a month later, lost three inches. Unfortunately, it was off my blank. Now, it's a very easy, straightforward answer. Now, do it. Hello, Naomi. <laughs> How are the kids? Fine. And the grandkids? Fine. Good. <laughs> Unlucky Lou said my lousy like I went on a diet, and a month later, I lost three inches. And unfortunately, it was off my blank. And I really should know. <laughs> You have to say something before the buzzer sounds, then your time will have expired. Nick. 
Nick. <laughs> okay, she said Nick. <clears throat> oh, well, now there's some... Well, you can't really I've seen some terrific answers over here, and we'll see what happens. She said Nick. Tongue. Tongue. <laughs> okay, that was most unfortunate. What do you say? Well, I started to say eyes, but then I thought, that's silly, That right? is silly, yes. So I said nose. Nose? Okay, so we have tongue and nose, Charles. He got a hernia because his head fell through his collar because he lost three inches on his neck. I tell you, I really don't understand this show. I do not understand this show. Hello there. Hi. Have you got the definitive answer? Gee, I don't know. I don't have any of those, though. No, you Is don't. No, so far it hasn't happened in my judgment. Oh, good. Um, I said, uh, being a tall person, aware of this sort of thing, I said that he lost it in his height. He got short. There is an answer. I lost three inches. Unfortunately, it was off my height. Or his heels. Yes. Now, being a short person, I'd say the height. <laughs> now, Marcia. Oh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this seems to be the definitive answer. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now. Uh, here we go. This is the third and final round. The score is three to one. Chuck, you're ahead, so we'll ask you to go first. I'll try B again. B. All right. Now, here we go. The mad scientist said. Pardon? I said. <laughs> the mad scientist said. Now you're too short. Move on. <laughs> This is, I just crossed an elephant with a bunny rabbit. Are you listening to me? You crossed an elephant? I, I, I just crossed an elephant it. with a bunny rabbit. You know what I got? An elephant that blinks like a bunny. And that's what I got. You don't play, you don't play. You don't play. Brett Charles and Marsha. Bunny rabbit. You know what I got? An elephant that... Like a bunny. Got it? Yeah, right. Right? Now let's get well, out of it. Room. <laughs> Chuck, you ready? Oh, I don't know. That's a good one. <laughs> Matt Simon said I just crossed an elephant with a bunny rabbit. You know what I got? An elephant that blanks like a bunny. Uh, well, I'm going to say mates like a bunny. Mates? Mates. M A T E. Mates like a bunny. Okay, Brent, what do you say? I said makes love like a. All right, there's one for him. Mates are multiplies. Mates are multiplies. And what do you say? Next love. Right. Right. Chuck's got all six, Naomi. That means you've got to match the five remaining ones you haven't matched in order to achieve a tie. That's the best you can do is get a tie. Say, did you hear about the new uh, cabinet post created especially for Billy Carter? No. no. Well, from now on, he'll be secretary of blank. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh. New cabinet post for Billy Carter. Why? From now on, he'll be secretary of You play. wasted your time. I don't play. Oh, you don't. Okay. <laughs> All right, Naomi, here we go. This new cabinet post created especially for Billy Carter. From now on, he'll be secretary of... Brewery department. Brewery. Beer. Okay. Beer is what she said. What do you say, Avery? You gotta match them all. Secretary now. of beer. Beer, there's one for you. Score is 6 2. Brett? I wouldn't let you down on beer. Beer! Score is 6 3. Now, she's rolling. Okay, Marmara, show us your beer. I certainly wouldn't let her match. Beer! 6 4 is the score. Richard? You know, the initials of that particular thing is an excellent <laughs> thing. I said beer. Beer! Beer! Yeah. <laughs> Four is six to five. You gotta match Marsha to stay in the game. Uh, what? Uh, what do you say? I said booze. Good. Booze. Oh. 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 Oh.
pleasure to meet you, Naomi. Nice to be on this show. We thank you very much for being with us on Match Game PM. Naomi Phillips, ladies and gentlemen, there she goes. While we're spinning her off, we're spinning this message to Chuck for you. Here we go, Chuck. Time now for this big money super match where you can win over $10,000. And to do that, we have two audience matches for you here. And whatever you win in the audience matches will be multiplied by 10. That'll be the final dollar figure for you'll be playing for. Not too long ago, we polled a studio audience in this very building. We said, write down your best answer to this. Goodbye, blank. If you match the answer they gave us most often, you get $500, $250 for their second most popular response, and 100 for the third, and three of the six can help. Uh, Richard, please. What Queen Isabella said. Goodbye, what? Columbus. Yeah. Goodbye, Columbus. <laughs> Brett. Brett. What Greer Garson said. Goodbye, Mr. Chips. Goodbye, Mr. Chips. Oh, wow. Uh, Charles. What my mother said when I went to New York. Goodbye, Charlie. <laughs> Goodbye, Charlie. Goodbye, Mr. Chips. Goodbye, Charlie. And goodbye, Columbus to the three. Chuck, do you want one of those or do you want to give us one of your own? Oh, that's, I'm going to take uh, Goodbye, Charlie. No! <laughs> goodbye, Charlie. Yeah, good. All right. That's what, Charles, that's what Charles said. You're going to take that. That's what we're looking I'm for Charles, up here. And that's what I'll be doing. You're, goodbye. Yes. <laughs> I'm afraid so, Chuck. <laughs> but let's uh, go through the motions here anyway and find out if Goodbye, Charlie is up there. May we see the $100 response? <laughs> goodbye, Yellow Brick Road. It's hello, Yellow Brick Road. All right. Road. May we see the $250 number? Uh, Goodbye, Columbus. Here's the last chance for Goodbye, Charlie. You think it's going to be there? All right, slide it, please. Goodbye, Mr. Chips. That was Brett's answer. Yeah. Well, listen, Chuck, you got another shot at it here. I didn't, I'm sorry you didn't win anything, but you got another shot at the uh, big money here. May we see the next one, please? All right, you want to slide? That's it. Thank you. Live and blank. All right, call them out now, one at a time. Uh, Richard again, please. Live and learn. Live and learn. Brett. Live and let live. Yeah. Avery. Live and love. Live and love are the three. Live and love, live and let live, and live and learn are the three. Now, you can choose one of those, think it over. Whatever you think. Live of. and let live. Live and let live. Okay, let's see if he's up there in the big money. We'll begin at the bottom and reveal the $100 response. Live and learn is there. All right, let's go up the ladder and look at the $250 number. Live and let die. And let James, die. Bond. James Bond. James Bond. Movie. Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah. right. Yeah, Very good. All right, may we see the big one, please? Oh. You got it. Chuck, you won $500. We multiply that by 10. It gives you about a $5,000 to shoot for. And we want to give you that $5,000, but you've got to match one celebrity to collect. You must name one now. I'm going to go with Richard. Okay, here we go. Good luck to you. Stand on the blue dot there. And this is it. It's worth $5,000. Get your ESP flowing over to him. See if you can come up with the same answer. Blank paper. Blank paper. Okay, Chuck, give us the same answer that Richard's already written on that card. I we give you $5,000. What do you say? A couple of them, but I'm going to go with newspaper. Yeah. Newspaper. Yeah. All right. Seems logical to me. What was Just, the other one? What was Toilet the other? Paper. Toilet paper? <laughs> you see the headlines now? Yeah. Read all about it in the news. Yeah. I'm Gene Rayburn inviting you to join us next week here on Match Game PM. Are you happy? Yeah, yeah he's happy. happy. <laughs> join us. <laughs> Some contestants will receive ceilings by Celotex. Choose from a wide variety of patterns, colors, and textures, all so beautiful and easy to install. They enhance any room. And condition your hair while you shampoo with Well of Awesome Shampoo. Leave your hair looking healthy, shiny, and soft. Even repair split ends. Well of Awesome Shampoo. And Cool Ray fashionable sunglasses that protect from annoying glare. 86 eye-catching styles. See what you're missing with Cool Ray polarized sunglasses. 
And Simon Eyes, the first great name in car waxes, available in pre softened liquid form. There are shines, and there are Simon Eyes shines. And long lasting Lucite house paint from DuPont forms a tough seal to resist cracking and peeling. Plus, Lucite brushes for professional results. And Gum Out Carburetor Cleaner helps keep your car free from slow starts, bucking and stalling. In the tank and on the linkage, Gum Out helps make your car a smooth performer. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game PM. A Mark Goodson, Bill Totman production. Get ready to match the stars from the Rockford Files, Joe Santos, Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Riley, from Happy Days, Lori Mahaffey, Bill Daly, and Marsha Walton, as we play the star-studded Big Buddy Match Game 79. And now, here's the star of Match Game 79, Gene Rayburn. Hello, Jerry. Have a lively time? Good. And I see they're pretty lively out there. And thank you for joining us. I greet you one and all. Hello, Jerry. Everything okay? Well, I'll greet each one of us one and all, then. All right. This is, uh, no. <laughs> He's picking on me again. Is he? No. Yeah, I certainly yeah, like no. to pick on him. <laughs> picky, picky, picky. Thank you, Groucho. You can't take him anywhere. Yes. We must admit that. Two beautiful girls and one cute guy. Oh, well, on second. <laughs> She has the perfect phrase to describe oh, <laughs> this Bill one. Bill goes through life in perennial... But you can't say it on the air. Okay. Yes, no, you can. No. Well, some of them you can. Okay. He sort of goes through life in perennial jet lag. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? That means you're in another world. I'll tell you later. Charles, no eating on the show. <laughs> and he's eating onions or you wouldn't mind. <laughs> really? I mean, my life is no bowl of cherries on the second That's tier. That's true. I <laughs> agree. It's a bowl of onions. Up there. That's right. Now, let's welcome our two players here, Joanne Rupp and Coburn Ross. <laughs> Current champ with Joanne here. She has $11,800. Ready to carry on, Joanne? I'm ready. Now, let's find out who will be playing against you this round. Sir, well, welcome to you. Thank you. Nice to have you with us. Tell us a little bit about Coburn Ross. Interesting name. Yes. Uh, let's say I'm employed as a counselor. Let's say that. <laughs> That's not what you really do, huh? Yes, I am for uh, juveniles. Oh. oh, you are? Yes. Juvenile counselor. Uh, yes. I got Beautiful one I wish you'd take off my hands. <laughs> yes. That's interesting and, uh, work, but native, difficult. Too. And native of Los Angeles. Yeah. Active in all sports, basketball. I'm a scorpion. You're a Scorpio? <laughs> oh, yeah. Scorpio, that's your, the sign of your uh, whatever, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you believe in that, right? Oh, got me here. Oh, here you are. All right, good luck to you, Coburn. We'll ask you to make a choice here of A or B. Um, B, please. B? Please. Oh, okay. You're so flexible, Gene. I am. I go either way. No. 50 years ago. <laughs> hey! Hey! Come on. 50 years ago today, today. this yeah. very day, right. Herman Bickermeyer became the first man ever to cross a picket line. Yeah. Oh, a social right. question. That's right. This yeah. show is not all no, froth and oh, frivolity. Not all, all beer and Skittles. On that same date, he also became the first man ever to be stuffed into his own blank. <laughs> Charles. I mean, you know, how do you think I'd be? I have to sit next to them. <laughs> you're you're I chewing. Want, oh, I look, at hammer here. look at that. Look at that. What is uh, that? That is a hamburger from this commissary, which is known to poison people, but unfortunately <laughs> not him. That's the tail end of a hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hello, Corburn. Hi. Fifty years ago today, Herman Bickermeyer became the first man ever to cross a picket line. On that same date, he also became the first man ever to be stuffed into his own blank. Shoes. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Put the whole body into a pair of shoes. That was a good law, though. It was one of our yeah, better laws. That right. Like. That was a good law. He said shoes. shoes. I, like I don't know where I got this one, but it makes sense to me. Lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> the guy who, yeah. who does a thing up in... Uh, don't explain it, Joe. No, 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 wait, wait, no there may be something logical. No, there is a yeah, rationale yeah. in this. Shh, quiet. Who's the guy? Uh, Chavez Ravine. Chavez, Chavez, oh, oh, oh he, he means the great person, the man no, with the... No, the lettuce man. Same Caesar thing. Chavez. Oh, Caesar, right. Caesar Chavez. Yeah, yeah, the head of the grape Chavez pickers Orn, unit. Also known as Chavez Ravine. <laughs> <laughs> when they play baseball. Also known as Chavez Regal. Yes, yeah. very good Chavez. Scott. Also known as Chavez up your nose. <laughs> Chavez Ravine is a bib. It was the stadium. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh. <laughs> Joe, we're going to book you every but week. But lettuce makes sense. Yes, it does. Right. Makes sense to me. I like it. What lettuce do you say? What? Lettuce. Let us all go, Let us go on and show us show your oh, answer. Show, show us your what? Your yeah, answer. Be very careful. I started to say wife, but I knew that wasn't going to make any sense. Also, I said oven. Now, I'm Oven is okay. Oh. This is anything. Shoes, oven, glove compartment, anything lettuce? you have to. Lettuce is wonderful, yeah. Joe. <laughs> Joe, you, you lettuce let us just... Entertain you, you let us. Uh, go ahead. Fifty years ago, there was no glove compartment. <laughs> so you should not know. That easy. You should know, He's dear. He's so literal. Oh, God. Stu. <laughs> Another winner, friends. Sad. <laughs> now, Laurie, you've been having some troubles, and the answers that have preceded you have been iffy. That's, so don't that's feel right. Mine too is, bad. Mine's not too bad compared to some of the other ones I've heard. So, pick it. Pick it. That's not any worse than anybody else. That's the picket. wrong answer. That's the wrong answer, Williams. That's what that is. Am I ready? <laughs> yes. I'm ready? You're ready. Oh, I got a good one. It's wrong, but it's good. Shoved him in his own trunk. That's okay. <laughs> hey, what's your. Uh, yeah. Yeah, heavy on that? Okay. Don't encourage it. No, shoes. Yeah, you know, they you know, know, so far, Colbert, I think you have our shoes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. What do you got? Gene. Oh, Marsha. Oh, oh, another one of those. Marsha, Marsha. Oh, Gene. Marsha. Is it any wonder that I eat on this show? <laughs> now, I like to go with the flow here. You said it doesn't have to make sense, and it doesn't. Water pick. Okay. <laughs> that would be a small place yes. to put a person, and it would hurt that person very much to be stuffed into a water oh, pick, right? Was the okay. Answer. Now you got the idea. You see, you're dealing with a bunch of weirdos, so adjust your answers accordingly, Coburn. Now we got this message for you. Hurry back. Here we go. Joanne, this is your first round, one of equal difficulty that we gave to Coburn. Jake said, Christmas just isn't like it used to be. I saw a nativity scene where Joseph and Mary were riding into Bethlehem on a blank. <laughs> As if I would want but to I steal your answers. <laughs> he hides them from me, Gene, as if I would want to steal them. <laughs> I had it because the producer like gets mad because I show up to the audience, so I'm trying to... Well, no, I still haven't figured out how to do this car. You might be careful of that, too, when you pick up your car from here and put it in the slot. Don't flash it over there so they can see it, because then that would, might, you know, and not that you've been doing it, I'm just cautioning you in case you thought of accidentally doing it there. Hello, Joanne. Uh, hello. Jake said, Christmas just isn't like it used to be. I saw a nativity scene where Joseph and Mary were riding into Bethlehem on a blank. Riding into Bethlehem on a bicycle. <laughs> on a bicycle. She said, on a bicycle... Built for three. I'll say built for two. Bicycle built for two is what he said. Okay, that's one for her. Two would be right because... Uh, yeah, uh, of course, the, I understand. Was it just... Uh, yes. Wasn't quite... Not ready. Uh, yes. Mm. Uh, skateboard. Skateboard's good. That's... Uh, it's refreshing to be able to see. You know, I lost one of my contact lenses. I threw it away. I thought I'd put it in my case, and I evidently threw it away. So it's nice. I can see people out there. Hello, Doc. Rich lady like you ought to have two pair. Yes. I do have two pair. Oh. <laughs> you four. have one pair. 
Yeah, I only counted two. <laughs> <laughs> Things have changed since we went in. No, I haven't. There is no surgery that'll correct. Hello, Charles. <laughs> Monorail. Monorail is another good response, Charles. Thank you. Yes. Actually, it was a cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> Still not permitted. Okay, Lori. Uh, Joseph and Mary were riding into Bethlehem on a... Well, now this is basically the same thing, only with a motor. Motorcycle. Isn't that good? No, no. no. Motor on it. I love that answer. It's a brilliant answer. Motorcycle. I put Honda, right? Honda. Yeah. 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 Bicycle. This should get half a point. What? Moped. Moped. <laughs> that is a bike. That's half a bike. Uh, it's half a bike. You have to bicycle them to get them started, and then they become a motorized vehicle. No. But it, that is not a bicycle. Oh. <laughs> hey, who needs that for you, huh? For you, Ira. Those booze. Not for me. I'm just a middleman here. Okay, Coburn, A or B? B, please. Okay. Now, Coburn learned how to play the game in the first round, and now he's going to give a nifty answer, for, and I hope you are, too. <laughs> sure. Well. Art, the appliance store owner, right. has lost his mind. Today, to keep warm, he put a blank in his pants. <laughs> I use up Honda, so that's... <laughs> Let's say... Yeah. The, oh, the, oh, the, Art, the appliance store owner, has lost his mind. Today, to keep warm, he put a blank in his pants. I got it. Now I got it. Art, the appliance store owner, has lost his mind, Coburn. Today, to keep warm, he put a blank in his pants. He put a stove in his pants. A stove in his pants. What did he say? Stove. Wood-burning stove, would you say? Well, you a wood-burning wood stove? Crazy, in you know. Yes. Did he say wood-burning stove? Coburn huh? is stretching our imagination here a bit. There. What do you say? Yeah, this is going to stretch your imagination, too. I should go home. Transist. A transistor. <laughs> I don't get it. Joey, Joey, though. Joe comes here, he has a good time, he laughs, gives rotten answers, and he's just wonderful to have around. Thank you. We all love you, Joe. <laughs> Come on, Brett. You know what a transistor does? It doesn't warm you up, but you're having such a good time, you don't notice. Oh, I see. <laughs> an electric fry pan. That's okay. <laughs> that Those are my people out there. Warm as buns, wouldn't it? That's what I said. Bun a warmer. bun warmer. <laughs> Yay for Chuck. You got the idea, Lori. Why do I always have to sit right after him? Charles has the most spectacular answers, and yes. then I have to have these plain little things like toaster. Toaster is good. No, an electric toaster would be good. This girl is not only beautiful, but in, very clever and very bright. I put toaster too. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you know the he amazing copied. thing it's is catchy. we're he didn't, copying. He one didn't another. steal no, it. No, he didn't copy well, I didn't, from that's her. Dumb. I just did that dumb thing. Yes, Marcia. Now you got to match Marcia oh, here, Oh, but no pressure is on me. That's yes, why I love this spot. Stove is what he said. Well, I. This better be funny, Marcia. Iron. Iron. So that means Joanne wins another game. Coburn, it was a pleasure to meet you. It's nice being here. Good luck to you in the wonderful work you're doing with young people of today. We're going to send some gifts your way for Match Game 79. Coburn Ross, here's a message for you, America. Ready to go here. Are you ready? Uh, to be an old hand at this. This is your fourth, <laughs> fourth win here. We polled the studio audience not too long ago. Joanne said, write down your best answer to this. <laughs> Valley of blank. Remember how it goes? $500 for the answer that's most popular, $250 for the second most popular, and $100 to you for the third most popular answer. Whom do you call on? Joe. Valley of the Dolls. Yeah. Okay, there's one. Martian. What is that? I said that from the Valley of uh, the sh Shadow of Valley, Valley of Shevis Ravine. Sh or the Shevis Lettuce. Valley of Lettuce. <laughs> the the Valley of Despair. Oh. What? I did the other. The right one didn't come to me, but it will come to someone else. Well, yes, think about it for a second. Well, I, I moved through the Valley of the Shadow of 
<laughs> Don't worry about what? it. What? Right. Just go right on. Shut the yeah. <laughs> Gee, that's an upper, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Valley of the Dolls? No, we he did that. Oh, you did. Uh, Valley wait, of the wait, Giants. No, Valley of the Giant D. Dolls. Valley of the Jolly Green Valley Giant. Valley of the Jolly Green Giant. Valley of Decision. Greenpeace. He's given 12 one. answers. Now, hey, what yeah, do you want? What happened? A Valley of Decision. No. No. No, we got to go with that. Your first oh, you one you formulated was Valley of the Jolly Green Giant or something like that. That'll be it. So there you have the Valley of the Giants or Jolly Green Giants, whatever that is. And Valley of Death. Uh, snappy answer there. Somebody <laughs> should tape his mouth. And the uh, valley <laughs> of, it is of the like dolls. <laughs> now, do you want one of those, Joanne, or have you got a better idea? No, I don't have a better idea. Um, valley of the dolls. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. Now, let's all be curious and see what we have over here, shall we? <laughs> Let us reveal the $100 response. Valley of the Giant. Hey, I'm not from South Africa. That's right. You laugh when I speak. No, no, no. I talked you into that answer. See, I, I told you that. Okay. Here we go with a $250 number. Ah! Uh -huh. You too are much smarter than you appear to be. <laughs> it was a real jolly group that day, wasn't it? Yes, it was, indeed. Okay, last chance for Valley of the Dolls. Slide the big one. There it is. Okay, Joanne, we pick up another $500. And a fifth from Joe Santos. And it means the least you play for is 5000 or... You spun this wheel twice, haven't you? Goes on you God, and it's come up on Lori twice here. Now let's see if you double your money this time. Right, now good luck to you. Let's all root good. for Joanne yeah. to get a double here. $10,000. Wow. With Marsha Wallace there. Oh, She's you're a good ready. little player. All right, here we go. <laughs> Cookies and blank. <laughs> Cookies and blank. Okay. What do you say to that to match her for $10,000? Cookies and milk. Cookies and milk. $10,000 at stake here. What do you got there That's for That's all? Him? That's it. That'll buy it. we start the game? Well, I'm from Reseda. My yep. husband's here. His name's Michael Ron Anello. We have two sons, Joshua yeah. and Adam. And there's not a whole lot to say. My husband used to be a drummer. Now he's a warehouseman. Quite a change. But that's all. He can beat on the walls of the warehouse. Those two walls are oh, he can. Made a lot of there. Okay, Jenna, welcome and good luck to you. Here we go with A or B. A. A it is for her. And this says, Willie said, when I was born, my mother put me in a basket. For years, I thought I was a blank. She likes this one. 
Anytime you're ready, Brett. <laughs> oh, are we waiting for me? Yeah. Oh, Willie wait, said, I have to put my little When I was born, down. my mother put me in a basket. And for years, I thought I was a blank. Easter egg? Easter egg. Okay. Easter eggs. Yeah. Yes, at Easter time, the kids get little baskets filled with candy eggs or hard-boiled eggs uh, decorated in various colors. Right, Joe? That's right. But this is another one you got to figure out because you got to understand the way oh, I'm thinking. Not lettuce again, is it? No. no. It's the Colonel's chicken. Oh, chicken in the basket. That's chicken not in the bad. basket. I think it's good. Let's hear it for Joe Santa. It's wonderful, Joe. Wonderful. Okay, Brent. <laughs> I think it stinks. <laughs> Don't want to hurt his own feelings. <laughs> Don't tell him it's a rotten answer. No, not Joe. Wait. I'm sincere. Chicken in the basket is good. It has it's, a little. It's not a good. Colonel's it's chicken. Chicken in the basket. Boom, da da dum da. You can do a whole little part. Chicken in the basket. how good it is, they're applauding. Okay. <laughs> no, I went for a more domestic speed up. I went to for a more domestic answer. I said a bunch of laundry. All right. That's good. Charles, laundry basket. So it's good enough for Joe. It's good enough for me. Right. Chicken in the basket twice, one laundry basket. Laurie. Loaf of bread. Loaf of bread. Bread Hi, in Joe, basket. Bread in basket. Loaf of bread. Loaf of bread. I got close. Easter bunny. Yeah, close. wonderful. Easter bunny. We can have a point, though. <laughs> Who knew that Joe turned out to be such a person of taste and perception? Chicken. Chicken it is. There we are. And uh, she's had her first round question. And what do we want to do here? You want to do a commercial? You want to go what? home? No. Commercial. Okay, here's a commercial. Join us next time for Match Game 79. I'm Gene Rayburn. Thank you all. Well, thank you. Goodbye. Get ready to match the stars from Vegas, Bart Braverman, Brett Summers, from Matt, Gary Murdoch, Elaine Joyce, Bill Daly, and Marsha Wallace as we play the star-studded Big Bunny Match Game 79. And now, here's the star of Match Game 79, Gene Raymer! Look at the legs on that guy in the first row. <laughs> Holy mackerel. It's very That's distracting. Not a guy. Put That's him in a the girl. Oh, is it? Oh. Hey, what does this mean? Buy At the beginning when he said, Bart Braverman, you went like that. I just made it up. I don't know. Really? Sorry, That's you know, the thing. I fractured mean... piece. I don't know. You know? <laughs> Whatever. It used that. to be in the 60s, and now it's kind of. That's uh, <laughs> Charles Nelson Burgoff. No, it's right. not. But Charles left his tobacco here, I want you to know. I've got a tobacco store here. It's little bits of tobacco all over everything. We want this all I sneeze a few times Clean. after the show. All right. We'll paint it and fix it up uh, while Charles is away. He's in New York directing a play. Let's say hello to Essie Paul and Susie Coker. How do you feel today? Terrific. Good. How do you feel, Susie? Good, good. All right, shall we continue here? All right, now, Susie, you had your first round question. You did not match any of our stars. Let's see how Essie Paul does with her first round question. Here it is. Harry said... Oh, we've started. I think my barber used to work in a grocery store. Uh -huh. Instead of shaving cream, he tried to shave me with blank. <laughs> Bill, just put down Ty Cobb like he did last week. <laughs> oh, boy. Bessie, Harry said I think my barber used to work in a grocery store. Instead of shaving cream, he tried to shave me with blank. Whipped cream. Well, certainly. <laughs> now, 
Is that hard, Bart? What looks like shaving cream? I'm sure that was a great answer. I, I just thought grocery store, and I thought there's so many things in a grocery store to choose from, and I chose the wrong one. So you can just pass on. I won't even tell you what it is because it's really not important. So I, I just said soap. It's a major series, soap. So I just thought, you know what? Hey, I have an Italian expression for all of you, but I won't tell you what it is. <laughs> Faccia la finestra. <laughs> it's very similar to that. Who's kicks no, just That vacha? just means throw yourself out the window. That's all that means. <laughs> no, sweeter, I told you I'd save your blank if you'd just look over here and steal my answer, but I didn't see, I didn't know, I didn't know anybody even used whipped cream anymore. I just put Cool Whip. Same cool Whip, thing. all right. Well, that's all that's in the thing. You just now, hold it on. Now, wait a minute. It's a substitute. Now, just, I see, I'm cool not... Whip is whipping cream. It is. Cool Whip is whipping cream. Right. We gotta get a clean. Yeah, can we get a you clean say food? it's non a non dairy product. Well, that's true. So that. Oh, come on, now. Hey, 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 hey. Get that producer over here. Get him over here. Come on. <laughs> 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 nah, stick around here. Sit down. Still violent. The show. You're losing not control violent. again. All right, well, that straightened okay. it out. I didn't understand it. I didn't know that Cool Whip was a non-dairy product. She meant Cool Whip, didn't you, Hot? Well, of course. <laughs> okay. Well, I said mayonnaise, but, I, but it's dairy. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's what? Mayonnaise is made from olive oil and eggs. Hello, oh. Elaine. It's dairy. Uh, Barbara used to work in a grocery store and said of shaving cream, he tried to shave me with. I said Cool Whip also. Cool Whip is just a chemicals. So, you know, just chemicals, it's not, yeah. It's not whipped cream, really. Boy. Well, we're in the 70s. Nobody uses uh, whipping cream anymore because it's I too do. fat. I use hand whipped After cream. Hearing, I don't use all that synthetic junk that's no good for filling. you. After hearing for shaving? You cool Whip, I'm going to use whipped cream for <laughs> You use all that? Okay, thing? Bill. He said Goya milk. <laughs> I would like a complete apology from the entire cast of this show. Whipping cream. <laughs> Sorry. She didn't have to. I she told it to me. I told her. She told me the She gave you the whip. <laughs> what do I have to apologize for? No. All right. This show has really gotten violent since no, I have No, it hasn't. Been. You've oh, gotten yes. violent. There. Hello, Marsha. Hello, Jean. Hi, Marsha. Hi, Marcia. Be calm and Hello, cool Elaine. and collected and what was now. your name again? Uh, <laughs> you remember me. We worked together once. <laughs> it was between this show and Celebrity Bowling. I think I made the wrong decision. <laughs> I thought this was Celebrity Bowling. <laughs> I'm visibly Saturday shaken night that I've started off matching Bill Daly, whipping cream. <laughs> okay, two for you. Round two coming up. Right now, I got a message for you. Three, two, four, three, two, five, seven, seven, front, front, so, boing, bing, boing, boing, bang, boom, 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 Susie wants A. Here we go with A. Ready for A? This is A. A will say, da 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 da. You're okay. Here it is. Cut. You got to loosen up. Now, stand it up. Tell me. I've been very tense. <laughs> you can't. You can't appear bored on television. <laughs> mean Marvin said, "I just bought one of those die-hard batteries." I blanked it twice and it wouldn't die. <laughs> mean Marvin is speaking. Those are the operative words. Mean? Mean Marvin. Okay. No. No, one, two, three, four. All right, everybody finished. Okay, Susie. Mean Marvin said, I just bought one of those die hard batteries. I blanked it twice and it wouldn't die. Shot it. Shot it, certainly. She came up with what I think is the awesome. definitive answer. She shot the battery twice and it wouldn't die. Is that what you think is the definitive answer? I would think so. You may well turn out to be right, but just to show that I have no preference for either of you, I've blown it for both of you, I put charged it twice. You charged it. You don't shoot batteries. You shoot. Bravo! Bravo! Oh, boy, what a wrist Earlier on that Earlier I went this odd job in another film. <laughs> you nearly cut his head off with that there. Hello there. 
You see the poor little devil, he's heavy into logic. That's right. Imagine a person who is right. logical. Right, not on this show, no <laughs> logic. Doing, I need mean, good gravy, Marie El Shot. Oh. Shot, okay, wonderful, Susie. with your logic is it's so illogical. Oh, you know, that's not the way to hurt a battery. You short it. I said short it. Oh, you shorted it twice and it wouldn't die. Oh, uh... Wait till you Listen, I'm half you. Italian, too. I got a couple of words. <laughs> All I right. have a couple of Mom words and I don't really... have a drop of Italian blood. Is she finished? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Elaine. Love the color of your hair. <laughs> I'll just stand by until you two You're acts have finished. finished. Oh. I just bought one of those die-hard batteries. I blanked it twice and it wouldn't die. I choked it. Aha. Uh -huh. You choked a carburetor. <clears throat> but Charge not doesn't a look so dumb now, does whoa, it? Whoa, no. Whoa, whoa, thank you. You uh, choke your choke, Gene. You no, choke no. Choke. You choke the carburetor. What do I? Oh, what do you there. do to a battery? You, you shoot, shoot it. it with a gun. <laughs> We're waiting, Bill. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought... Uh, she, she whispered stab in my ear, which Would is right good. stop blaming me for all this? But I didn't say that, I said shot. Oh. <laughs> uh -huh. That oh, really is so amazing. You now, here again, everybody, everybody is implying with their answers and their colloquies that the dummy on the panel is uh, Bill Daly. Yeah, where did they get and that idea? two out of two he's gotten so far. <laughs> Your ear. He starts out by saying it's a bad answer, and yeah. then if it matches and he gets applause, he changes his tune. Shot. Oh. Yay! Two out of two. Okay, now where are we here? Scores uh, three to two in favor of Susie. Essie, you need one to tie and two to win. Fred said, "This restaurant must be owned by a stripper." Uh oh. I just ordered two fried eggs and they came with blanks on them. <laughs> you don't play? You don't play. Okay. The only one I knew really. This restaurant must be owned by a stripper. I just ordered two fried eggs and they came with blanks on them. Bras. Bras? Really? Good answer. Uh, see, bras, uh, do, I mean, do strippers wear bras? Have you ever seen a stripper? They take them off. Oh, that's why they're called strippers. Take it off, take it oh. off. Try All the right. From the rear. You okay. know that, Gene. All right. I think you'll find this to be the definitive answer. I think pasties will probably yeah. make it. Pasties. Pasties. I guess that doesn't match bra, huh? No, it does not match bra, but I, I think you're right. It is the definitive answer. You bet your old-fashioned tin type pasties. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> She could, she could be shocking without following through. Okay? Right. <laughs> I said uh, pasties. Three pasties. Now, Essie, you've got to match Elaine to stay in the game and achieve a tie. Oh. God. Your eyes are so wide. <laughs> Don't be nervous. No <laughs> uh, I said tassels. Tassels. So that means Susie Coker wins the game. $1,400 and our best wishes, S.E. Paul. There she goes. Okay. Now, Susie, here it is. You've got $100. And uh, you're very excited about that. Oh. I mean, she's calmed down a little bit, but she was uh, jumping around here a moment ago. And she said to me, what'd you say to me? I said I just wanted to win one game so my kids wouldn't think I was a jerk. <laughs> When you won it, and you've redeemed them yourself in their eyes. Now, here we go. We pulled a studio audience and said, write down your best answer to this. Oh, G boy. blank. G blank. Now, mm -hmm. if you match the answer that the studio audience wrote down most often, you get $500. <laughs> for matching the second most popular response, $250. And then for the third, $100. Whom do you call on here? Oh, uh, Bill. Uh, oh. Bill? Isn't that his name? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Bill, that idiot. Bill. They're going to call on that idiot. Uh, gee whiz. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. What is this? 
Look, she has faith in it. What is this crowd? This they is my crowd. I can't believe they all hate me. This is the only crowd ever liked me. This is neat. <laughs> oh, I love you. Oh, you love me. Thank you. Awesome. Um, nice. Joyce? Yeah. Joyce. Elaine. Elaine. Uh, Joyce. Elaine Joyce? Joyce? Elaine Joyce. Married to Bobby Van. Geography. No. No. Um. <laughs> G. Golly. G. Golly. <laughs> G. Golly. Listen. That's Elaine. what Phil told me. G. Golly. <laughs> Is that why you're going, I call on me, I got a good one. No, because Gee, I golly. wrote down whiz and he took it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, one more. Uh, Marcia. One of my favorite singing groups, the GBs. The GBs. <laughs> <laughs> the Bee Gees. Uh, they're that wonderful. That was just a joke. No, oh, what is your it's real, real right. answer? My real answer, G. Willikers. Yeah. G. Willikers. <laughs> We got G Wiz, G Willikers, and G Golly. G Golly. I'm going to go with G Wiz. G Wiz. Okay, that was Bill's answer. Let's see if G Wiz is up there. And if so, where? May we see the $100 number? G G. G G. G G. It's a Broadway show, a movie. Yeah. Is it a horse? Oh. Horses are GGs in what language? <laughs> in horse language. Now wait a minute. Are you kidding me? Uh, does anybody have anybody heard of that? Have, are, are anybody, anybody here who goes to the racetrack? Yeah. All right. Have you ever heard a horse referred to a GG? Yeah. Oh, you say to him, GG. <laughs> That's after you lose, GG. <laughs> Today. Really? <laughs> All right, let's see what we've got on the next one. Please slide it. Here we go. G Gee golly gumption. I told you you have a rural audience. <laughs> That's two things in a row I've never heard of. I never say golly gumption. I never said that as a kid gumption. or an adult or any time in my life. You want G whiz, huh? Yeah. All right, yeah. let's give her G whiz. Slide the big one. Yeah. And uh, we're going to go on from there, but first we got to do a little business in America, all right? Okay. Now, Susie here has just won the $500. That means at least she'll play for us 10 times that amount, or $5,000, but we want her to spin the wheel and see if she can double her money and play for $10,000 instead of $5,000. Good luck to you. We'll all root for a double. Here we go. <laughs> All right, I'm going to be playing with Marsha Wallace for $5,000. And good luck to you. If you're ready, Marsha, here oh, sure. it Jesus. is. Fantasy blank. Oh. Fantasy, fantasy blank. Okay, Susie, she's finished. Now, if you give us the answer that she's written on the card, we give you $5,000. Fantasy Island. She said, Fantasy Island will match over the 5,000. What do you say to that, Marsha? What do I say? Yes. Fantasy Island. find out who this lady is and where she's from. I am a flight attendant for Major Airlines, yep. uh, based out of Los Angeles. I do a little volunteer work at a local hospital, and um, 
I enjoy sports. I play a little golf and racquetball. Well, you're a very uh, healthy-looking lady. Isn't she healthy-looking? Yeah. <laughs> 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 mm-hmm. Sun does wonderful things to your hair, too, doesn't it? Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Deneen, good luck to you. You may have A or B. I'll take B. B it is. All right. Hi. <laughs> No, he is Italian, isn't he? <laughs> yes. The archaeologist said, this pyramid is a fake. It's the first time I ever saw a 5,000-year-old pyramid with a blank. Now, don't say it out loud. <laughs> Yeah, this isn't the pyramid show, Bill. You can't say it out loud. <laughs> oh. yeah, I say one thing, and he's like, here, I, he thought I said uh, mummy. I didn't say mummy. All right, the archaeologist said, this pyramid is a fake. It's the first time I ever saw a 5,000-year-old pyramid with a... A stucco friend. <laughs> Go back to your other answer, Bill. <laughs> Go back. That was right. That was the answer to yes. that question. <laughs> stuck yeah, yeah. Get your stuck on front out there. <laughs> okay, Bart. There were a variety of choices, I think. There will yeah. not be a definitive answer. Don't feel bad. I personally put elevator. Elevator is good. Almost anything. Yeah. Well, what we're after is anything that's incongruous with a structure 5,000 years old. Speed up. Escalator stairs. Very good. What do you got? I said a stucco bathroom. Stucco bathroom. Okay. Elaine, what do you got? I have said an air conditioner. Air conditioner, very incongruous for a 5,000 year old. Aluminum, I can't say this word, aluminum awning. Aluminum awning, yes, sorry. <laughs> very good. Marsha? He's doing very well, isn't he? Yes, it? he is. The medicine will help, though. A den and or TV room. Den or TV room, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, you stand by, Susie, for yours. Right now, we have this message for you. How much? 30 seconds. Oh, we can do another oh, show. Oh, yeah, Please. let's do Golly something. Isn't it okay? What's a movie here? Are you making a movie? Yes. Is that why your hair looks funny? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to talk to you. I don't think it looks funny. I think it looks no, good. No, it's just the very chic, very different from your normal look. Now, it's it dairy. Get out of it. No, I'm not going to get out of it. <laughs> well, I don't want to plug your movie. <laughs> no, you no, tell us that, okay. lady. What? No, tell us what movie you're doing. No. Okay. <laughs> You got something? Oh, your hair looks funny, too. <laughs> oh, sure. She's doing the same movie. She's no, got mayonnaise you're, you're on her. Movie? No, I'm doing a play at the Queen Mary, same time next year. No kidding. Hopefully we won't sail away during the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Both Long Beach. Okay. Look for Marsha Wallace and the Queen Mary. <laughs> I'm Gene Rayburn. Join us next time for Match Game 79. Goodbye. Get ready to match the stars from Vegas, Bart Braverman, Brett Summers, the man, Gary Burgoff, Elaine Joyce, Bill Daly, and Marsha Wallace as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 79. And now, here's the star of Match Game 79, Gene Rager. Green suits unlucky? Is this St. Patrick's Day? No, no, it's past. No. Past. It's Christmas. Oh, We're right. at the end of it's April, Christmas. aren't we? It's green yes, Christmas. Yes, right. Oh, I didn't know. We're, We're not near Christmas. Oh, no. Sorry We're at the that. end of April or someplace oh, like that. Oh, thank heaven. Marianne, would you step down yeah. this way, please, and take your spot here in that blue uh, thread oh, on the... the wheel now. Oh, boy. Yes, we're doing the wheel. We're going to turn this around <coughs> because... Uh, what? Head to head. <laughs> it's around May 14th. Oh, oh, it is about May 14th. I have to go. May 14th. Yeah. It's my birthday in a week. Time Jeez. flies. Now, yesterday, when we left Mary Ann, she had walked over here, and she had won the $500. Now, that means she's going to play for $5,000 or 
Another lucky spin of the wheel means ten thousand dollars. Give that good luck to you. We're all rooting for a double. Here we go. There it goes. And he goes to the Wait, no. no, it's not. It's all electronically controlled. If it were in the Gold Star area, the uh, double light up above there would have gone on and shown blue. Close. And I'm sorry, oh, it did not. She's playing for $5,000, which ain't bad. Holy. With uh, what's his name up there? That'll pay your utility bill. <laughs> Bart Brinkman, are you ready? Yes, yes, I am ready. Right, Okay. Gang? I'm as ready as I get. Good is. luck. Here it is. Blank Sink. S I N K. Okay, now Marianne, you give us the answer that Bart has written on the card. If you do that, you get five thousand dollars. Kitchen sink. Kitchen sink. <laughs> to me, it sounds like a shoe in. But we'll find out. There are other possibilities. Body push in right. <laughs> Any Thanks, idiot knows that that's the right answer. Right? <laughs> Throw out everything but. Uh -huh. Hey, what do you say we all applaud Alma Joe Clark? Applause, applause, applause. Welcome. Hi, Kathy here, Alma Joe. Thank you. We'd like to find out a little bit about yourself. I can tell one thing about you. You are connected with the dental world in some way. Very good. I'm a freshman dental student at UCLA. You know how I can tell? She I has, can. excuse me for touching you there. <laughs> she has a a gold tooth hanging on a little gold chain here. With a, those, uh, look at how deep her roots are. <laughs> Can we get a shot of that? Could you see that? Okay. You're a dental student. Yes. Okay, where? At UCLA. Yep. And where do you live? I live there at UCLA on campus. I mean, where was your home? I mean, are you a Californian? Well, I was born in Spokane, Washington, but I've lived in several other places because my father is in the service. Oh, so, move uh, around of, a little. Yes. Yeah, okay. Anything else you want to say about you? You got any hobbies or anything like that? Oh, yes, I like to do ceramics, and I <laughs> so like to jog. So do we. We do it ceramic, between shows. We all do ceramics here. <laughs> That's then. right, and basket weaving. Basket weaving, rugs. yes. <laughs> rugs, yes. Working on my rug now. Right. But I really love to dance. You do? Yes, I do. Oh, gosh, I'm sorry. We can't have, a, have you dancing out here, but we can give you A or B here, Alma Joe. How about A? How about A? A for Alma Joe. Jackie, the comic said. Right. I didn't have a good week. I got five pieces of hate mail, and that was just for my blank. <laughs> okay, Alma Joe. Jackie, the comic said. I didn't have a good week. I got five pieces of hate mail. And that was just from my blank. Mother. Mother. Aha, uh -huh, good one. Good one. There are two or three good choices here. She came up with one of the good choices. Have you ever heard anyone say, take my mother, please? Yes. Doesn't work that way. Take my wife. Oh. Yes. Five pieces of hate mail. And that I'm was just from my Joe. wife. Marum bum. You know. Ba -dum -bum. Ba -dum -bum. Ba -dum yep. Hi, Bill. Hi, honey. Hi, Brett. Uh, I wonder what he's got. <laughs> hey, I like as long as he doesn't well. give it to Don't me. Show her. <laughs> Don't show her ever. No. no, all is not lost. Of course, everybody boy, boy has a mother. Yeah. Mother! Okay. Now the joke has one. I said agent. Agent! <laughs> Well, I, you know, I, it's my agent. I, uh, you want to see. Talk I get a lot of mail from my agent. I, I assumed everybody. Yeah, but did. you like uh, your agent. Gene? Bob Crystal is a nifty guy. Oh, he's, he's my manager. manager. Mm, oh, he's, he's your manager, best. not your agent. Changing uh, agents. Yes. It's like changing deck chairs on the Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh,
inside show business phrase very applicable to all of us on this stage. <laughs> yes. Hmm? Oh, yes, I said uh, mother. Mother! Keep her on the go. Comic said I didn't have a good week. I got five pieces of hate mail, and that was just from my blood. And that was just from my fans. Say this from what you do. Fans. Ah. fans is another one good possibility. That's a good one. Marsha, you must have a good one, too. She does have a good one. I can verify for that one. <laughs> I worked with her a long time, and I know that about You're that. You're blushing. One bad one and one good one. No. <laughs> <laughs> Look down. That's true. Oh, my God, it's true. I know that. All those years Next ago. Next, it'll be in the National Enquirer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is he on something? <laughs> I wish I were. Mother. Mother! Mother. Leave her on the go. Okay, my man. Neil said, that exotic dancer... Must have gotten her equipment from a delicatessen. Instead of a snake, she dances with a blank. <laughs> okay, here we go. Neil said that exotic dancer must have gotten her equipment from a delicatessen. Instead of a snake, she dances with a blank. A salami. A salami. Bart, she said a salami. Close, but no salami. I said a sausage. A sausage. No, salami's good. Stick with salami. I think it'll work for you. <laughs> All right. Now, there's nothing ethnic about this. This is a true thing. This is a... a you, she danced with a double length of Polish sausage. A double length of Polish sausage. Yes. Thank you. Isn't that a little technical? <laughs> yes. But uh, it's not went, a salami. She was in vaudeville, you know. She wanted the name of Salome. Salome! Yeah, Salome oh, and her salami. Salome and her salami. The magic salami. Salome, how she danced. Elaine? Uh, exotic dancer got her equipment from a delicatessen. Instead of a snake, she dances with a... Knockwurst. <laughs> knockwurst! <laughs> and that's the worst knock I ever had in my life. Oh, I love that one, yeah. He always takes a peek at his answer like he doesn't remember what he it is. Really and he doesn't remember what it is. He has a short attention span. Check, that was check the spelling, folks. Check that. Well, I couldn't spell it, but I said salami Trust and rye. Trust me, that's what salami... Salami and rye. That's salami. salami. Now that's salami. Come on. Salme on rye. Well, I could have done salami. Salme on rye. Wait a minute. That's what I wanted to say. Salme on rye. Wait that's, that's one salme on rye. Hold the mustard. That wasn't a match. I wanted to say salme. <laughs> I had a wonderful salme sandwich last night. So now she's got two, you've got three. What do you say to I've this? I've got two. Waiter, check, please. <laughs> <laughs> it was between a corned beef sandwich on white with mayonnaise, my yeah, favorite. Right. Or a salami. A salami. Comes up later now. This for you. Okay. Now we go to round two. Tie score here, three to three. Alma Joe, A or B? A, please. Okay, Alma Joe. Fat Phyllis said to Frida, "A man picked me up in the bar last night." And Frida said, "Fat Phyllis, the only way a man could pick you up is with a blank." <laughs> Fat Phyllis said to Frida, a man picked me up in a bar last night, and Frida said, Fat Phyllis, the only way a man could pick you up is with a... Crane. Crane, she said. She said, a crane. I make up for the last answer, a crane. A crane. <laughs> Show us your crane. I make up for the last three answers, a crane. Yeah. A crane. Show us your crane. I would like to. I can't make up for my life or this show. I'm sorry. I said tow truck. Tow truck. We didn't say. We didn't say tow. We said pick up. Don't make me sound worse than I am. <laughs> that feels impossible. impossible to do. Your mother turned this show off. Oh, all right. Now, Marianne, you need two to tie and three to win. Ready? Here we go. Larry said, "This." has got to be the world's oldest restroom. The writing on the wall is written in blank. <laughs> world's oldest room, you don't play here. Just Elaine, Bart, and Brett. Bart, Brett, and Elaine. Ready? Larry said, this has got to be the world's oldest restroom. The writing on the wall is written in... Latin? Latin. 
It is a good answer. Now, Latin, 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 Latin is not bad. That's funny like in the Bible. Old. That's not bad. Latin, Greek, hieroglyphics, all those old things would be good there, right? So I put hieroglyphics. Hieroglyphics is another good one. Now let's see. To stay in the game, you've got to match the two remaining ones. That's Brett and Elaine. What have you got? I'm sorry. Sand a script. Sand a script. And that means that all Joe wins again. What you have there? I'm very happy you won some money. So good. And you're going to put it to good use, I guess, aren't you? All right, Marianne. $16,200 for this lady. And a girl, congratulations. Bye. Hello there. You're ready. Good. It's all for your benefit, Alan Joe. The big uh, board there for the super match, the wheel, and now let's begin. We polled the studio audience and we said, write down your best answer to this. Hold it. Joy of play. Okay. If you give us the answer that that group in the studio wrote down most frequently, we give you five hundred dollars. Oh, no. Then, for matching their second most popular answer, two hundred and fifty dollars. And for matching the third, you get a hundred dollars. It's hard to lose here. All right. <laughs> Elaine, the joy of sex. Yeah. The joy oh, of sex. That's what I to do. That was mine, but now I give up. Don't put. Oh, well, here, here. It's the other fun thing: joy of cooking. The joy of cooking. <laughs> If you're having sex while you're cooking, it's fun. <laughs> Brett, I, the joy of living. Yeah. The joy of living, the joy of sex, and the joy of cooking are the three they've given you. You can choose one of those or give us one of your own. I'd like to go with the joy of sex. You would? Okay, come with me. Oh, I beg your pardon. <laughs> I got mine. <laughs> okay. Joy of sex is the one she's chosen here. Let's find out if it's up there and if so, where? We'll begin at the bottom and reveal the $100 number. Joy of cooking. That's my she's case. Scoffed. You know, that's, isn't that, that's probably the best -selling oldest cookbook. Best oldest selling. cookbook and the best selling cookbook in the history of uh, uh, culinary arts. Yes. Okay, let's look at the $250 number. And we have the joy, the joy of living there. Here's the last chance for the joy of sex. I forgot to tell you, the people who were here that day were from the old folks' home. <laughs> I don't know if they the would really have thought of the joy of sex. And they ought to let's know try anyway. Anybody. Slide the big one. Yeah! All right. All right. Now, my Joe Clark. You're up to $600 now, and uh, you're on your way to some big money, we hope. But before we uh, have a shot at that, we want to have a shot at this for you. Here we go. Here we are. Well, my Joe just won the $500, and that means the least she'll play for is 10 times that amount, or $5,000. But we want her to spin the wheel and see if she can double her money. Good luck to you, Alma Joe. We'll all root for a double. And if you do, it'll be $10,000. Here we go. Give it a call, Karen. Wallace, here we go with you for oh, Marcia Wallace. Yes. Five thousand dollars. All right. You just uh, swing around here and face me if you would. Thank you very much. Here we go. Good luck. It says blank lobby. Blank lobby. Okay. You give us the answer that, that she's got on the card. <clears throat> we give you five thousand dollars. It's all there is to it. What do you say? Hotel. Hotel lobby. Simple, straightforward answer, hotel lobby. Marcia, she says that'll match you for the 5,000. What do you say? I say, luckily for her, I used to hang out in a lot of them. Hotel. Hotel lobby! How are you, sir? I'm fine, thank Good. you. Good. We welcome you. Want to get acquainted with you before you start the competition here? What would you like to say about yourself? Well, I'm from Hopkinsville, Kentucky, and I'm a professional golfer, and I just got finished with my first year of playing on a tour in Florida. Right. And I'm out here visiting some friends and seeing some stars. Well, there they are. There they are. 
Hopefully he'll do a little down. better, Bill. Will it? <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, Charles isn't here today. <laughs> I suppose being a professional golfer, that means you're a scratch golfer, right? Yes, sir. And I've been for a while. And how many tournaments have you played in? In my lifetime? No, I mean since you you <laughs> turned pro. Uh, I mean you turned pro in this past year. The past year, I've played in uh, 16 professional tournaments yeah. during the year. And how many of those have you won? None. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry I brought it up, Kirk. I shouldn't have said that, should I? Did you come close in any of them? Not real close. <laughs> I finished a lot of them. Though. You finished a lot. Of them. Well, that's I like his stick to itiveness, yeah. don't you? Let's Anything see. else you'd like to abuse him I'm about? I'm 80 over here. Well, what the hell, I'll play the last nine holes anyway. <laughs> okay, really? Kirk, good luck to you here. And good luck to both our players. You can have A or B. I'll take A. A it is. For Kirk Jones, the professional golfer. Old man Periwinkle said, <laughs> No wonder I've been feeling strange lately. That stupid doctor didn't install a pacemaker. He installed a blank maker. <laughs> Oh, you twit? No wonder I've been feeling strange lately. That stupid doctor didn't install a pacemaker. He installed a blank maker. We're staring at one another like a bunch of... I'm dealing with a bunch of dummies. dummies. Dummy maker, no. Uh, what are you doing after the show, uh, little girl? Uh, you like old men? Yeah. Okay, come with me. All you right. go ahead and I'll meet you. <laughs> I may have to start without you. <laughs> okay, Bart, let's go. Ready, Kirk? Okay. Old man Periwinkle said, No wonder I've been feeling strange lately. That stupid doctor didn't install a pacemaker. He installed a blank maker. Coffee maker? Coffee maker. Oh, What's wrong with that? That's okay. I think coffee maker is good. What do you think? I'm really sorry about the tournaments. Really sorry about the answer. I put cake maker because I just... Uh... Cake maker. <laughs> coffee maker may work out for you. All right. Did you think that was a good answer? Any household appliance, ice maker, all those things, coffee maker, that'd be all right. I think coffee maker is a terrific answer. Coffee maker! Oh! One for two. Good looking guy, isn't he? Not yeah. bad, but I'm taken. Oh. <laughs> So, so this right. month. So are you? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you want a boo? Let's get it over with, All folks. Right. Give me a big boo. boo. Thanks a lot. Hey, I'm going okay, terrible, cut. Man. You could do better than that, but uh, you can hold off for the next. I said Rainmaker. Rainmaker. I like it. Oh, that was good. I like it. Rainmaker. Okay, yeah. Elaine, what have you got there? Instead of a pacemaker, you installed a... Coffee maker. Coffee maker. Hey, it's two for him. Thank goodness all the boos are gone because he was so old. I said a wrinkle maker. See, a wrinkle. <laughs> Rotten. Well, there's a few the boos weren't gone. There's wrinkle still a couple maker. more left out there. Thank let's you. Let's see it, Marsha. Uh, one of the, let's that's see two boos. Let's see it, Marsha. I do declare. <laughs> one of the best things about sitting next to Bill is no matter how bad my Good answer good. is, his was worse. <laughs> Cookie maker. Cookie maker. No, it wasn't. So it's oh, two for him, <laughs> and you stand by for years. Now this message for you. You're a splendid bunch. Thank you. Thank you and so much. And I shall look forward to meeting you oh, on the next occasion. Oh, yes. thank you. I hope you'll join us on the next occasion for Match Game 79. I'm Gene Weber, and I always will be. Goodbye. <laughs> Get ready to match the stars from the love boat, Ted Flange. Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Riley, Laura Patterson, Foster Brooks, and Marsha Wallace as we play the star-studded big money match game PM. And now, here's the star of match game PM, Gene Ryder. How
do you do? How do you do? Thank you for joining us here on Match Game VM. You are going to have a wonderful time because the loonies are here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for showing up because it would be very lonely without you. Would you all briskly applaud, as I say, Cheryl Manick and Leroy Frederick. <laughs> applause, applause, applause. Thank you. <laughs> we want to get acquainted with each of you. We'd like to find out where you're from and anything personal you want to tell us, Leroy? Uh, my name is Leroy Fredericks. Uh, I said that, Leroy. Oh, you did. <laughs> I said that. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, I have a lovely wife named Betty, uh, two children, five grandchildren. I've retired, and I'm here to uh, play on the match game with a wonderful MC. And oh, thank you. I'm also, I'm also here to negotiate MC. with the people from Los Angeles, right. hoping that I will be able to switch the New York Mets, bring them out here, and take the Brooklyn Dodgers. Back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a formidable task, if I may say so. Okay, Leroy, good luck. Cheryl, tell us about you. I live here in Los Angeles. I'm a legal secretary and a certified paralegal, and I love to disco roller skate. I play ping pong. Yeah, disco roller skating is tough. I've tried it. It's, it's extremely <laughs> difficult. Good for you. Good luck to both of you. Here on Match Game PM, you'll each have three chances to match as many of our stars as you possibly can. The one who's done that most often at the end of the third round will be the winner. And that person will go on to play that big money super match, which can pay off over $20,000. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Good luck to both of you. Leroy, you can have A or B. B for Brooklyn. B for Brooklyn. Right on, honey. All right. <laughs> this is it. B. Weird Willie is really weird. Obscene. You can do better than that. <laughs> Here it is. Instead of obscene phone calls, he makes obscene blank calls. <laughs> Here we go, Roy. Weird Willie is really weird. Instead of obscene phone calls, he makes... What's wrong? Charles, your light is not on. Oh, my gosh. You did not put your... Oh, my gosh. Now your light is on, oh, Charles. Oh, thank heavens. Okay. <laughs> weird Willie is really weird. Instead of obscene phone calls, he makes obscene blank calls. House calls. House calls. I think he came up with the definitive answer. Was that the definitive that answer? It is indeed. Hey, bro, well, uh, <laughs> we can't all be on the same wavelength, except this time, maybe. How? Aha! That way to go, Ted, maybe. All right. Da 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 house. House. I hope this is a match. I think it could be. Seriously. Do the best you can, Charles. House. 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 Oh. Yes. My job it is. Indeed. Weird Willie, really, really weird. Instead of obscene phone calls, he makes obscene... House calls. House calls. Do you make house... No. Oh, yes. Uh, never mind. I, I have to be the one. <laughs> you, 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 you do. Excuse me. I, I, I didn't mean to come over here in this condition. This condition. I thought this taping was, was tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> Want to know my answer? Yeah. Hi, Woody. Oh, I mean, I mean. House! Good Marsha! Oh, Jane. Oh, you darling. animal. Yes. <laughs> As you know, I have always marched to my own drummer. That's right. And I do not always follow the crowd. As in this case, when I said bird calls. <laughs> That's a wonderful answer. Don't boo her. She's cute and smart. Okay, Leroy did unusually well for a first round question, Cheryl. So you're going to really have to be on your medal here. Fat Frida is really fat. Much better. <laughs> when she wears a white dress, she looks like a blank. That's how fat she is. A fat freedom is really fat. When she wears a white dress, she looks like a blank. Okay, Cheryl. Fat freedom is really fat. When she wears a white dress, 
She looks like a blank. A tent. A tent. Okay, that's big. Many of them are white. White tent, she said. Hmm. What'd you say to that? Well, um, being a um, person that was in New York for a while during the winter, I said snow woman. A snow woman. Instead of a snowman, I wanted right. to give, you know. That's right. Start a person. snow person. E -R -A. Is that snow what I should have done? Yeah. Snow person. Either way, yes. she loses, right? Was Fred Grandy better than me? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm hard, I'm hard put. Uh, no, I said for the elusive white whale from Moby Dick. The white whale. Okay. I said a cloud. A cloud. Oh, oh, sweet, oh. sweet, lovely. That floats on high or hill and dale. Oh. Okay, Lorna. <laughs> fat Frida Reel of Fat wears a white dress. She looks like a brum dum dum brum. That's a good answer. That's better that. than mine. <laughs> I was going to say that. I couldn't spell it. You couldn't spell it. <laughs> okay, I was just in Washington, D.C. And I said she looks like a Capitol building. The Capitol building. <laughs> the White House is white. Is the Capitol building white? It's been so long since I've been there, I've forgotten. Yeah, I guess it's pretty white. What, what, what state? state? <laughs> Washington, D.C. Oh. <laughs> okay, right. you ready? Yes. I have to help the little lady out. Ted, very good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look at him. Okay, Cheryl, all is not lost. And yet? Uh, and yet we have... A flocked Christmas tree. A flocked Christmas tree. They have them out here, you know. I know, they do Happy. that out here a lot Terrible. in California. They spray them with that white stuff. Yeah. It's called flocking, and it looks like they're all flocking? covered with snow. That's yes. it. Five to one is the score. In favor of Leroy. <laughs> All right, that's round one. Round <laughs> two coming up in a moment or so now. Then. Here we go to round two. Push the button. One question for each. Leroy, you're ahead, so you'll go first. Uh, B for Brooklyn. Okay. It worked for him last. Now, one person plays. Marcia. Oh, my God. <laughs> the spotlight oh. is on Marcia Wallace. Yay. I'd rather not. Go, baby. Here yes, it is thank now. Thank you so much. I'll talk into your ear. Oh, don't do that. It makes me crazy. Uh, Agnes said, mm -hmm. my 88-year-old grandmother just married a 90-year-old man. At the wedding, we didn't throw rice. We threw blank. <laughs> don't be nervous, Marsha. Oh, thanks a lot. There's only one more, and he could have six, you know, but don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, don't, don't, sir. Thank you. All right, Leroy. <laughs> Agnes said, my 88-year-old grandmother just married a 90-year-old man. At the wedding, we didn't throw rice. We threw prunes. <laughs> oh, that's as cute as a button. Isn't yes. that funny? Wonderful answer. Yeah. Yes. Wasn't it? You expect her to say prunes. I know she'll say prunes. I know she, she will say prunes. She will oh, say prunes. Oh, you dreamer. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, I said dentures. Oh. Dentures. You tell me, Gene, was there a definitive answer there? What's well, a definitive answer, Ira? Prunes. prunes. <laughs> <laughs> you rascal. He's a pretty quick thinker, isn't he? Okay. Now, Cheryl, we've got one for you. You still have a chance to catch up here. Let's see what this Donna said. My husband has a full beard. Unfortunately, it's on his blank. <laughs> My husband has a full beard. Unfortunately, it's on his blank. I just had a beard there myself. <laughs> right. Got it. Did. Really? Good. Put that right in the slot. Wonderful. <laughs> so I have a full beard. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Cheryl Donna said, my husband has a full beard. Unfortunately, it's on his blank. Derriere. Derriere. <laughs> That's why they called him Harry. <laughs> oh, I was so ashamed of you. <laughs> oh, yes, it was. 
I, I figured I better say it before someone else does. After all, it's my show. What are you saying? What kind of men do you know, Cheryl? Please. How do you find out something like that? I said, um, chest. Chest, a good answer. I guess chest would probably be the definitive answer. I think that probably is more or less true. I moved to a whole other section of the bod. I said chest also. <laughs> <laughs> okay. El Chesto. El Chesto. Three of those. If you'd said chest, you'd be in clover, Cheryl. Okay. Husband has a full beard. Unfortunately, it's on his. Isn't the other guy a window right now? Friend. <laughs> <laughs> My husband has a full yeah. beard. Unfortunately, it's on his friend. <laughs> I wouldn't play with that if I were you. No, okay. All right, we'll just go on quickly to Marsha Wallace here. Thank you, Gene. Rayburn, is it? Yes, Rayburn, right. Knees. Knees, good. Right. Okay, Harry Knees. Okay, five to one to score. End of round two. Round three coming up. Leroy, you're still ahead. You go first again, A or B. Uh, I think about it. Uh, Brooklyn. B. Oh, B for Brooklyn. Okay. Again, Gene? Yeah. You and me? Yeah. Okay. You and me, baby. Ready? Okay. Jill said this weather is really terrible. We need this weather like Telly Savalas needs a blank. Thank you, Brad. All right. Leroy. Jill said this weather is really terrible. We need this weather like Telly Savalas needs a blank. Barber. Barber. You don't need no barber, do you? Unless he goes in and says, give me a shave. Something like that. What do you say to that? He says barber. Very feeble applause, in my opinion. Barber. Yeah. yeah. Now, he's got all six, Cheryl. The best you could do is tie by matching five you have nine. The upper tier, everyone except... Well, let me play it. No, well, you matched her, you see, so you lay out until uh, something else. So I'll, to speak. I'll tell you when to get back in the swing of things. <laughs> Jane said, last night, I had a terrible dream. I dreamed I went for a walk and swallowed a giant fur ball. It's all part of the dream. <laughs> when I woke up, I discovered I had eaten my blank. Do y'all understand that? You didn't understand. Oh, I did. Oh, you, oh, you did understand. <laughs> Dreamed I went for a walk, swallowed a giant fur ball. When I woke up, I discovered I'd eaten my blank. Oh, everybody's ready. Okay. Oh, uh, I thought that was going to be hard. Apparently, it's easy. Uh, Jane said I had a terrible dream. I dreamed I went for a walk, swallowed a giant fur ball. When I woke up, I discovered I'd eaten my blank. My cat. Yeah! Cat! Very easy. Gotta match everybody. Oh, yeah, cat. Cat! Yeah! That's Eddie White question. That's a very good one. Yes, if you like animals. Well, I mean, you know, a cat would be lying around, sleeping at the foot of her bed sure. and all that there. Sure. Yeah. But you didn't say that. <laughs> Last time I said uh, pillow, but that goes with my pillow. Well, that means Leroy wins the game. What the rest of you have? You come on down here. That's the way it goes. Cheryl, it was a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. We're going to send some gifts your way. Many thanks for being Thank here on Match much. Game PM. Cheryl Manick, ladies and gentlemen, there she goes. Going to send her off. Send a message or two just for you. Here we go with Leroy. You're going to have a go at the big money now. Uh, you can win over $20,000 here in this Big Money Super Match. To do that, we're going to have two audience matches for you. Good luck to you. We polled a studio audience not too long ago, Leroy, and we said write down your best answer to this. Contact blank. $500 if you match their most popular answer. For matching the second most frequently given answer, $250. And then for matching the third, $100. And if you can't think of an answer, let's see what sort of help we'll get from our stars. Um, I think I'll take the... Ted. Right on, my man. Yeah. Good choice. <laughs> Contact lenses. Yeah! Uh, Brett. 
What about... I'm so domestic, you know. <laughs> what about... That's enough out oh. of you. What about contact paper? Contact paper, okay. And uh, Charles. What about if he doesn't answer? Contact <laughs> Zero, a new TV show. <laughs> contact Cement. No. Contact we have one. Wait a minute, Spinach. No. Contact Sport. No. Oh! Oh! <laughs> What the wonderful new show Contact Zero is about. Contact track short, track shorts. Contact short. Sports. 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 Contact sports. <laughs> since Broadway, I'm sorry, I'm not stealing your act, but since Broadway, I've had like a breakdown. Yeah. Since I've returned from Broadway. You're still in it, aren't you? Man? The nervous breakdown. Man. Yeah, but oh, the play boy. closed in one night. Okay. So I'm yeah. not still in the play. <laughs> Okay, now those are the three answers you've had from our stars. Contact lenses, contact paper, and contact sports. Do you want to choose one of those, or would you like to think up one of your own? Uh, contact lens. Lens, all right. One that Trent gave you. Let's find out if it's up there, and if so, where will we begin at the bottom? Reveal a $100 number. Contact paper is one that they gave you. Let's see if we got contact lens under the $250 response. Contact sports is the one the inhibited one gave you up there. May we see the last one, please, for contact lens. You got it. And a boy. Uh, Leroy, you won $500. Multiplied by 10 is 5,000. That means the least you'll play for is that amount, 5,000. However, we've got one more shot at it here with another audience match. Here we go. From here, blank. Okay? Mm -hmm. Whom do you call on? I think I'll call on Lana. From here to eternity. Marcia? Hello. Hi. Hello. <laughs> From here to there. Here to there. And of course, Foster. Foster? Oh. See, that I... was it for me, hon. What? <laughs> I was going to use both of those. Oh, sure. But I, I'm sorry. I don't have an answer. If you, may I go home? <laughs> <laughs> you no, are home. Because if you go home now, Hi, Mom. you don't get paid if you go home now, Foster. Oh. That's the way it works here, here. you see. From you zero. must say oh, something. From here, from here to hell and gone. From here to hell and gone. From here to... Can you say that word? Sure. From here to... Mm -mm back. All right. <laughs> So from here to mm -mm back, from here to there, and from here to eternity are the three you got from them. Again, you can choose one of theirs or give us one of yours. Uh, from here to eternity. All right. Let's find out what's up there. We'll begin at the bottom and reveal a $100 number. From here to heaven. Oh, that's a switch. Yes, it is. <laughs> okay, right let's time. go up and see what we got in the $250 number. From here to there. That was one that Marcia gave you. Okay. Last chance from here to eternity. Here we go. Yeah. Very good, Lorna. Now, another $500 means another $5,000 added to the previous $5,000. Gives you a pot of $10,000 to shoot for. That's the least you'll play for. Now, we're going to ask you to spin that wheel. And if it stops on one of the stars, you will double your money. Good luck to you. We'll all root for a double. We're Leroy. Here we go. <laughs> Stop on a star and you fill your money. Is it 10000 or 20000 with Marsha Wallace. Good luck, Leroy. Okay, good luck to you. Stand right there in the blue dot and face me. Good luck. Here we go. All right. This is it. Twilight blank. No help, please, from the audience. You may... Oh, you finished. She finished just like that. Now, if you give us the answer that's on her card, we give you $20,000. What do you say? Twilight Zone. Yeah! All the 
people out there in the audience who have just returned from that area are rooting for you. Let's find out if she's got Twilight Zone on the card. If she does, you get $20,000. Marsha. Oh, Marsha. Leroy's very happy. He's got $21,000. I hope you'll join us next week for Match Game PM. More money to be given away. More stars. Thank you. Goodbye. Some contestants will receive the amount of touch by the two radar range over the next generation of microwave ovens with a fabulous rollaway cooking system. If it doesn't say a mana, it's not a radar range. And probably... Scrubber sponges that make tougher than steel pads. If scour without scratching, use one in the kitchen, one in the back. And a selection of quality paper made products, including freezer wrap. Which economically protects your food, baking cups, coffee filters, and paper made plastic cups for all occasions. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Max Game PM, a Mark Goodson, Bill Tottman production. Get ready to match the stars from Charlie's Angels, David Doyle, Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Levy, from Chips, Randy Oates, Bill Daly, and Marcia Wallace, as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game. And now, here's the star of Match Game, Gene Rayburn. There. Are you ready, crowd? You yeah. lost your vest. Yeah. What? Your vest. I well, I decided that once in a while. Oh, it's a white vest. That's what it is. No. <laughs> once in a while, you have to go without a three piece suit just to mix it up a little bit. This is like a, a this copy morning. of an English Norfolk jacket, modified slightly with a modified belt in the back, as you can see. Pleated pockets, but it doesn't you make me a bad person. Very what? smart. Very smart. You are one now, yesterday you wore your little jewelry scrimshaw. Yes. And nobody mentioned it. No. That just goes to show you that a Rubin Brothers suit does not need cheap gold accessories. <laughs> You're fired. <laughs> you don't have to fire me. Just died with that. <laughs> Let's say hello to Sidney Muldrew and Hi, Mary Sydney. Pulaski. Hello there. Hello. <laughs> to refresh your memories. Mary uh, flies uh, for an airline. And uh, did you tell us about your hobbies? Do you want to know about him? No, I want to hear about him. <laughs> and Sydney is formerly from Chicago. Right. And has lived here a long time and is very happy about that. And uh, he won the first game, and now we're ready to start game number two. Ready? Here we go. Mary, again, you have a choice of A or B. A, please. A it is for Mary Pulaski. Irving is the world's worst inventor. He oh. just invented alphabet soup written in blank. <laughs> While we're waiting, please do. I need 
all I can Any of you have to get on to see Bill Daly in a play he wrote and is starring in. I don't know, he's always doing it around the country somewhere. Go see it because he's wonderful and funny and you'll have a good time. It's called it's Lover's Leap. Lover's Leap, that's right. <laughs> it's all right, here we go with Mary Pulaski. I guess we're all set over there. Irving is the world's worst inventor. He just invented alphabet soup written in... All I can think of is hieroglyphics. Hieroglyphics. That's back, an interesting answer, yes. Back in Turkey? Yeah. <laughs> hieroglyphics. That's a good, I like that. Yeah. Hieroglyphics is interesting. What do you say? It is very interesting. I thought of it. It's much too long. I can't spell it, so I went to <laughs> Arabic. Arabic. <laughs> That's good. Arabic is a good response. If you live in Beverly Hills, it's a very good invention. Are you kidding? <laughs> Sanskrit. Sanskrit is another one. Yes. Yes. All you kinds. made a grammatical error. How, I what did I say? I think we could fight, but yes. I know how picky you are about the English language and being one of the most famous hosts in television history and radio. <laughs> you said Sydney is formerly from Chicago. Sydney is from Chicago is all we really need. That's true. <laughs> It was Just to show you that I'm listening at every moment. <laughs> it was an unnecessary yes, redundancy. Yes, and I got it, and maybe two or three other brilliant yeah. people like yeah. myself through the country, Greek. Greek, of course, yes. Some of us were too kind to say anything. You didn't hear it at all. You're too busy about your eyelashes and hair. You don't know what's going on. What we need more of on this program is comity, C-O-M-I-T-Y, a noun with a Latin root. It means civility and courtesy. <laughs> comity is what I mean. <laughs> Comity. Look up that word in your dictionary, Chuck. We still have more game to go. Uh, yes. Gene, what? Gotcha. <laughs> oh, I haven't... Oh, yeah. <laughs> There, man. I, I didn't mean to overlook you, Randy. How could I have? See, without his vest, he doesn't know where the hell he is. <laughs> Irving is the world's worst inventor. He just invented alphabet soup written in... Braille. Braille is a good one. Oh, that's all right. That's the way you sit. Close enough. Wait spelling. a minute. You're funny, oh, and I spell it wrong. Braille. You spell it right. <laughs> Spelling doesn't count on this program. Braille. Just give us a clue or an inkling and we'll figure it out. Don't worry about that. Oh, it didn't matter. What do you say, my dear? I hurt Sweet. my knee when I fell off. I hope oh. they saw it on camera. It'd be no, a shame to no, have fallen. Here's the thing. The only one who could get the shot See? Uh, sure. was Dick. And, uh, my first he's, comedy he's, fall. I hurt my knee and they didn't get it on That's right. Film. She did a wonderful comedy fall. Show them what Sean you did back down. here. <laughs> Show them what you did. No, she, no, no. You know, no, that was no. up here. I, I no, said, go back what we that. need is comedy, oh, well. C-O-M-I-T-Y. E. And she went... <laughs> get, get the shot. Here we go. Get the shot. Swing that camera. Pull around on there. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's pull her fall out on here. Maybe get her yeah, yeah, fall out. Wait, let's come on here. Let's come on here. Let her fall out front. Oh, God. I could have been a teacher. Throw her down. Wait a minute. I said, no, I said, you see, I said, I, I was, I said, to, I looked right in the camera, I said, what this program needs is comity, C-O-M-I-T-Y. Ah, hey! <laughs> okay, it's all over. That's enough. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah, I haven't... I you never saw your answer there. your answer? Irving is the world's worst inventor. He just invented alphabet soup written in. When did you lose control of your life? <laughs> Show us your answer, please. Oh, my God, it was four years ago I wrote this. Sanskrit. Wrong. <laughs> okay. Here we go. You're ready at the top of the phone. All right. Oh. Oh. Horrible Hank is so horrible. How horrible is he? He's the only man in the world... With an oil slick in his blank. <laughs> horrible Hank is so horrible, he's the only man in the world with an oil slick in his blank. Here we go. Horrible Hank is so horrible, he's the only man in the world with an oil slick in his... Um, head? Scalp? Head or scalp? Uh, I guess head. That's the first thing you said. That's the answer we have to go by. What do you say, David? All right, now, I thought about that, and then I thought transferring that to the guy's hair is in such bad shape. Yeah. Every time he washes his hair, which is daily, he has an oil slick in the sink. Very interesting. Oh. Yes. A bad answer and a poor explanation. <laughs>
Okay. God love it. Look, he's so, look, he he's cute, so, though. Well, he just gets so depressed. I love it. You know, his life is just so it's empty. Ivy League tie. He's oh, so yeah. classy. Okay, go. He comes from a very nice family from <laughs> Omaha. <laughs> Lincoln, I keep Lincoln. telling you. <laughs> Lincoln, same thing, right? It's all flat. Okay, that's Bad her answer. Bathtub. <laughs> Bathtub, yeah. That takes care of Lincoln. All right. Bathtub, I said bathtub too. Two bathtubs. I wonder where he One got sink. that answer. Cindy Muldrew said, "However, Hank's so horrible, he's the only man in the world with an oil slick at his head." Three bathtubs. Three bathtubs. What do you got there, Bill? Well, if you were Carl Malden, to be in his nose, no, this is too funny. Uh, I'm gonna go with that Carl Malden to get funny. And his hair. Is that it's close? Not, hair. It's yeah. not going to get funny. Okay, one for him. It's not going to get funny, Bill. <laughs> Show us yours, if oh, you please. Oh, I'm exhausted from my, my stunt work. Yes. You get <laughs> paid extra for that. Can't be easy for those guys, you know? No, it isn't. Bert. <laughs> oh, hair I put. Oh, hair. That's no, just for hair. <laughs> 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 well, you're still in round one, two to nothing in favor of Sydney. Round two coming up after this for you, please. Here we go. Second round. Sydney, you're ahead. You may go first, A or B. I'll take A. All right. Four people play. The top tier and uh, Randy. Frank, the fisherman said, this shark must have eaten a doctor. Look, there's a blank hanging out of his mouth. <laughs> Charles, are you writing? Oh, he's drawing. You know what he does. He does those little funny little pictures that nobody appreciates. All right. Here we go. Frank, the fisherman said, this shark must have eaten a doctor. Look, there's a blank hanging out of his mouth. A stethoscope. Stethoscope. He needs a stethoscope. You can't spell that either, huh? Oh, there it is. That's a stethoscope. There. Here, take this. You'll need it when you look at Charles' drawing. Now, listen. That's full of I put a block against medical things because uh, that, uh, I would... Uh, He's a Christian He's so, scientist. He's so glib, isn't he? No, my mama said years ago we had no money to get sick, so we never got sick. Oh. So I couldn't think of a stethoscope. So I drew one, and I begged the judges to accept this because there is your basic stethoscope. There, you hear people. Right. The little thing is the same as those here. Excellent. Really loves you, of course, my parents died at the age of 24 because they never went to a doctor. But other than that, we're fine. Jo now, David Doyle just said, "If you really loved your mother, you would have died." <laughs> On this show. Oh, he died on you and died. Look, there's a this shark must have eaten a doctor. There's a blank hanging out of his mouth. Oh. Sydney, stethoscope. All right, good for him. Now Mary has a little catching up to do. The best you can do is tie. Go matching all six. Listen carefully, please. Do not talk when the star is speaking. Thank you very much. Fat Frida is really fat. Gotcha. When she wears a green dress, she looks like the blank. <laughs> That's how fat she is. All right, David, you ready? Go. Fat Frida's really fat. When she wears a green dress, she looks like the blank. The Incredible Hulk. The Incredible Hulk. Is the Hulk green? Yes. I, I've never seen the Incredible Hulk. Is the Incredible Hulk green? Yes, he is. Okay. She says the Incredible Hulk. Oh, She's got to match all six to save yeah. the game. What have you got? Oh, gosh. I had Map of Ireland, and that wasn't right. <laughs> now I've got the Jolly Green Giant. Jolly Green Giant. And Sydney wins again. What have you got? Jolly Green Giant. Charles, what do you have? The Giant. I first had the golf course. Two people first, and then I went to the Jolly Green Giant. Did you have it, too? Everybody had the Jolly Green Giant. Stand there in the blue dot of the wood, please, sir. I wrote Mary. How much money has Mary got? No money. But we have prizes for you. Okay. All kinds of nifty things are going to be coming your way soon. Okay. So just keep watching for the United Party. Thank you. Guy. Bye. <laughs> now, he's going to have a second go at the big money here. Sydney, we polled the studio audience and said write down your best answer to this. Blank stories. $500 for matching oh, the most oh, popular answer, on, 250 Sydney. for matching the second, and okay, 100 Sydney. for matching come the third. I got you. Okay, Brent. <laughs> Fairy stories. All right. Those are stories about fairies. <laughs> Coast stories. Okay, oh, that's, that's two. Good. 
them that's Marsha, who's uh, getting a hysterical Charles, order there. What Charles. No, I got. No, that's not Marsha. I didn't come here to be rejected. <laughs> I can't even fall down. I can't even get another that in real life. Charles, what's your answer? Oh, I got two that are so good. Can I give them both of them no. just because he's sweet? No, 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 no. One is all you can say. Which one you think? I think this or this. <laughs> This one better? Yeah, this one for better. parents and things. Oh, there's so many. All right, yes, bedtime sir. story. Yeah. Yeah, bedtime <laughs> stories, ghost <laughs> stories, and fairy one, stories. Do you want one of those or one of your own? Boy, it's a I'm hard one. I'm going to go with... Bedtime stories. All right, bedtime stories. Charles answered. Let's short, find out who's up there. And if so, where? We'll begin at the bottom and reveal a $100 response. Ghost, Ghost stories, stories is one they gave you. Let's see if we get bedtime stories under the $250 response. <laughs> Short <laughs> stories is a very good answer. Last chance. Short stories. Last chance for bedtime stories. Here we go. Charles' answer. Yeah! The outfit is from the Mediterranean shop. <laughs> the outfit is from it's hunger. What, <laughs> what the well-dressed man is not wearing. Yes. Ever. <laughs> this was made by the third Rubin brothers who rebelled. <laughs> she walked right out of the press room. <laughs> now, Sydney, you got $500. means Alicia will play for us 10 times out of under $5,000. But if you spin the star wheel and get a lucky spin as you did that time, you could play for $10,000. Don't blow it this time, because you're going to go to the back of the bus. He won $20,000. <laughs> he put him on $20,000. All right. $5,000 with David Doyle, a goodly amount and a good player. Face me if you would, please. Thank you, sir. Good luck to you. This is it. Blank Brass. B-R-A-S-S. -S. Blank Brass. Now, here it is, Sydney. The moment of truth. Give us the answer that matches go. David Doyle's answer. You get $5,000. What do you say to that? I would say polished brass. Polished brass is what he says to match you for $5,000, David. May we see it, please? Yes. Top brass. Top oh. brass. Uh, top brass. Isn't that the same? No, top brass and polished brass are two different answers. Well, top, top brass, top brass is a product. It's a, uh, it's, a, it's a polish for brass, isn't it? <laughs> He's really trying, isn't he? He's really trying. The guy's trying to steal the money guy. from us is what he's trying to do. No. Well, top brass may be a brass cleaner, but he's, uh, you, you said polished brass. Right, that's what it is. It's yes. Polish. It's a brass polish. <laughs> Ira, would you follow that fellow there? Now. He will explain it to him. Okay. All complaints go to the Iris Dutch department. Thank you very much. Sydney Mulder, you get $1,000. Okay. Now, let's welcome Irene Walker and Joe Cox. Here we go, after this message. Okay, let's welcome Irene Walker and Joe Cox here and get acquainted with you. Point out that each of you will play two games. Let's get friendly, Irene, and tell each other about ourselves. Okay. I used to operate my own business. And since I've retired, my number one project is feeding stray cats and dogs and finding homes for them. Oh, that's nice. Okay. All right. I'm a game show host. I'm married to a lovely woman named <laughs> Helen. I have a lovely unhappy. daughter named Lynn. <laughs> there you go. And I'm 29 years old. <laughs> You're going to be struck dead for that. <laughs> what do you say, Joe? Hi. Set him up, Joe. <laughs> no. I'm married. I have two boys, age nine and three, Brian and Billy. I work for an oral surgeon. I work as a receptionist there, and my hobbies are needlework. Needlework? My hands. I do a little of that, too. Uh-huh. Yeah. Good. It's a lot of fun and very yes. relaxing. Good luck to both of you ladies. Thank you. Irene, you can have A or B. I'll take A. A, <clears throat> says Irene. Good luck. The Hollywood producer said, there's something wrong with the casting of this movie. It's the life story of Marie Osmond, and in the starring role, they've got blank. <laughs> It's the life story, life story of Marie, Marie Osmond. Osmond and the leading role is Mark Black. That's good, Randy. I tell you, I feel like I'm That's surrounded. Good. Excellent. Yeah. Very good. Excellent idea. 
That's good, Bill. I didn't see it. <laughs> you got it in there. <laughs> Just writing. Him, he's writing. Hey, he's writing. That's good. Irene, the Hollywood producer said there's something wrong with the casting in this movie. It's a life story of Marie Osmond, and in the starring role, they've got... Donnie. Donnie! <laughs> that would be wrong. It's a rather whimsical answer, Irene. <laughs> She didn't come here to win. She came here to play whimsy. Uh, well, whims away. Oh! Wow. We're David Zidani. <laughs> it is a whimsical answer, but then she's a it's whimsical cute. person, but she's also intelligent, bright, perceptive, smart, attractive, oh. dark. <laughs> Three people have said it so far all together. Uh, I'm Chicky Riley. I go to UCLA. I'll be out there. <laughs> you know, do postgraduate work. And uh, I'm an airline stewardess. <laughs> I'll bet. Check the ring on Irene. Yes. You know what I mean? Right. Pretty good ring. Donnie. Okay. Three for Irene. <laughs> Randy Oaks. Right. It's a life story of Marie Osmond and the starring role they've got. Ah, uh, Charo. Charo is a good answer. Someone unlike Marie Osmond. That was Donnie. a whole... Donnie is quite unlike her, but we didn't want to go that far. However, okay, Bill. Marie Dressler, who's dead. <laughs> That's the worst answer you've ever given on this show in a, now, in a history of people in the answers. audience, you don't know who Marie Dressler is, do you? Where is that? Where is that? <laughs> yes, I didn't know it was. I just made it up. She was a character actress. She played with Wallace Beery and all of those things and Tugboat Annie and all Thanks that. Thanks for saving thing. me. Yes, yeah, right. So that's quite unlike Marie Osmond. Okay, Marsha. Such an informative program, too, Gene. You yes, know? you learn something every you day. You learn something here. every day. Don't you? I could have gone bowling and been back by the time it was my turn. <laughs> you know, I looked at that, Randy. I said, that woman is yeah. very smart, perceptive. Charo. Charo, Randy's answer. Very good. All right, three for you, Irene. Yours will be long in a moment. Right now, we have this for America. I am Gene Rayburn, reminding you to watch uh, David, what's his name, on Charlie's Angels, and Randy on Chips. Watch uh, me on Randy. The others are unemployed. <laughs> Join us next time for Matt's Game. <laughs> Goodbye. Right. Today's concert. Soften your skin and let the younger you shine through. Beautiful skin begins with Buff Puff. And a hot lather machine and Listerine. Listerine is strong to give you clean breath that lasts hours. Listerine antiseptic kills the germs that can cause bad breath. And a donut maker and Petum Vaporette Pet Collars protects your dog or cat against ticks and fleas. All three Petum Vaporette Collars wear the good housekeeping seal. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game. A Mark Goodson, Bill Topman production. This program was edited for broadcast. Get ready to match the stars from Charlie's Angels, David Doyle, Brett Summers, Charles Nelsonati, from Ladies Man, Betty Kennedy, from Morgan Mindy, Robert Dunner, and Marcia Wallace as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game. And now, here's the star of Match Game, Gene Rayburn. How do you do? For my first number, anything I can do for anybody? Oh, yes, hon, you can. Yes, what? I need some, uh, 
I oh. need to be sprayed. Oh, Watch why? Well, why is that? This is my Marion Ross imitation. Yeah, now, wait a minute. Yes. Cling free. Cling free. Oh, you, your dress is loaded with static electricity, you got and it, it looks funny, <laughs> and you want me to spray it. Can I spray anywhere? Anywhere you, you like. spray <laughs> away from my... <laughs> The woman exciting. is desperate. She can spray <laughs> anywhere. Well, I okay. have to spray by skin shows. Oh. Is oh. that to be do it? It certainly is. <laughs> I do. Some people have it and some people don't. Yes, you know of course. I mean? Yes. Shall I do? Oh, yes. Oh. Oh, wait a minute. I want to see if this works. It's clinging in the rear. <laughs> How picturesque. <laughs> with me everywhere i'll meet a lot of new swell folks that's right <laughs> it's worth a thought you know what i mean charles it was a plus eight i don't care what you say <laughs> how do you do ladies let's all welcome donna and marianne over here Yay. now let's see Pretty neither one of these ladies is a native uh, californian right marianne where are you from again i'm new from York. philadelphia, philadelphia. i've been here 11 years right and but you like it out here. I love it. You don't I miss the cold it. weather? Not at all. All right. Uh, she's from New York, right? Yes. Oh, Who's you. that screening out there? I don't have anybody out there. You don't so have I anybody don't out there. Oh. So now, you do you now. Work, what, what do you do for a living? I forgot. I work for um, an airline. An airline. I'm not supposed to say who it is. You're not supposed to say who it is? No. Is that right? Right. Oh, all right. You want A or B? Uh, I have no choice, so I'll take A. Oh. <laughs> Here it is. Notice how a few thousand dollars changed her personality. That's right. <laughs> Boy, what a snot note. She won five thousand two hundred and fifty dollars yesterday. All of a sudden, oh, I have no choice. <laughs> Diana said, "I found a piece of paper in my husband's pocket that had the name Bubbles on it." Now he's trying to convince me that Bubbles is the name of his blank. <laughs> Here we go. Now, already, Diana said I found a piece of paper in my husband's pocket that had the name Bubbles on it. And now he's trying to convince me that Bubbles is the name of his blank. His business partner. Business partner. She gives these exotic answers, but she keeps winning. <laughs> I thought he'd probably tell her it was his dear mother. Mother. Right? Yeah. Oh, that's good. Remember my mother, Bubbles? <laughs> <laughs> Bubbles LaRue. I said it was the name of his cologne. His cologne. <laughs> Bubbles, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I love her. I said insurance man. Insurance man. <laughs> All the creative writers up there. You need another spray? Is it working? Is it working? It's working. Oh, boy. What is it ever working? <laughs> what do you got for us, Betty? Okay, Bubbles was the name of his secretary. His secretary. That's good. Hey, you know, yeah. you could be up here, too, just doing these dumb answers like I'm doing, you know. That's right. That's right. <laughs> no Tell response. Come on, let's yeah, go spray, let's spray them the whole audience. Everybody. I think they're loaded with static electricity. I think so, too. What do you got there, Robert? Well, actually, the man ran a kennel, and it was his beloved dog, Bubble. Aha! Uh -huh. My dog, what? Bubble. Did his wife believe him, Robert? My friend will answer. <laughs> <laughs> they won't mess with her, and you should. All right. Marcia? Oh. My bad answers for the rest of the week I can blame on having too much hydrocarbons up my nose. <laughs> broker. My broker was EF Bubbles. <laughs> Good. Bubbles, right? People listen. All right. Now the score is tied zero to zero. <laughs> Rolling. <laughs> So, right since along. Marianne went first last time, Donna, we ask you to go first this time. I'd like B, please. B it is. Last <laughs> round. Little Rodney Rotten is really rotten. <sighs> he wanted to be a magician, so he sawed his blank in half. <laughs> Little Rodney Rotten. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Little Rodney Rotten is really rotten. He wanted to be a magician, so he sawed his blank in half. His mother. His mother. Sawed his mother in half. Oh, well, I know. It's, a, it's even more cruel than one could imagine. I was thinking more along uh, maybe his mother leaving a will, so he sawed his sister in half. His sister. All right. Okay. I think it's always good to go after a sibling. Uh, I said, no, no, he sawed his mother's dog, who was a Pekingese called Ming Toy. Uh -huh. <laughs> Only kidding, Betty White, wherever yes. you are. Betty, you know me, darling. Sure. <laughs> That was like a little children's story, Auntie Brett. Yes, I know. <laughs> little sister. Little sister. Mother is what we want. All right, we come to Don't Betty we Kennedy. All. He wanted to be a magician, so he saw his mother in half. His mother. Oh, mother. You got it. Oh, yeah. See? All right, friend. Let's hear it for those mother haters. Thank you. Never heard so many mother haters in one room in my life. <laughs> well, it's not the mother haters, you see. They... They were the applauding lovers. her, and, and she was stimulated by their applause, so she's going like this. And then they started applauding more, and... Oh, uh, mother lovers. Hello, Robert, yes. Hi. Uh, when you got a good answer, roll with it. His beloved dog, <laughs> Bubble. Right. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yeah. Very good, he's excellent. The mother is what we're after. I, as I said before, aren't we all? But I said sibling as in sis or bro. Sis or bro. Mm -hmm. Now you. it's one <laughs> to zero in your favor. You have one more shot at it right after this for you. <gasps> now as we press on, here's the situation. She has one, she has none. She can tie it with one or win it with two. Here's the way it is. Big ears, Ed's ears are so big for... <laughs> A big ear, a big Ed's ear. What did they, what did they what? say? <laughs> big ears, Ed's ears are so big for earmuffs. Oh. Shut up already. <laughs> for earmuffs, he uses two blanks and a tire chain. That's how big his ears are. For earmuffs, he uses two blanks and a tire chain. Okay. All right. My broker, Bubbles, will contact <laughs> When Bubbles talks, everyone, everyone listens. listens. Yeah. At least I do. Hello, Marion. Big ears, Ed's ears are so big for earmuffs, he uses two blanks and a tire chain. Two. Do you want to read it over to make sure you understand what we're trying to do here? I understand. Oh. <laughs> la, 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 la. Two la, tires. La, 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 la. Two tires. Yeah, what? Two tires. Two tires. Two tires. Yeah. <laughs> she said two tires. Two tires, she said. Why, of course she did the poor darling two <laughs> steel radials. Steel radials, that's one. Yeah. Now, this is sort of like a tire. Is he going to sneeze all through the program? No, that's it. Sure? He's out of his system. His lungs are cleared. That? Two hubcaps. No, hubcaps are not tires, but that's a very good response. Thank you. And they're not that big either. Huh? I mean, what do you do with the big holes in the tires <laughs> if it's going to let the cold in your ears? I know. That seems illogical you know to me. You know what I mean? But, but you're matched. bowing, and he's yeah. bowing, and everyone's bowing. Yeah. yeah. The hubcaps on. Two toilet seat covers. <laughs> Betty Kennedy, at this moment, we have a tie score, one to one. Another uh, tire or steel-belted radial or whatever will win the game for her. Okay, then. Spare tires covered with fur. That wins the game for Mary. What do you have, Robert? I love your tires. Come on. Come on. All right. Okay, right there, we would please. Madonna here is leaving with a pretty good bundle of $5,250. Congratulations, Donna. Thank you. I'm okay. I'm all right. All right. You are all right. You've got a uh, chance to win a lot of money here, and good luck to you. We polled a studio audience not very long ago and said, write down your best answer to this. 
playing the blank. Now, oh. if you give us the answer that audience did write down most frequently, we'll give you $500, and that'll be yours. Now, if you give us the second most popular answer, $250, and for the third, you get $100. Three of our six stars will assist, and as I pointed out to your opponent last uh, time she was up here, just call them the ones who are trying to get your attention. <laughs> Marcia? Marcia, most definitely. I don't want to break oh, thank heavens. Oh, no, I don't think it's so hot. Well, playing the piano. Playing the piano. David. Playing the field. Yeah. And Charles. Well, he had his hand up. Here, hon. Not bad, sweetheart. Well, thank you, Chucky. <laughs> Playing the odds. Playing the odds. <laughs> Playing the piano. Playing the odds. Playing the field are the three they've given you. You have the option of choosing one of those or giving us one of your own. What is your pleasure? I'm going with David. Playing the field. Yeah. Playing the field. <laughs> the audience applauded louder for that, didn't they? <laughs> Yes, that's apparently your favorite, too, right? All right, let's find out if it's up there. Playing the field, is it under the $100 response? No, playing the odds is there. All right, you've got that answer from Charles. May we see the $250 response? Playing the field, there it is, $250 for you. Well, what do you think is up on top now that we have a chance? To... Playing the game. The playing game. the game. That's a good one. Let's see it, please. Game it Yay. is. Whoever said that Yay. out there, never crossed mm -hmm. my mind. $250 means the least you can play for is $2,500. However, you could be playing for a lot more, and we'll find out about that after this. Now we want you to spin the star wheel. We got a lucky spin on it. It lands on a star. You'll double your money, and you will play for $5,000. Now, your opponent did that, and she did get lucky, and she got it all. So good luck to you, and we'll all root for a double, right? Give it a spin. Have a go at it right now. Here we go. most unusual the last two spins each have landed on a star each have landed on charles well maybe that's because for four and a half years it didn't get anywhere near my name <laughs> <laughs> if you want to look over the old tapes do so <laughs> no here we are good, good luck, luck to you. sweetheart all right you just face me directly and this is it blank the road take a look at it blank the road Do we understand each other? All right. Now, if you give us the answer that Charles has on that card, Marion, you will get $5,000. What do you say to that? Block the road. Block the road is what you say. Is that the only thing that came to your mind? Kind of drew a blank. Uh, that's yeah. too bad. Charles, she said block I'm the road. I'm sorry, Marion. Hit the road. Hit I the said. road. That's a popular phrase. <laughs> well, Marion, you have $250. I hope that made the trip worthwhile. We were delighted to meet you. Marion Duncan. Now let's welcome Casey Edwards and Milt Dennison. Welcome to both of you. Remember, it's two games that you'll be playing, each of you. Casey, let's find out about you. Yes, I'm a student at the Fashion Institute in L.A., and I'm embarking on a career in mall promotion. In what promotion? Mall promotion. Mall promotion? Mm -hmm. Oh, shopping malls. Shopping malls. I see. Where is the Fashion Institute? Is that downtown? Downtown. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Milt, what about you? Where are you from and all that? Gene, I'm originally from Colorado. I presently live in Dixon, California. I have one terrific wife and 540 great kids. How long have you been working at this? 
No, Dean, I'm an elementary school principal. Oh, you are? Yes. Uh -huh. In Dixon. Uh -huh. <laughs> and we're moving to Portland in about a month. Yes. Kids didn't like you, huh? No. <laughs> Ran me out of town. Yeah. Ran you, no. Why are you going to Portland? New job. Uh huh. Well, good luck in your career there. Thank and you. Bon voyage. And uh, I hope you're not going to get mixed up with any of that ash that's up there. Right? <laughs> because that's been a terrible tragedy. Casey, you have a choice of A or B. I'd love B, please. B it is. New game. Here we go. Tiny Tom Thumb said, My dog is so small I had to paper train him on a blank. <laughs> My dog is so small, I can't paper yeah. train him on a blank. That's cute. Thank you. Here we go, Casey. <laughs> Tiny Tom Thumb said, My dog is so small, I had to paper train him on a blank. On a matchbook cover. Matchbook cover. <laughs> yeah, they're made out of paper in a way. <laughs> She said a matchbook cover. Well, well, he has something to tell you. Well, he has something to tell you. There's one answer. He said, there's, he said, he said oh, come on. I put an answer. He said, oh, come on, hon. There's only one answer. Said, yes. Oh, OK. <laughs> a stamp. <laughs> yeah. A stamp is a very small piece of paper, isn't it? So right. is a matchbook cover. Yes. <laughs> For your education. Oh, that dog that size is much larger than what I'm thinking of. <laughs> Perk down, will you? <laughs> Stamp. That's two of those. That's where you got it. Charles, did you steal his answer also? I don't want to eat with the other patient. <laughs> <laughs> I said a postage stamp with a picture of President Chester Ray Arthur because I believe this country is just getting over what he got to us. Right. <laughs> what he didn't do to us. All right, so small I had to paper train him on a... On a cocktail napkin. That's cute. Cute. Is that a cute answer? It's cute. All cute. right, cute. Don't <laughs> <laughs> oh, you think it's cute, Robert? I think it's very cute. I think everyone here is cute. <laughs> <laughs> we think you're pretty cute, too, Robert. Why, thank you. Oh, Our why prizes... did you two go pick out furniture? Yikes. We have. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I didn't like the furniture. Yes. Oh, do you get anything for neatness? Yes, neatness counts. Postage Look stamp. Oh, isn't that neat? Doesn't he prints yes. real Very nice good. Good. A lot of yes. people think I should go back into the printing business. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait a minute. Brett wants to see it. Isn't that neat? Right. Oh, you right. haven't got your glasses That's on. Yeah. He'll show it to you later. Is that there. a card? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it says A E T Q P. What do you say, Marsha? Well, she's cute and he's neat. Yes. And I'm at best adequate. No, <laughs> more than adequate. Thank you. A chick <laughs> You're funny, too. See him standing on the moon. Yeah. Well, as you can see, Casey, you're surrounded by weirdos. <laughs> All right. You wait uh, for your first round question, which will come along right after this comes to you. She has a, a movie and a series coming out. Now, the series is called oh. Ladies' Man. And what's, <laughs> and what's the movie called? Cheech and Chong's next movie. Oh, All right. <laughs> And you know, he's one of the lovely Charlie's Angels. Oh, hey! hey. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he's on Mark and Minnie, and I'll be at the Christian Science Reading Room. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a minute. Oh, um, You're a very good actress. How yeah, come nobody's doing anything for you? I don't know, Chin. Have you got an agent? <laughs> Well, sure, but... <laughs> oh, yeah, that's... You know uh, what I've said about agents? Changing agents is like changing deck chairs on the Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> Gene, you're going to join us next Don't time for the match game. Brett's Goodbye. Some contestants will receive Baker's Secret from Echo, the silicone-coated non-stick bakeware is the easy way to better baking makes cleanup easy as pie. And an exciting assortment of Crayola art and activity kits with everything children need for hours of imaginative play. It's fun to create with Crayola. And if any partner cook book and bake someone happy with Super Moist, putting in the mix that makes it unbelievably moist. Other cakes may be moist, but they're not super moist. And a tray and chunky family-sized bars in four varieties. Each breaks into 24 thick bite-sized pieces, chunky, thicker of chocolate for real chocolate lovers. And Food Keepers and Uncle Ben's takes the time to make rice right. Uncle Ben selects brown rice, naturally high in brand, fiber, and nutrients. And a calculator and complete cleans and polishes all kinds of furniture without leaving a greasy film to streak or smear. From Johnson Wax.
And Clear Aid, hydrocortisone for itching from insect bites, detergents, poison ivy, dermatitis. Now there's something better for itching than scratching Clear Aid from Squib. Get ready to match the stars from Lou Grant, Robert Walden. Brett Summers. Charles Nelson Riley. Judy Lander. Bill Daly. And Marsha Wallace. As we play the stars of the Big Money Match Game. And now, here's the star of Match Game, Gene Rivers. How are you? You got a full house. That's nice. We have a full house. Oh, okay. yes. I have Did anyone top that? Yes, ma'am. Well, I want you to know you're dealing with a controversial figure. You are a controversial I figure. I just looked at your body. Rump up. Rump up. son. I got hate mail about my shoulders. Really? Yeah. For, on this program? Well, yes, actually, on this program now. You know me and my hot flashes. Yeah. And on into the summer, I don't cover up much. And I got actual mail in saying, uh, Tell her to wear a full bodice with long sleeves and cover up them shoulders. Well, I think she's got pretty shoulders. Great shoulders. She has beautiful shoulders. All right. Well, it makes America crazy, I guess. They can't do their work. Is that it? <laughs> <laughs> it drives them you mad are, with desire. Is that it? That's it. You are too much. Isn't she too much? Great shoulders. She has great shoulders. Right. I try. Wonderful <laughs> shoulders. If you like your shoulders, would you raise your hand? All right. All right. They're very easily entertained, aren't yes. they? Now, <laughs> if you don't like her shoulders, <laughs> would you raise her hand? And which, which one of you wrote the letters? <laughs> <laughs> we all love your shoulders. Thank you. Now let's say hello to Marsha Dupree and Donna Uzelak. Oh. Yeah. Hello, ladies. Let's quickly review who you are and where you're from. Donna? Uh, I'm from Gary, Indiana, and I live in Los Angeles now. Right. Nice to have you with us. Thank and Marsha? Oh, I'm Marsha Dupree. My husband's name is Kenneth, and we live in Reno, Nevada, and we have two children. A and B. Yes, A and B. All right. Where are we? In the middle of round one of what game? First game? Yes. All right, that means, Musha, this is your question. Muggsy said, this neighborhood is so tough. Uh -huh. Well, I'm sorry, you're going to have to get with it if you're going to do that. Get tougher out there. That's right. Yeah, it's so tough, instead of a bow, Cupid has to use a blank. <laughs> tough neighborhood, Robert. Muggsy said this neighborhood is so tough, instead of a bow, Cupid has to use a blank. He has to use a knife. A knife? <laughs> yes. Aha. Aha, ha, ha, ha. Aha. That's a three ha, ha answer. Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Surprise me. Uh -huh. Surprise me here to say knife. Uh -huh. Switchblade. Yeah, what do you say? Switchblade is good, though, now yeah, that I think about it. Stiletto is really the style then, but no, I... This is the stuff that they used to make in shop. A zip gun. gun. Yeah, that's a good response. No one remembers that. Shotgun. Shotgun. Knife is the answer we're looking for, Charles. Chuck chose Tommy, Gene. Tommy. Oh, Tommy gun. Okay. Oh, so frightening. Okay. Now, his neighbor is so tough, instead of a bow, Cupid has to use a... A bullet. A bullet. <laughs> that was he a short bullet. No. Yeah. <laughs> Takes his bullet and throws it at I uh, hit you with my bullet. I, <laughs> I think uh, I think Judy has nice shoulders, don't you think? Yes, so? she does. Oh, there's a four nice shoulders. Oh, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. They don't like you. You don't like her shoulders better than hers, do you? No, you can't do that. That's unfair. Well, how many people do not like her shoulders? All the women. Yes. <laughs> I'm you sorry. do have an answer. No, I didn't. Yes. Oh. The answer is shoulders. No, the answer is machine gun. Machine gun. Answer, but it's not a, that's right. Knife is what Marsha We forgot it so long ago. I forgot yeah. what the question was. Uh, Muggs is so tough. Neighbor is oh, so yeah, tough. Instead matter. of a bowl, Cupid has to use a... Well, the reviews are in from the top tier. Cut shoulder speech entirely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Mostly you, Mr. Director. Yes, Mr. Director, Mr. Lubitsch. Cannon. Cannon. <laughs> not one knife over there, Marsha. No knives. Not one knife. If you go to round two, the final round, Donna, you're ahead, A or B? B. Two people play. Why do I get 
Judy and Bill. Oh, we play, oh, we play together. Wow. <laughs> now you're born. Are you ready to play? Yes, we're ready to play, two of us. You ready to play? We're going to play with the shoulders. All right. Did you hear about Unlucky Louie and Unlucky Huey, the unlucky Siamese twins? <laughs> they have two heads, and just their luck, both have blank. He's thought about it. We've given you a lot of time to think about it. There it is. Unlucky Louie and Unlucky Huey, the unlucky Siamese twins, they have two heads and just their luck, both have blank. One body? Oh. Well, that's what twin heads... What do, you, what do we do with that? I now, that... <laughs> really? It has no relation to the question. <laughs> uh, well, that's never stopped many of us, hon. Right, that's right. Well, I guess she didn't quite understand it. What did you say? I said both heads have dandruff. Dandruff is good. Yeah. All right, Bill. They were both bald. They were both bald. <laughs> Which is not right. that bad. Come to think about it. <laughs> Marsha Dupree will have a chance to catch up in a moment or so, but right now we have this for you. <laughs> Here we go. Marsha. Yes. Four to tie, five to win. You do understand. Yes. Al said. Right. You know the price of food is too high. When you come and find your... <laughs> Where were you when I needed you on that uh, question that called for a response? You know the price of food is too high when you come home and find your wife grinding up the blank for dinner. <laughs> Everyone play. Good. Surprise, 35th birthday. 35th. And she didn't mention that. She 30, didn't mention 35th that. 35th birthday. Right. Ah! And holding. <laughs> All right, here we go, Marshall. Al said, you know the price of food is too high when you come home and find your wife grinding up the blank for dinner. The dog. All right. Now I ask you, what took so long? Uh, it's a big dog. I don't oh. know. I said dog. All right. Hey, go. They do that in Korea. You know. I know that. They do that, yes, in That's many why I didn't go there for my vacation. That's <laughs> what they call the Betty White answer. Yeah. Dog. Oh, that's true. Thank you, score. D-O-J. D-O-J dog. Four to three to score. Now, we may be slowing down a little here on the bottom tier. Yes, we are. <laughs> we Just slow the game. Show us Call your me dog. Crazy. Yes. No dog. You don't have a dog? No dog. Oh. No, I love dogs. You don't yes. have a dog? Well, I, what? Dishes. Dishes. <laughs> Grinding up the dishes. Oh, come on, Judy. Knock it off. How could you eat that? Can't wait to see. You couldn't. You couldn't eat it. Well, if she's grinding. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to make sense with I her. Know. She's Look got great shoulders. You can yes. say anything. All Three right. dogs night, grinding up the dog. High score. Uh, the game either ends in a tie no or wonder. a win for Marsha. That's the way it's going to go. Marsha giving the score for Marsha. It's one of life's little twists, isn't it? It is indeed. I'm so easily entertained. I know. <laughs> Why, it says dog. Yeah. Later. You ready to have a go at it? Oh, yes. Yeah. Real big money is coming up here now. Good luck to you. We polled a studio audience not too long ago and said, write down your best answer to this. Squeeze blank. If you uh, give us the answer that they wrote down most frequently, we'll give you $500 for naming their second most popular answer, $250, $100 for the third. Three of the six stars are allowed to assist. Marsha. Oh, Marsha. Yeah. Are you an SHA, hun? Or a CIA? Well. <laughs> no, M A R S H A or M I? S H A. 
little human interest yes, between right. us, mm. Marshes. Squeeze me. Squeeze me. Uh-huh. <laughs> Brett. Who? Brett. <laughs> Brett. Oh. Uh, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze the Charmin, please. Oh. Squeeze the Charmin. And Charles. It's funny you should ask a, a football player. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, what only a football player could say, Gene. What's that? I don't, you're very snotty toward me when I'm doing my football character. <laughs> He's attracted to you. Though. Squeeze play. Aha! Uh -huh. Squeeze play. Baseball, but we won't quibble. Uh, uh, that's right, it's baseball, but in the locker room, it's squeeze He's play. living in his own little it's world. Kind of he thinks it's now. baseball. Yeah. Don't, care. don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> so you have squeeze play, squeeze the Charmin, and squeeze me. One of those, or one of your own. I'll take squeeze me. Yeah. 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 All right. Let's see if Squeeze Me is there. May we see the $100 number? Squeeze Box. Squeeze box. That's a, What's that? Uh, that's a popular name for an accordion. Oh, a Squeeze I Box. I hate the accordion. And now let's take a look at the $250 number. Squeeze the Charmin is up there. Oh, it's going to be Squish Me. Now, yeah, I guess it's going to be Squeeze Me. Don't you think so? Yes. Go. Yes. Yeah. Good for you. That means the least you'll play for is ten times that amount, or $5,000. But remember, you're going to spin the star wheel, and if it lands on a star, you'll double your money and play for $10,000. Step right up this way, if you please. Grab that peg right there and give it a spin. Here we go. Instead of 10000 you play for 5000 but that's still a lot of money. $5,000, my dear. Good luck to you. Marsha. Gene. Oh, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. <laughs> Yikes. Wipe your blank. All right. Now, you name the answer that Marsh has written on the card, and we give you $5,000. What do you say? Wipe your mouth. Oh. <laughs> Wipe your mouth is what she says. Well, you have two small children, and you're always telling yeah, them that, huh? Right. What else you tell them? Uh, face. Face? All right, Marsha. Hands? Hands. Oh, hon. What do you got there? Oh, I can't tell you how I would have loved for this to have worked out better than it did. Nose. Oh. Nose. Wipe your nose. Yes. Oh, Isn't that the Listen. expression, wipe your nose? Yeah. Well, that is a fail. Well, uh, I don't know. It, look, there was, well, a little yeah. depressor. Yeah, Here's right. the other one. Yeah, she thought it over, put down mouth, and then changed her mind and wrote nose. But that's the way it is. Now, you do have $500, and we're going to do a little business with America. Congratulations to you. Come back right after this. All right, we welcome back Donna. Second and final game for these two ladies. Donna, A or B? A. A it is. Peter said, Peter said, our house is really a mess. That's because instead of using a fly swatter, my wife kills flies with a blink. <laughs> This is a round one question, and round one questions can have many different answers. <laughs> yes. Can't think of anything, eh? A lot of things. That's two who can't think of anything. You thought of something, but you're not too crazy about it, are you? Are you 
killing the slide, Brett. Oh, or to get... All right. Donna's thinking about it. She's having a hard time. But we have to... Peter's head, our house is really a mess. That's because instead of using a fly swatter, my wife kills flies with a blank. Frying pan? Frying pan. It looks like a fly swatter. Yeah, that's not bad. Frying pan. Frying pan is a pretty good answer. What have you got there, Bob? Well, I'm still stuck on the Lower East Side in the shop making... This time, instead of a zip gun, I made a water pistol. A water pistol? Yes, with a water pistol. It makes a messy house. That's right, it does. I See, the, to go the, the frying pan doesn't make your house a mess. It just makes a lot of racket when you crack it up inside the wall. Oh. But now, a very wet mop. Really, oh, just get over it. there. Honey, they'll be just snapping and It's striking. interesting. What did you say, I 16? said water from a fireman's hose. Water and all three on the top layer said water. Interesting water signs. Yes, right. Like we might be all wet up yeah. here. Very good, 16. <laughs> Oh, uh, 16 is really perking today. What'd you say, Judy? I said... Instead of using a fly swatter, my wife kills flies with a... No, with the pillows. <laughs> with the uh, pillows. <laughs> All right. Don't be so quick to boo her. Yeah, yeah what do you see his? Wait till you get to me. Uh, I said flamethrower. Flamethrower. Very good answer, I think, Bill. Don't don't feel bad about that one. That's Very good answer. Oh, I think so. You do? Wouldn't that mess up the Been house? On your way too long. Remember what I said? Don't be so quick to boo her. Wait till right. you get to my answer. Yeah. I put this down. <laughs> wait for the answer. Give <laughs> yeah, me a break. Common courtesy would say you wait until she gives it, and then you boo. Hold your booze. <laughs> Hold yes. your booze. Right. <laughs> Thank you. I put this down rather than because we're not allowed to show a blank card. Yes. <laughs> Banana. <laughs> you got uh, you much, a lot of yays and a couple of boos there. A couple of diamonds. Some, on, some of them are for her shoulder, I think. That's yes, right. That's yeah. the shoulder. Mark, are you ready? Yes. All right, this is yours. Sid said, I'll never go back to that sleazy bar again. Oh, boy. The bartender strained my martini through his blink. <laughs> That's why we do the show. You don't drink martinis, do you? No. Do no. your kids drink martinis? No. <laughs> We're vamping till ready, Rob. Since then, I'm going to go back to that sleazy bar again. The bartender strained my martini through his blank. Handkerchief? Blah! <laughs> Disgusting. Quite. Terrible answer. Sounds tasty to me. Uh. <laughs> I, uh, I didn't have time to finish my answer, so I just have hands, Kerchief. Hands. Hands, Kerchief? No. <laughs> hands. There's hands. Yeah. The s and &M Pathetic Answer Award. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, they're ready for you. I don't know why you said that, because I haven't seen your answer. I don't know what you wrote. You won't agree when you see. He must have misread me. His wife's pantyhose. Uh-huh. <laughs> Does that have anything to do with S&M? No. <laughs> S. Them. Beard. Beard. Yeah. There's a D in handkerchief. Handkerchief. All right, Judy. The bartender strained my martini through his... His nose. Well, why did you say nose? It's the first thing that I thought of. Really? <laughs> How could he do that? Yeah. I didn't think of that part. Oh, you didn't think of that part. <laughs> All right. <laughs> she doesn't know how it's done, Bill. <laughs> what do you got there? Through his jockey shorts. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we are talking bad taste right down the right line. Down. Yes, That's we the are. The I don't even want to be a party to this question. I said tie, a tasteful but wrong answer. That's correct, tasteful but wrong. All right, there we are in round one, and round two follows round one, as you well know, and no doubt one of you will win, I think. Watch this, and then hurry back.
You were all splendid, and you will be splendid again tomorrow. Here on the match game, I'm Gene Rayburn. Thank you. Goodbye. Today's consolation prizes are meet the car lovers from Polyglycode. All you'll ever need to restore, protect, preserve your car for years. Polyglycode are new car dealers and leading retailers. And a seven piece performer gourmet cutlery set with extra sharp chrome stainless steel blades and ebony Fleetwood handles, dishwasher safe from Washington Ford. And Carter's Easy Care infants lay yet sets for generations, a special gift for special babies if they just stay little till their Carter's wear out. And a frying pan and Hollywood safflower oil, higher in polyunsaturates and other oils. Hollywood safflower oil contains no cholesterol from Hollywood foods. And a serving tray, and spice up your life with delicious Lipton-flavored teas and tea bags. Try orange and spice, cinnamon, and a variety of other exciting flavors. And a red tray, butter dish, and like Madge the Manicure says, try a mild palm oil dishwashing liquid. Palm oil solvents hands while you do dishes. And a leather tote. And Unicap M from Upjohn contains 11 essential vitamins and six key minerals, including iron and zinc. Unicap M because you need minerals, too. Bill Topman production. This program was edited into broadcast. Get ready to match the stars from Lou Grant, Robert Walden, Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Riley, Judy Lander, Bill Daly, and Marsha Wallace as we play the star-studded Big Body Match Game. And now, here's the star of Match Game, Gene! Hi, John. Ready? Yes. Ready. You don't look ready. But I start. Well, it's all going what you had in mind, Dad. I'll tell you what I'm ready for, but I can't. Well, I'll okay. Do later. I guess you're ready. Let's uh, begin by having a brisk round of applause for our two players over there, Gail Edlin and Ed Burrow. Now, let's refresh our memories here on who you are and where you're from. Gail, please tell us about yourself once again. Okay, I'm from Citrus Heights, California. I'm originally from Southern California. I lived in Lakewood most right. of my life. Uh, I'm a homemaker. I'm married, and I like to play racquetball. All right. Ed, I remember that you're a, uh, a detective in the Los Angeles Police Force, right? That's correct. That's correct. I'm a native, native Californian, uh, married, wife Jessica, uh, son Scott. Uh, Any my, of those people here? Uh, yes, both in the audience. All right, yeah. <laughs> there they are. They're rooting for you. They're ready. Scott, where's Scott? <laughs> Scott is there. How old is he? He's 11. Be 12 He's 11. December. And Jessica is uh, there. And who are the other people? She's 15. She'll be 16. Jesse, your wife is 15? <laughs> no, I just what? <laughs> <laughs> You have Bless the right to remain silent. You have the right to the lawyer of your choice. <laughs> well, you've got a delightful family. Good luck Thank to you. both of you. We're in the middle of round two here now. And uh, Ed stuck played. No, Gail plays. All right, Gail, you want A or B? Okay, fine. Hey, thank you very much. Here we go. Joe said, my wife has the world's worst cold. She sneezed so hard, she blew her blanks into the other room. <laughs> Said, my wife has the world's worst cold. She sneezed so hard, she blew her blanks into the other room. False teeth. False teeth. You see, you have to understand that uh, when we book a star on the show, <laughs> we look for fey people. And a fey person would not give false teeth as an answer. I don't, don't think. Don't be too sure of that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What about falsies? Does that's not? No, I didn't say that. I said contacts. Contacts. Contact, contact lenses. lenses. Snapped her head. Her contacts fell right out. All right. No, Brett. no, sweetheart. She blew her loved ones into the next. Her loved ones. <laughs> All I right. was almost right. Maybe the judges will be lenient. Falsies. Falsies. Nice try, Charles. Thank you. You're really in there pitching and fighting. All right, He's in Judy. there pitching and fighting, and I'm up here loafing around? Is that what the implication is, no, Mr. No, no. I said you had a very good response. That's better, Mr. Red. Tide. I said that long ago. Will you listen to me? <laughs> I'm listening. 
her sight is going, her hearing is going. I mean, she's... Her What's the matter recently? with Bess Meyerson? She's a lovely woman. <laughs> No, you, that's true. She sneezed so hard she blew her blanks into the other room. What do you say? <laughs> I said she blew her nostrils into the other room. <laughs> Fell right out of her head. <laughs> and you liked it too, didn't you? Okay, Bill. She blew her pasties in the next room. Her pasties. <laughs> you don't know what they are. That's why you're not responding. I don't know that. what they are. That's why I didn't All get right. it. Marsha. Jane? Yes, ma'am. You know, Judy and I are so much alike, it's amazing you have booked us both on the same show. That's true, yeah. <laughs> Seems kind of redundant. I mean, we're very similar in physiognomy. Right, right. Hairs. Hairs, right. You have the same number of hairs. Uh, hairs. Yes. Smiles. And you have the same number of, uh, I mean, you have... Well... <laughs> Same number, yes. Yes. <laughs> what was that about Faye, hon? I've been called Faye since I grew up in Creston, Iowa. You are Faye. Yeah. Well, take well, it back. Whoa! <laughs> well, now, Ed, we're going to swing you around back here where there's a poker game back there. I'm ready. And uh, you'll play a little poker, and then when we finish this, you'll come back and play game number two. All right? Here we go. Gail, good luck here. Not too long ago, we pulled the studio audience in this very room, and we said, write down your best answer to this. Stale blank. You get $500 for matching their most popular answer. If you match the second most popular, $250, and then for matching the third, $100. Whom do you want over here? Marsha. Hello, hon. Stalemate? Yeah. Stalemate is one. Good. How about bread? How hun. about stale bread? Yeah. Mm. Right. Yeah. Uh, how about stale air in honor of our... Stale air. In honor of our city. In honor of our Congress. <laughs> yeah. That's hot right. air. In honor of our Congress. In honor, uh, stale air, stale bread, uh, stale bread, stale mate. You want one of those? No, it's hard for me to say. Uh, one of those or one of your own? I'll say bread. Bread? Stop it. Is stale bread under the $100 response, I ask you? Stale mate is under there. No. Is stale bread under the $250 response? Stale, stale beer. beer. Oh, that was a rowdy group. Ooh, it was indeed. Last chance for bread. Here we go. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. Now, Gail's got $500. Means at least you'll play for us five thousand dollars. However, you'll step up here and spin the wheel and see if you can double it up and play for ten thousand dollars. Good luck to you, and let's all root for a double. Here we go. Ready, Marcia? That hasn't fallen on me in about a year and a half, and no. twice today. You're lucky. Just lucky. Ready? <laughs> Good luck here. Here it is. He's so blank. You want to take a look at it? He's so blank. You understand it, Marcia? Yeah. There it is. <laughs> now, if you give us the same answer that Marcia has written on that card, with the help of some of her colleagues, why, we will give you... Ten thousand dollars. What do you say to that? Oh, it's hard. Fat. Oh fat. fat. He's so fat. What do you say? Dumb. He's so dumb. All right. They say he's so dumb. Marcia, do you realize this is a, you'll, it's a miracle. It could be eighty-two different answers. That's right. There are a lot of. It could be eighty-two. Be you know the chances of ever getting the, this right, and He's... I got it after a year and a half. I got it, and I have to sit here and tell her fat. <laughs> Game number two. 
Here we go. Now, Ed, welcome back. She's a little bit excited because she's got $10,500. Let's get to game number two here. Ed, you may have A or B. I'm going to take A this time. A it is for you, sir. Oh. Frank said, that political candidate is really unpopular. In a recent poll, he was even more unpopular than blank. <laughs> Frank said that political candidate is really unpopular. In a recent poll, he was even more unpopular than blank. Ex-President Nixon. Ex-President Nixon. All right. That's one of the two good choices. Have you got one? Yeah, I have one of the non-good choices, I guess. I said the Ayatollah. The Ayatollah is a good one. He's not very popular with me. What do you say? Well, there's a rumor around town that Mr. Carter's not too popular either. That's true. <laughs> Ted Kennedy. Oh. oh. All right. Well, Nobody uh, likes anybody. Three to yeah, have different answers there. Judy, what have you got? Ayatollah. The Ayatollah. Sorry, I went for Carter. Two Carters. Put two That's two down. Carters. You can pull me. Go ahead. Three Carters. And three Carters. <laughs> three Carter bills. All right. I Carter's thought you were going to win with that. All right. Here we go. <laughs> Gail. Tim said, I just saw an updated picture of Whistler's mother. Instead of sitting on a rocking chair, she's sitting on a blank. <laughs> updated picture of Whistler's mother. Are you writing, Charles? Yes. All right, Gail. Tim said, I just saw an updated picture of Whistler's mother. Instead of sitting on a rocking chair, she's sitting on a blank. Motorcycle. Motorcycle. What? Got nothing to worry about, Ed. <laughs> what do you say? I'm going to need the mercy of the judges for this one. I made it, I thought well, it was too butch for a motorcycle. I made a moped. Moped. Well, all right. Surprise the heck out of me, I'll tell you that. That's really a rotten answer, isn't it? Yeah, quite. I, don't know, I can't think of anything you would All be right, more show us like. your moped. Motorcycle, you ah! are. A perfectly <laughs> dreadful answer. One of those lazy it? boy chairs with the electric Lazy cocaine. boy electric chair. Very good, Charles. All right. Judy. <laughs> she was sitting on a waterbed. On a waterbed. Well, I was uh, staying in the chair line, sitting on one of those beanbag chairs, you know. Beanbag chairs. All right, you can boo. <laughs> I feel good now. I deserve that. Thank you. <laughs> now, Marcia. Did you get it all out of your system? Yeah. Good. <laughs> oh, boy. Beanbag Here we go, the second and final round. Gail, you're ahead. You may go first. I'll take B. Gary said, it's going to be a really hard winter. I can tell. I just saw a woodchuck trying to tunnel his way to blank. <laughs> you don't play, you don't play. All right. Gary said it's going to be a really hard winter, I can tell. I just saw a woodchuck trying to tunnel his way to blank. Oh, no. Can you repeat that one more time? Yes. <laughs> Gary said it's going to be a really... I've memorized it already, I repeat it. It's going to be a really hard winter. I just saw a woodchuck trying to tunnel his way to blank. China. China. Yeah. All right. But it's not warm in all places of China. That's the problem. Yes, sir? What's the matter with Miami flaw? Nothing. All right. She said China. He said Miami. What do you say? Well, I first said China. Yes. And then I said Hawaii. Hawaii was your real choice. It's Sorry, uh, I copied from uh, Charles, which is very hard from down here. Miami Beach. Miami Beach. You have two like of those? Somebody like one person like me in the whole show. It's catching. Maybe later. My place. My place. <laughs> <laughs> 
You like him? The dreaded lower tier disease. What is I'm having that? lower tears right now after the answer. <laughs> <laughs> you can't really tunnel to Hawaii because of that pesky ocean, right? That's right. You got to well, go under the Pacific Ocean. Now, Ed, here's the way it is. You need two to tie, three to win. Here we go. At the beach, Jill said, Weird Willie is really weird. How weird is he? Fabulous. <laughs> Take a look. He's putting copper tone on his blank. <laughs> Aren't you glad you came in? <laughs> Having a good time? <laughs> Got you on this one, didn't we? All right, yeah. At the beach, Jill said, Weird Willie is really weird. Now, take a look. He's putting copper tone on his blank. Beach ball. Beach ball. That's good. I think beach ball is an excellent response. It's a great response. I don't know if anyone's going to match it, though, but I, I said on his trunks, his swimming trunks. On his trunks, another good one. Any unlikely place is okay here. Any unlikely place? Any unlikely How place. How about an unlikely dog? That's a good place. <laughs> on his hot dogs. Hot dogs. <laughs> All right. Looking for a beach ball here. Now, show us your beach ball. <laughs> No, I don't have one. You don't have one? Toenails. What? Toenails. <laughs> now, you must match Bill and Marsha to stay in the game and achieve a tie. Look, Ed, when I get one of those tickets, I'm going to talk to you, okay? Beach ball. Beach ball. <laughs> All right. Marsha? Oh, Ed, Ed, Ed. I would have done it had I known, but I didn't know, and I said swimming trunks. Trunks. All right, so Gail wins the game. Come on down here. Yeah. So, Ed, it was a pleasure to meet you. We'll send some gifts your way from Match Game. Many thanks to Ed Burrow, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. Now, a little message for Match Game. Hurry back. You ready? Yes. you got to really be excited. you got 10500 Let's see how much more you'll win here now. We polled the studio audience and said, write down your best answer to this. Blank grease. Remember, it's 500 for the most popular, 250 for the second most popular, and $100 for the third most popular. Whom do you want over here? Marcia. Oh, bless you. I did come through for you once, right? <laughs> well, this time, uh, Athens, Greece. Athens, Greece. Athens. <laughs> 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 come over here, Arthur. Trust me. Brett. Bacon grease. Bacon oh, grease. Oh. <laughs> Charles. Oh. Axel grease. Oh, sure. Yeah, that's So you got Axel, grease. bacon, and Athens oh, grease. Elbow, elbow, you want one of those, elbow. or have you got a better one in your own head? Elbow grease. I'll go with bacon. Bacon grease. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Bacon I grease. Let's see if we got a little bacon grease no, there under no the $100 way. response. Yes, oh, we do. Right yeah, off the bat. Nothing. All right. Now, what do you think is going to be on the next? Athens. Elbow. That's Elbow good, Marsha. Yeah. Elbow. Let's see it. Athens. Elbow. Elbow. You monkey. got it. Now, Athens ought to Athens. be. Athens. The monkey. Athens is going to be on the top. Hey, listen. I'm going to stall for about, about 30 seconds. Grease. Change it to <laughs> Athens, Greece. Uh, I didn't mean to saddle with the Axel. Get it out of there. Uh, 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 Axel. <laughs> it's Axel, Axel Greece. Well, all right. So now, Gail, you've got hundred dollars more. It means the least you'll play for is ten times that amount, or one thousand dollars. But you're going to spin the wheel as you did before, and good luck to you on another double. Here we go. You did it before. Let's see if you'll do it again. If you do it, you'll be the first one to roll doubles twice. Step down here, if you would, please. Miss Judy, are you ready? Yes. Yes. All right, you face me. And here we go. Good luck for $1,000 now. Blank sunshine. Blank sunshine. Blank sunshine.
All right, you have to put it in the slot, Judy. Okay. All right, she's ready. Now you give us the same answer she has, and we give you another $1,000. All I could think of was morning sunshine. Morning sunshine. Oh, that's good. All right. That's good. Judy, may we see your answer, please? I said Florida sunshine. Florida sunshine. Correct. All right. Gail, you have a total of 10... Yeah, $10,600. Wow. And that's pretty good. I congratulate you. Thank you very, very much. Gail Edlund, I have this message for you. And... Yeah, five, four, four, three. Seven, nine, twelve, eight, two, one. Now, let's see. Old uh, Robert here, he uh, works on a show called Lou Grant. Yeah. Yes, and, and I'm doing the uh, religious sign-offs. It's a new thing. Religious sign-offs, yes. <laughs> Charles and I are commercial. doing a series in Tijuana. <laughs> oh, you are? With a singing coyote. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't want to mention that. And I'll be at the Christian Science Reading Room. <laughs> I want to say something. Marsh and I, when we did the first show, uh, the second show on uh, the Bob Newhart show, we fell in love and we got married and we were going to get married and we eloped and we went in. Remember the bathroom? We went, went the bathroom, to Canton, Ohio. And we went and eloped and, and the next six years the show was on, we never spoke we to never each spoke other. We never spoke to one another. Right. They just, really? I thought yeah. that was interesting. I had a little human yeah. interest. We enjoyed it. And we're not speaking to each other again. I never liked it. Yeah. Yeah. No, you Sorry. thought that was interesting. Yeah, Wait till you hear this. this. Yeah. yeah. What did she have to say? What, do, what? <laughs> what am I supposed to say? <laughs> Well, I stand up. You said you wanted to say something. No, I didn't. You didn't? Uh-uh. You mean you have nothing to say? No. Well, we could think of some questions, couldn't we? Yes. But we you don't have time think for that. Bye. I'm Gene Raber, and join us next time for Match Game. Thank you. Goodbye. Hey. Today's consolation prizes are... Meet the car lovers from Poly Black Coat. All you'll ever need to restore, protect, preserve your car for years. Poly Black Coat and new car dealers and leading retailers. And a seven-piece performer gourmet cutlery set with extra sharp chrome stainless steel blades and heavy treatment handles just wash the safe from Washington Ford. And Carter's Easy Care infants lay -out sets for generations. A special gift for special babies if they could just stay a little till their Carter's wear out. And a frying pan in Hollywood safflower oil. Higher in polyunsaturates and other oils. Hollywood safflower oil contains no cholesterol from Hollywood foods. And a serving tray and spice up your life with delicious Lipton flavored teas and tea bags. Try orange and spice, cinnamon, and a variety of other exciting flavors. And a bread tray, a butter dish, like Marge the manicure says, try mild palm olive dishwashing liquid. Palm olive softens hands while you do dishes. And a leather choke and Unicap M from Upjohn contains 11 essential vitamins and six key minerals, including iron and zinc. Unicap M because you need minerals, too. A Mark Goodson, Bill Totman production. This program has been edited for broadcast. Get ready to match the stars from Vegas, Bart Braverman, Danny White. Charles Nelson Riley, from Flo, Joyce Boulevard, from Aloha Paradise, Bill Daly, and Marsha Wallace, as we play the star-studded big money match game. And now, here's the star of match game, Gene Robert. Got a good bunch that, uh, up there. What? what is that design on your tie? That's really pretty. That's, uh... Looks like I think interlocking that's handcuffs or something. Air Maze. Isn't that their design? It's stirrups. Does it say... Yeah, that's Air Maze. Oh, Hermes. 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 No. Air Maze. Right next door to Goosey. No, it's, that's Air Maze. A great French saddle maker. That's how they started. Now they do purses oh, and everything. They make all my purses. You're so learned. Get those at Kmart. They're wonderful. Not Kmart. Pick and save. That's where they come from. <laughs> Pick and nose. You know <laughs> All right. Now, listen. Uh, she's been up there one day. Uh, you've been up there one day. It's your turn day. in the barrel. So oh, if, I can't if, wait. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So if you'd step down this way. See, Brett is out of town doing a play, and uh, so we're taking turns here. Oh, you, go, you go over there. <laughs> Oh, I've been marching in place. Oh, all right. <laughs> you know, I, Over here. I feel like a Vita. You feel like a Vita? I feel like a Vita. <laughs> Don't cry for Vita. me, Argentina. Vita. All right, are you ready to say hello to uh, Mimi Kennett? Come on down here, Mimi.
Now, Mimi, everybody on this stage knows you're a contestant. <laughs> So, and you've already gotten me to the CBS building, so you don't need this CBS pass. I'll just stick it right over here for the moment there. Stick now, she it, won the game, and that means she's going to have a go at the big money. She uh, started the uh, first part of the super match and won $250. That means the least she will play for is 10 times that amount, or $2,500. But if she spins a wheel and gets lucky, she could double it up and play for $5,000. So, Mimi, step up there and have a go at it, and we'll all root for a double. Here we go. All right, $2,500 with Bart Braverman. And here we go. Back here, if you would, facing me, please. Good luck. Always blank. Always blank. Want we'll to take a look at it? There's the word. Well, he made up his mind very quickly. Yeah, I'll give you a chance to think about it for a second, and then you give me a response which you think will match him. If you do that, you get $2,500. What do you say? Yours. All right, all right, Bart, what do you say? Well, that's yours. Mine was always remember. Always remember. Uh, could you just die from an answer like that, I really? Maybe I get a kiss. Oh, I better get your badge. Your badge fell down here because you're supposed to wear it at all times. Listen, it was uh, grand having you up here on the match game, and I'm glad you won $250. And many thanks for Mimi Kenneth, ladies and gentlemen. There she goes. Here we have Colleen Cardoza and Pam Iovino. How do you do, ladies? Welcome. Let's find out who you are and where you're from. Colleen? I'm from San Diego. I was born and raised there. I work for a marketing research company. I'm 20 years old and single. Yes, right, yes. and a gleam in her eye. <laughs> All right, and Pam, tell us about you, please. Hi, I'm credit manager of an automotive soft goods firm in Los Angeles. I'm married. I have three dogs and a cat. I enjoy football, Las Vegas, and Paul Williams. Really? <laughs> yes. Well, it's too bad Paul is not. When he's in town, we try and get him for this program, and he's been on a number of times, and uh, we love him, too. All right. Good luck to both of you ladies. We'll begin by asking Colleen to make a decision. B, please. All right. B says, the Hollywood producer said, there's something wrong with the casting in this movie. It's the life story of Minnesota Fats. And in the starring role, they've got blank. <laughs> That's very good. All right, Colleen. Hollywood producer said, there's something wrong with the casting in this movie. It's the life story of Minnesota Fats. And in the starring role, they've got blank. Jimmy Walker. Jimmy Walker is a skinny fellow. <laughs> Jimmy Walker. Very skinny. Yes, also of the wrong persuasion. I thought perhaps Gregory Peck, tall, skinny, might get it, but... Right. right. Oh, who's hey, this right here? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, it's a jungle up here. It is. No wonder it's aged Brett very prematurely. <laughs> <laughs> See, I can say all this because she's in St. Louis. Yes. Has a repertory with no TV. Yeah, right. Too commercial. Right. Twiggy. Twiggy. That would be very incongruous. Well, thin, yeah. Very incongruous. Thin and also the wrong sex. What do you say? That's what Tarzan said when he came home one day and he said to Jane, please make me two martinis fast. It's a jungle out there. <laughs> Twiggy. Twiggy. <laughs> Tarzan said that, eh, Chuck? Crazy. All right. It's a life story of Minnesota fans, a starring role they've got. Tarzan said what? Didn't you hear him? No, I missed it. I was talking. He said to Jane, make me two martinis very quick. It's a jungle oh, out yes, there. I heard that. You did hear <laughs> it. <laughs> you know why she has... Oh, well, you why did it? you ask me what he Cause said? I, was, cause, I mean, I didn't hear him say it. I heard it before. Oh. Do you know why... What is she why? talking about? Do you, know what? Why, what? do you know why Jane has one bosom that's right and one that hangs down? Her, this side hangs down because he says... Me, Tarzan, this, Jane. <laughs> I don't get it. Oh. oh, you are incorrigible. What's your answer? Twiggy. Twiggy, a skinny lady. Well, Kareem Abdul, but you're probably going to Kareem the tall, the tall guy that plays basketball. Kareem Abdul. The Lakers. Oh, Kareem Abdul I don't know how to spell it. I don't know how to spell it. Formerly known as Lou Alcindor. Yes, Lou Alcindor. I couldn't spell that either. All right. What did you say? <laughs> Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Right. That's good. I don't want to leave the Congo. Um, just for the diehards out there, can you imagine the letters you're going to get when you said Twiggy is the wrong sex? Twiggy. Twiggy. 
Did I say she was the wrong sex? Yeah, she said she was the wrong She's the wrong sex for Minnesota fats. Because Minnesota no. fats. Oh, yeah, but if for... Mary Tyler Moore can play the male part in Whose Life Is It Anyway, I right. mean, it's all a different time. That's, That's right. right. You could rewrite mission. the whole thing. Sure. All right. Otto said, you know you've had too much to drink at the party when you try to shave your host's blank. <laughs> uh, Pam, Otto said, you know you've had too much to drink at the party when you try to shave your host's blank. Legs? Legs. Legs. Your host's leg. Nothing. Who are you talking to out there? I'm... You got a you got a rooting section? No, I'm just trying to oh. get one. Oh, you're trying to get a rooting section. <laughs> Anyone like to root for her? Sure you would. All right, Bart. Said when you tried to shave your host's shih tzu. Ah! Let's say, uh, yes, a small, small curly small dog. dog wraps itself right. around your leg. Yes. Says, I, 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 I. Yeah. Oh, a shih tzu, boy. yes. Good impression. Shih tzu. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm having a wonderful time up here. And uh, I don't know why they didn't like Pam's. I mean, the mother of three dogs and a cat. Yes. <laughs> Legs. Legs. That's it. All right. I said head. Head. All right. Bring that head over here. You know, if you had too much to drink when you try to shave your host's mother. Mother. All right. She needed a shave. Yes. I had legs and I threw it away. Rat, rats, dogs. Dog. Ah. Uh, funny, a little leg to the lady. No Shih Tzu, just plain dog. Ah, dog. Okay, one to nothing to score. Well, shall we go on now to round two? And since you're ahead, you have to go first. B. Right. Uh. You got it. Rita said. Rita, whoever. Rita Hayworth. Rita said, I'll never go back to that rude clothing salesman again. I asked him to show me something cheap, so he told me to look in the blank. <laughs> Rita said, I'll never go back to that rude clothing salesman again. I asked him to show me something cheap, so he told me to look in the blank. Are you ready for the answer? <laughs> Mirror? <laughs> yeah, I mirror? guess I'm as ready as I'm going to be, oh, uh, good. Pam. Mirror. Yeah, mirror. Good to start. <laughs> what do you got there? I was taught at Carnegie Tech that it is pronounced mirror. Mirror. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Right. You do mean Carnegie. I, I said yeah. Carnegie. Oh, right. I said that. I was told in the ghetto of Hartford that it was mirror. <laughs> told me to, I wanted to uh, show me something cheap, so he told me to look in the, what do you say? In Cowtown, we say mirror. 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 The what do you comedy say? duel Stella and Mirror. Remember that? Stella and Mirror, yeah. Oh, you're doing okay, Pam. You got five. Let's see if uh, 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 Betty makes it six. Whatever her name is. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, this is no reflection on you, Mirror. All right. All right. Thank you. Now, Polly, <laughs> you could tie it with six. Let's see if it happens. Barry said, my wife is the world's worst cook. How worst is she? Can't say how worst is she. That's... You just said That ain't good grammar, you see. She's the world's worst cook. Last year, I had to carve the turkey with a blank. That's how worst she is. World's worst cook. Last year, I had to carve the turkey with a blank. You ready? Barry said, my wife is the world's worst cook. Last year, I had to carve the turkey with a blank. A razor. A razor. Got a lot of friends here today, haven't you, yeah, Colleen? Wonderful. She had it left over from the party right. when she shaved his legs. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say razor. What did you say? I said jackhammer. Jackhammer. So that means Pam wins the game. Come on down, Pam. What'd you have? Blowtorch, saw, pitchfork, and lawnmower. Oh. I'll get that out of the way. Now, Colleen, you'll be back for round uh, game number two a little bit later, but we'll wheel you off now and uh, see you in a little while. Now, we'll see how much money you're going to win.
Good luck to you. You can win over $10,000 here. Pam, we uh, polled the studio audience not too long ago, and we said, write down your best answer to this. Denise Blank. Now, let's see what kind of responses we'll get from our stars. One at a time. Betty? I... Betty. No, no. Betty, that's... You want Marsha. You want Marsha. You, you want Marsha. We all want Marsha. Oh, would that that were true. Denise? Is there a Denise? Is there a... Uh, what was that one from Hit Parade or something? Is that somebody... Denise Darcel? Is Denise, there a Denise Darcel. Darcel? Yeah, there is. There was an actress named Denise Darcel who was popular 40, 50 years ago. It's all right. I know you remember her. It's all right. Joyce, uh, uh, There's a lady who does a lot of soap opera shows called Denise Alexander, which was a very nice actress. Yeah. How about Denise and the nephew? Oh! Is that your... Uh, no, no, no. Are you there? No. Denise, anyone? <laughs> <laughs> All right. What are we doing? Whom did you... Did you call on Charles? I... I Charles, you have one. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I have one. Oh, all right. <laughs> well, no, he wrote down Bill's answer, Denise and Denefi. No, I had one. You have I... Denise Alexander already? All right. Oh, yeah. The most popular girl in the class at 48 at Weaver High School, Denise Shapiro. No, that's no good. <laughs> Denise Lohr. Denise Lohr. They know her. Everybody knows yeah. her. All right, Favorite Denise Lohr, Denise Alexander, and Denise Darcel. Denise Alexander, for lack of anything better. For lack of anything better? Well, I mean... How about I mean, venereal Denise, disease? Denise Lohr. <laughs> <laughs> venereal Denise. I thought that was... Alexander. You really want Alexander? All right, you want Alexander. Let's well, take a look at the $100 response. Denise the Menace. Denise the Menace? Denise the Menace? Well. What is that? It's not That's right up there with East Side Story. No, now, here's what happened. When we pass out Denise, the papers the to the audience, I think we've it's, get it's all they saw. No one pronounced it for them. They just have a piece of paper, D-E-N-I-S-E, -E, and many of them looked at it and says, Oh, Dennis, what are we going to write here? Martha, what are we going to write? We're going to write Dennis to Menace? That's what we're going to write, and that's what they wrote. All right. Let's see what the next one is going to say now. Ah! So the same guy it. says, Martin, what are you going to write to the yeah. next one? She says, write Denise, Denise and Denefio. And that's how that Maybe happened. Maybe Venereal Denise is up there that's... next time. <laughs> oh, well, I hesitate no to reveal a $500 response. I don't know what's going to be up there. Well, slide it anyway. Who is he? It's the elevator operator, the guy. Who's Dennis up. Williams? It's you know a it's a singer, it's a girl. Oh, Denise Williams, a That's singer. All a joke, that whole board, right? Right. Wow. Let's start uh, all over again. That was a Weren't tough you board. lucky to be Lucky's here on this day? Denise. Yeah. Yeah. Denise and Denise. We've got a little commercial. I Fortunately, you have game number two. Current leader. All right, here we go with Colleen back again. Welcome, and uh, we'll ask you once again to choose A or B. A. A it is. Norm said that politician is a lush. In, uh, how lush is he? Uh, instead of his hat, he threw blank into the ring. <laughs> Colleen, are you familiar with that? When a phrase enters a, uh, when a politician enters a political race, the, uh, the colloquial phrase is he threw his hat into the ring. That means he's running for office, for senator or congressman or whatever. So I'll let you read it just to make sure you understand it. You want to read it aloud? Go ahead. Okay. Read it out loud. Okay. Read out. Norm said that politician is a lush. Instead of his hat, he threw in, he threw blank into the ring. I Got mean, it? He threw blank into the ring. Now, Colleen, we'll begin. Norm said that politician is a lush. Instead of his hat, he threw blank into the ring. His liquor bottle. His liquor bottle. Very good. <laughs> Simple, straightforward, and direct. Absolutely. Nothing but the upper crust here. He threw up into the ring. Aha! Uh -huh. 
All right. I was going to say that, too. But you changed but your mind. But I'm sitting in the woman's seat, a woman of taste, perception, style, class. Who is An that? age. An age. Right. So I had to pick something a little classier. He threw his pants into the ring. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Dropped his pants. Threw the pants into the ring. Brett's back. His home. ice cubes. His ice cubes. All right, if he was a lush, he would have a large supply of ice cubes. Thank you. Don't boo Charles. Don't boo Charles. He'll turn on you. Instead of his hat, he threw blank into the ring. This is terrible. You have a bad one. It's awful. I'm uh, embarrassed. Well, now, wait a minute. If you're that embarrassed, maybe I should take no, a peek at it first. No, you can't look at it. I'll say it. He kissed his bottle. He kissed his bottle and threw a baby into the ring. What would that have to do with being a well, lush? They always kiss. They always kiss babies. Oh. He kissed the bottle and threw the baby in the ring. Oh, I see. All right, I understand. It's very logical. Very, very logical. Okay, Bill. No. Well, he kissed the baby and threw the bottle of booze in the ring. Yeah. The booze bottle. An empty bottle, that is. Yeah. You know. An empty right. bottle. That's one for her. No. Cork. A cork. That's close. Part of a bottle. So one for her, and now, Pam, we have this one for you, which says, Nerdo Crumbesia has the world's sleaziest opera company. It's... You're a mob. You're an anarchistic mob, totally disorganized, without a leader. You are not in concert at all. And that makes you happy, doesn't it? Nerdo Crumbesia has the world's sleaziest opera company. They're fired. <laughs> Instead of performing Madame Butterfly, they're performing Madame Blank. <laughs> All right, now. I'm ready now. Nerdo Crumbesia has the world's sleaziest opera company. Instead of performing Madame Butterfly, they're performing Madame Blank. Worm. Worm. All right. Worm. Madam Worm. What do you say, Bart? I would have said that, but you rushed me. What'd you say? Madam you. Madam Beetle. Madam Beetle. Beetle. I what love my say? answer. You're going to hate it in droves. You're going to hate it. I love it. Is it the worst? First, word? Brett Summers testimonial <laughs> baddie. Oh, thank you. Go. Thank you. I did it for you, Brett. Madam and Waylon. Madam and Waylon. Thank you. Nothing wrong with that. Madam Roach. Madam Roach. That's good. Instead of Madam Butterfly, they're performing Madam... Madam Moth. Madam Moth. Okay. What do you got, Bill? I got a raunchy one in uh, Madam Horsefly. That's a Madam good one. Horsefly. Well, raunchy's there. She wants a worm. Should have been Madam Margarine Fly. Yeah, right. Uh, Madam Moth. Madam Moth. So it's one and nothing at the end of round one. Now this message. For the next commercial. Gene Rabernier, join us next time for the match game. Thank you all. Goodbye. Get ready to match the stars from ABC Weekend Specials, Willie Tyler and Lester, Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Miley, Lynn Redgrave, McLean Stevenson, and Marsha Wallace as we play the star-studded big money match game. And now, here's the star of match game, Gene Rabernier. Hello, hello, hello. Everybody ready? Have a go at it. Listen, for those of you, at the moment we're taping this, and I don't know when you're going to be viewing it, this lady has an infant child. Yes. And uh, I haven't seen your infant child yet, she's but it's gorgeous. in the dressing room. She's, she's asleep. She started to watch the show and fell asleep. There was yesterday's <laughs> show, and she hasn't woken up. So, yes, it's I upsetting. thought I was going to look forward to meeting the child. I've just I'm... changed my mind now. <laughs> But I will see her later. What is her name? Her name is Annabelle Lucy. Annabelle Lucy. Yes. All right. Congratulations, Mom. Thank you very much. All right. Now, let's say hello to Steve Ledoux and ask him to come down here and hit the blue mark here. Steve. Steve Ledoux vacationing out here and got lucky. And uh, he won game number one, and he just won game number two. And we had the first part of the super match where he won $500. That gives him a total of 1000 altogether. And uh, the $500 means he's going to play for $5,000. Or if he gets a lucky spin of the star wheel, he'll be playing for $10,000. So, Steve, 
from Orlando, Florida. Have a go at it, and we'll all root for a double. McLean Stevenson. You're teamed up with him. Your job is to match McLean, remember? Good luck to you. Here we go. Uh, fall off a blank. All right. No help from the audience, please. Your job is to match him. Remember that. Good luck to you. What do you say? Horse. Fall off a horse. All right. McLean? Yo. Did you hear everybody in the audience? Did you hear anybody in the audience? Yeah. Yeah. What? I heard a few say. What were they saying? They were saying, fall off a log. Fall off a log? That's as dumb as fall off a horse. <laughs> I really feel bad, because I wanted the kid to win some money. So, I said horse. Uh -huh. <laughs> and away to go, Steve Ledoux. $6,000. Congratulations to you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. There he goes. Now here comes Larry Lipsman and Loretta Timper. Welcome. Nice to have a few of you with us. Larry, let's find out about you, please. Hi, Gene. I'm originally from Bendorf, Iowa. I work for oh. a major oh. advertising... Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Crest in Iowa. Crest in Iowa. Close. Yeah. Real close. <laughs> All right. Is that, is that what all the... I lie that I'm from Bettendorf. <laughs> <laughs> You're from Bettendorf. Oh, yes, I am. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? The two of us from the same small town in Iowa. Amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> not interesting, but amazing. <laughs> no, not interesting at all, dear friends and gentle hearts. Bettendorf, Iowa, eh? Right. And I work for a major advertising agency in Los Angeles, and I am an account executive in the fast food field. All right, sir. Good luck to you. Nice Thank to you. have you with us. Loretta. Well, I'm married and I have seven children, and I think I'm the only person in town that keeps worms in their refrigerator because one of my daughters keeps frogs in her room. <laughs> and uh, some of my other children move back and forth back and forth, they move out, they move back in. So I'm thinking of putting a revolving door in the front door. Now, wait a minute. What's the connection between worms in the refrigerator and frogs in the, your daughter's room? What do you think she feeds the worms, uh, the two? Oh. She feeds them to the frogs with a big pair of tweezers. And the little bloody things, they climb up, they got little suckers on their feet, and they climb up the side of the glass, you know? Get out of here, Loretta. <laughs> and she's got three sizes. She's got a big frog, a little frog, a middle-sized frog, and a little frog. And she went off to college, and we were taking care of the frogs, and we found a lump in the big frog, and we thought he ate the little frog, but we found the little frog eventually. What was the lump? I think my husband fed it three worms. One oh, worm too many. One worm too many, yeah, I know. We, well, see, we two worm frog, was it? I guess yeah. so. I see, yeah. The, the medium one is a one worm frog. Oh, yeah, you got one, one worm frogs, two worm frogs, the then there you three worm frogs. Worms. The right. little one, you have to go out and catch dead flies. You got to suck. Go flies, that's right. Was it, is it a four fly frog? No, he's only one fly. A one fly frog? frog. Oh, that yeah, must be a very a small frog. Yeah, he is. He's real tiny about that thing. Now, uh, when is your daughter coming back? Four years, so I sent it down to one of my other... I sent all the frogs down to one of my other daughters that live in Huntington Beach. What she is she going to do? Is she going to eat them? No, she's going to feed them and raise them. And then I... she's going to eat them. Hey, Gene? Yeah, what? Gene, could I just ask you to do something? What? Shut up. <laughs> Thank you, McLean. I like you, too. <laughs> Jeez. Well... I guess we've all learned more about frogs than we cared to learn, didn't we? Now, Larry, you start with A or B. A, Gene. All right, here we go with A. <laughs> Sid said. Mm, Sid said. Sid said. That girl is really unusual looking. She has the body of a jaguar and the face of a blank. <laughs> right. Body of a jaguar and the face of a blank. All right, Larry. Sid said that girl is really unusual looking. She has the body of a jaguar and the face of... A monkey. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. He's... Yeah. Uh, I said, and the face of a blank to them. So in fairness, you should say a face of a blank. Oh, even though it doesn't say A, I accidentally ad-libbed an A in there. But you say a monkey? Correct. All right. 
That's a perfectly acceptable answer. And we'll see if anybody else occurred. Larry said monkey click, didn't he? He said monkey. Yeah. He said monkey, yeah. yeah. Very well, fast. He, yeah, right. That's Jack Law. I, well, we were thinking along the other lines. We are thinking of automobiles, if you will. We said uh, cougar. A cougar. Oh, yeah, there is a cougar automobile made mm -hmm. by the Ford Company. What do you say? Well, you know, darling, I live in Beverly Hills, so when you, as soon as you say Jaguar to me, I immediately think of an automobile. I would never occur to me to think of a pussycat or anything like that. So I said a Model T Ford. A Model T Ford. Yeah. Imagine someone born in Maine talking like that. <laughs> a Mustang. A Mustang. <laughs> All right. Larry had monkey in mind here. Yes, Unusual-looking girl, body of a jaguar, the face of a... Yeah, well, we were, some of us were, were thinking in the automobile way, and I just thought VW right. conjured up an interesting <laughs> image. None yeah, of I you think did. It, How I upsetting. think it's quite interesting it's and amusing. I don't care what you say. Thank you very much. I liked it, Lynn. You liked it? Thank yes, you. Yes, so yeah. far, <laughs> So far, it looks as if Larry was not thinking of an automobile, and I've, I, I know everybody's uh, seen the uh, probably the 81 uh, monkeys. The 81 monkey. <laughs> and the 82 is supposed to be dynamite. I really? Myself am, uh, Diesel engines? Buying... What? Diesel engines? Uh, no, I don't think. Uh, I think uh, they just go on about uh, two pounds of bananas and a... Uh, oh, I see, yeah. RC Cola. Right. I myself am going to buy the new Moose. Aha, uh -huh, that's a wonderful car. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> You're going through the motions and doing very well. Thank I'll you. Hang in there. Do you like this outfit? Oh, I love that outfit, yes. Because I had a very traumatic experience in this outfit the other day. Oh, what happened? What is it, you ask? I'll yes. tell you. I was walking down Hollywood Boulevard. I, on my way to my David Craig class. I love my David Craig class. And this, uh, somebody tapped on my shoulder. I thought, oh, well, they're going to say, oh, gee, we like John the Bob Newhart show. And I turned around, and a woman in a lot of plastic said, honey, you're never going to turn any tricks if you dress like that. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Now, wait a minute. Tell him, tell him the truth, but tell him the not, end. Come tell over the, here. Come over here. So that is... Well, she said it happened twice. That is not the kind of dress... Oh, look. I mean, this is a perfectly smart... It's beautiful. That's a perfectly chic dress, and I hope you belted her in the mouth. Well, well tell, her what ha tell him what happened never before. Mind. Never mind. Oh. It happened to her twice. It happened a year ago. <laughs> I mean, that's... In a, the same you outfit? You think maybe I'm in the wrong profession? <laughs> Could be. Have you got an Never answer for us? I have a little something to fall back on, right. so to speak. <laughs> Her hooker karma is fabulous. <laughs> yeah, my hooker karma is not too good. Edsel. Edsel. She's a really unusually girl, body of a jaguar, and the face of a, an Edsel. So there we are with right, his, and yours will be long in a moment. Now this for you, friends. All right, here we go. You ready, Loretta? What town do you live in, Loretta? Torrance. Torrance, all right. At the French restaurant, the waiter said to Harry, you like this stew? It is a creme de la creme. And Harry said, creme de la creme, it tastes more like blank de la blank. <laughs> you got a question to ask? Come over here. Uh, out of microphone range. I'll put my mic on. She said that was fun. She didn't have a question. She just wanted to... <laughs> Here we go. At the French restaurant, the waiter said to Harry, you like this too? It is our creme de la creme. And Harry said, creme de la creme, it tastes more like blank de la blank. Do do la do do. <laughs> That's your euphorism. <laughs> euphorism. <laughs> All right. What do you guys say? <laughs> I want you to know, Gene, you know, when I show these cards, the writing looks really bad, right? Yeah, because... But you know I'm writing with, you know, this... You're thing. writing with your left hand. Oh, I hand. can write well, yeah. French well. Sure. Well, really, thank you. Because you have to hold him up with, uh, I mean, he, he'd fall off your knee, wouldn't he? Yeah, I'd fall off his creme de la creme. Oh, right. <laughs> yes. Okay, well, we came to... We thought about this, and we yeah. came to this conclusion. Mush de la mush. Mush de la mush. Creme de la creme tastes more Maybe like not. mush Maybe de la mush. All right. Now, this is a little play on words, and I leave it to the judges as to whether or not it is a match. I hope they'll be lenient. The woman has seven children. Just show us Several the of them answer. are living That's at all. home. <laughs> right. Just God show us knows the answer. she probably needs Just a lot of help. Just show us the help. answer. A crepe de la crepe. 
<laughs> Late. Uh, All right, well, Charles. Okay. <laughs> Just look at this man over here holding up a sign at his age saying Juju la Juju. <laughs> I mean, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Is yes. there any wonder his personal life is a shambles? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Rob. He doesn't understand a word anymore. No, he doesn't. Garbage. Garbage de la garbage. All right. Harry, the waiter, said, you like the stutes are creme mm. de la creme? Harry said, creme de la creme, it tastes more like blank de la blank. Mm. This is my children's favorite word, yuck de la yuck. Yuck de la yuck. Yes. That's uh, original. Uh, All right. Don't be so cold. <laughs> oh, what? No, oh, it's, it's cold, wonderful. Yes. Thank you, better? much oh, better, good. yes. I need all the support I can get. <laughs> Max Lane. Okay. Well, uh, I don't think it's funny to make fun of a woman who has worms. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Take her down to the vet first thing next week and have that fixed. Yes. I said, do a la doo doo. Do a la doo doo. That's a Johnny Mercer song, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And right. the uh, do a la doo doo. Andrew Sisters. Yeah. All right. And uh, Marcia. Now we're going to Marcia. It's shocking. It's just like shocking crap. behavior. Yeah. Grown people sitting here talking about doo doo. Right. Well, that's when you could be talking about caca. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I just, double on under the euphemism. Now, we go to round two. Loretta, you're ahead. Two to nothing. So that means you have to go first. Well, B was good last time. I'll take B again. All right. Let's see what B says. Sid said, you know you've got a problem with your girlfriend when all she wants to do is run her fingers through your blank. <laughs> McLean will give you an answer. <laughs> Wanna look it over, Loretta? I don't think we're gonna find any other answer. I'm stuck with the one I've got. All right, she's ready if you're ready. You know you've got a problem with your girlfriend when all she wants to do is run her fingers through your blank. Your wallet. Very good, Loretta. Very good, good answer. Yeah. Well, Loretta came up with a pretty good answer, didn't she? Good answer, yes. It was a, indeed a good answer, uh, Loretta. But uh, we came up with this particular one, carpet, if you will. Run her fingers through your carpet. Carpet. Huh? Carpet. You know, like. You know, Boy, just, that you know. girl is weird. <laughs> right. Is she your friend, Lester? No, no, I just heard about her. Oh, I see. All right. Yeah. Well, I just... <laughs> now, Let me minute. see. I'm not sure... What did that say, last... Charles? Absolutely the worst answer possible award? <laughs> he... His last answer was the worst answer possible. Garbage. Well, really, honestly... No, I couldn't think of anything, but I thought this was interesting and provocative. I said, uh, uh, the carburetor in your new Honda. <laughs> Oh, I love it when she gets butch. <laughs> well, you know, you know got honey, a problem. I'm look at my sweater. Am oh, I butch or what? I Hold mean, on. I'm no, very just, butch. Uh, now listen to this for a second here. Auto you know you got a problem with your girlfriend. All she wants to do is run her fingers through the carburetor of your Honda. It ain't bad when you think about it, right? Yeah, that's so weird. All right, I'll buy that one. What do you say? Even the dummy is upset. <laughs> <laughs> oh, toupee. Aha! Aha! Go ahead. No, I'm Wouldn't not going to... touch gonna... it with a barge, Paul. I'm not doing the obvious jokes here. Well, and when your girlfriend, all she wants to do is run her fingers through your... Well, you see, I knew that Loretta and I would get along because we keep worms in our refrigerator, too, but they're for our tropical fish, and so I, of course, knew Wallet was Aha! indeed the perfect bravo, guy. Bravo. Yeah. Yay, Lynn! Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's needs... three for her. That means you need three to tie and four to win, but now this for you. Here again, the star of our show, Gene Rayburn. Yeah. Ready, Larry? Ready. Larry needs three to tie and four to win. Oh. Mm. Arnold okay. said, there's too much violence on television. Mm -hmm. I just saw a new game show called Celebrity Blanking. <laughs> Help 
question. Give an answer or two here and there. Between the two of you guys, you've been doing very well. <laughs> Arnold said, there's too much violence on television. I just saw a new game show called Celebrity Blanking. Killing. Celebrity Killing. All right, let's see if anybody thought of that up here. What do you say, gentlemen? Well, it's uh, uh, kind of mugging. Mugging. That's a good answer. Now, I think this is a match, and if you got this panel, you'd get about $4 worth of talent. Celebrity shootout. <laughs> All right. That's not shootout. a match? Well, you can miss, you see. What do you say, Chuck? Celebrity mugging. Mugging. All right, you got to bat match the bottom tier, Larry, to stay in the game. I, I think mine should be a, a match, because the result would be the same, shooting. Well, as uh, you know, you could miss with the gun, you see. Well, but, yeah. uh, well all right. Now, that means uh, Loretta wins the game. What do we have there? Killing. And McLean had mugging. So come on down, Loretta. Take your place in the blue dot there. And uh, we'll uh, spin Larry off here. But he'll be back later for game right. number two. Okay, Larry? See you later. Now. Ready to have a go at it. Good luck to you, my dear. We pulled an audience and said, write down your best answer to this. Girly blank. Girly blank. What do you say? You want Lynn? Lynn. She seems to be trying to get your attention. Yeah, girly show. Girly show. There's one. How about McLean? He should know about girlies. Yeah. Well, thank you, Worms. Um, <laughs> I said girly picture. Girly picture? Yes. Charles. Where Brett got her star. Girly magazine. Girly magazine. Girly magazine, girly picture, and girly show. Do you want one of those, or do you have a more original idea or a better idea? No, I mouthed with uh, Charles. I'll say magazine. Yeah. Girly yeah. magazine. Yeah. Girly magazine is what she wants. So let's uh, go over there and see if we've got a girly magazine <laughs> somewhere there. May we see the bottom one, please? Girly talk. <laughs> That was an alert song girl that talk. day. Let's take a look at the next one, please. Girly Magazine, congratulations to you. What do you think's on top, Loretta? Girly Pick. Show? Slide it. Girly Slide it. Should girly have Show. With fellow Wormer, you see. That's right. Fellow, right. fellow Wormer would have known there. Yeah. Now you've got $250, means the least you'll play for is $2,500. But we want you to spin the wheel and see if you can double it up to $5,000. Go! Close. You're playing for $2,500, a not inconsiderable amount. Good luck to you. Remember, your job is to match Lynn. Here it is. He's a blank. He's a blank. He's a blank. <laughs> He's a... I hope this is an American expression. All right. Your job is to match Lynn. What do you say to this? Nerd. He's a nerd. Very she good. does have seven kids, doesn't she? Yeah. And uh, we'll see what Lynn says. Well, well, you. it depends how you read this. It almost could read nerd, nerd. but I sort of think it's a card. He's a card. Yes. He's a card. card. I'm sorry about yeah. that. All right. Uh, Loretta, you have $250. You're going to have a shot at game number two a little bit later, but right now we do a little business with America. Thank you all. You were wonderful. Gene Raver, join us next time for the match game. Goodbye. Get ready to match the stars. Bart Braverman, Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Marley, from Falcon Track, Abby Dalton, McLean Stevenson, and Marsha Wallace as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game. And now, here's the star of Match Game, Gene Ryder. You outdo yourself. You really... I love this jacket. Outdo yourself. Thank you, Palm Beach and Company. Mm. The why anybody would make a tie out of a bathrobe yes. is beyond me. <laughs> That's a nifty, neat. Well, I had planned to be here. Oh, wait a minute, wait, wait. I'm tied up in the bathroom. And if Charles ever does that to me again. Charles he locked you in the bathroom? Tied me down to the seat. Oh. Charles did it. Isn't there so. a home she could go to? No. Nearer, 
I kind of do. No, no, no. Come on now. Let's let's not now. Let's uh, get Bob Haldane down here. A little applause for old Bob for one game. Come on now, Bob. All right, right there on the blue dot. If you were with us yesterday, you will remember that. He won the game just about the time it expired, and uh, we're going to have a go at the big money now. Good luck to you, sir. You could oh, win you. over $10,000 here. Uh, we polled the studio audience, and we said, write down your best answer to this. Over your blank. All right. Now, three of the six stars will give you some assistance, Bob. I see that most of them are averting your gaze <laughs> there and turning their heads so that you won't call on them. Bob. Over your head. Over your head. That's good. One. Uh, McLean. Huh? <laughs> You're on. Oh. Here you go. Yeah, there you go. That's a good one. Right. I just happened to think of it. Over your shoulder. Uh huh. Now. Oh, Marcia has one. Oh, Marcia. Marcia has two. If you start off with me, it'll be over your dead body. Aha. Yeah. Uh -huh. Over my, over my dead Charles? body. No, there's one. With, there's about. one we should have done in honor of McLean. What? Over your cold. <laughs> <laughs> See, right. it's over my dead body. But if you sound right. authoritative, huh, they'll follow me anywhere. Sure, Look that's at them. right. They applauded that. They sounded that's good right. to them. If but I remember when East Side Story was up there. So let's not be too quick. I I agree. Oh, over your head, over your shoulder, over your dead body. Those are the three. Do you want one of those or one of your own? I'm going to go with. Over your head. Over your head. All right. That was Bart's answer. Let's uh, reveal the $100 response. Over your shoulder. All right. That's one that was up there. The next one says, over your dead body. See? Right. Get an Absolutely awful goofy right. group in here. Yeah. All right. Over your head is what he wants. Does he get it? Yeah. Yes, he does. Very good. <laughs> Bart says he may convert. <laughs> uh, Bob, uh, the congregational minister here, is wearing a tie that says Shalom. And well, then he may convert. Covering all bases here. Now, Bob, you've got 500 bucks here. That means the least you'll play for is $5,000. But the good Lord willing, <laughs> you can play for $7,000 here if you get a lucky spin. Not too hard because it's a well-oiled wheel. But aren't we all? And uh, <laughs> have a go at it. That a boy. Nice spin. Charlie, Charlie. That's what we call a near miss, Bob. A long miss. There. Right there, if you wouldn't, please. Good luck. Listen, you're playing for $5,000. Now, that's pretty good. Chuck, you ready? Yo! Right. <laughs> I love you when you're butch, baby. Blank. Pancakes. Take a look at it, Bob. I'll show it to Charles just to make sure you both understand. Forget that. Bob, your job is to match Charles. If you do that, you get $5,000. Now, let's see if you can get on the same wavelength with him. What do you say? I think he said buckwheat. Buckwheat pancakes. Buckwheat. Oh, Bob. I'm sorry. I, there were a couple. Blueberry. I said buttermilk. Buttermilk. I'm sorry. Of course, you know, Brett's, a... Brett, Brett's church in Maine was uh, painted a beautiful buttermilk white. Oh, that's what right. That's true. I, uh, there was one that immediately popped Me, into my head, a very famous Aunt trade Jemima. name. Jemima. Aunt Jemima. Yeah. 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 Did you think of that? I thought of that, second. And you rejected it. Buckley. Yes, you did. Buckley yes. comes yeah. from Maine. Yeah, Not there. Right. We eat <laughs> buckwheat. buckwheat, up buckwheat up there, yeah. Oh, you eat a lot of buckwheat yeah. up there? Well, there's <laughs> always the collection on Sunday, so don't worry. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, let's get your opponent back here and go for game number two right now. Welcome back, Sue. Right over there, Bob. And have a seat. Was it lonely back there? Yep. Oh. All right, here we go. Good luck to both of you. Sue, A or B? A, please. Yes, ma'am. Mike, the musician, said, 
Some things just don't make sense, like playing a Rolling Stones song on a blank. <laughs> Song. Some things don't make sense, like playing a Rolling Stone song on a blank. I think they're ready. Mike, the musician, said some things just don't make sense, like playing a Rolling Stone song on a blank. Tuba. Tuba. That's in Congress. Tuba. You really reach far afield, don't you, Sue? Tuba. I don't know what they had in mind. All right. I have to love the tuba. Tuba. Is that possible to play a Rolling Stone song on a tuba? It depends on what you're on. I suppose it is. I, uh, I said playing a Rolling Stones song on a Beatles retrospective. And See, if you were well. having a Beatles retrospective... Then you would not play a Rolling Stones song? Well, it depends on what you're on. Yeah. All right. I suppose you could. Yes, ma'am. Now, as all American knows, we do five shows in one day, right? Yep. For five solid shows, I thought we were having an earthquake. I thought, well, we're having an earthquake, and I went, His leg and condition. it's him. He does this, and the he whole thing shakes, condition. and if you don't quit doing it, I'm going to go crazy. Right. Sure, mock the afflicted. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> but now, I said, the Rolling Stones, and now this is because I, the Rolling Stones, my children love the Rolling Stones and the Grateful Dead. Wake up, this is going to get more interesting. I'm going to ask questions <laughs> later. <laughs> now, is I the juice harp, or is it juice harp? <laughs> On a frozen juice harp. All right, it's one of the juice two. Harp. It's either juice harp or juice harp. Well, which one it's is it? It's actually juice Depending harp. Depending if you want to listen to music or you're thirsty. It doesn't matter. Well, if you're what an anti-Semite, I guess it's juice harp. No, it's, if, you're, it's, if, you're, if, you're, if you're just no. not, it's your... It, it's your it actually juice. is juice harp, but some people of the Hebraic persuasion do get offended when you call it that. Yeah. But they'll get offended no matter what. I wonder what, how so. it got its name. Well, let's not go into that. It's very juicy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> if you play the horror. Violin. Violin is Charles' response. Some things just don't make sense, like playing a what Rolling Stones record uh, song on a... Well, this is an ill wind that no one blows good, an accordion. An accordion. She's only kidding, Lawrence Welk, wherever you are. No, I'm not. No, you're not. Uh, she's not kidding, Lawrence Welk. She means every word of it. Fold your accordion. Here we go, McLean. I think Lawrence Welk is probably one of the greatest musicians in the world. He probably could handle a Rolling Stones medley. Dynamite. You think so? <laughs> How would he do it? A one and a two. Just like that. <laughs> oh. I couldn't think of a thing, so I just copied your answer and said accordion. Oh, you did? <laughs> well, any in Congress, anyway. I didn't copy nobody on this. I just happened to not be too nuts about it. Remember that? Lady of Spain, I yeah. adore you. Accordion. <laughs> accordion. <laughs> Harp would have been in Congress. Harpsichord, all of those sure. things. Well, sure. Right. Tuba was bad enough. Yes, right. Oh, all right. Bob, we're going to do a little commercial here, and then we'll come right back to you for your round one question. This for you. Here we go. Ready, Bob? Yes. All right. Round one question. Sam said, this restaurant is really sleazy. How sleazy is it? Well, I'll tell you how sleazy it is. I ordered a bottle of wine, and instead of serving it in a silver bucket, they served it in a blank. <laughs> Sam said, this restaurant is really sleazy. I ordered a bottle of wine, and instead of serving it in a silver bucket, they served it in a blank. In a pot. 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 <laughs> I didn't know men of the cloth <laughs> yes, we have, say pot. We have to, too, yes. Oh, really? Pot, dear. thunder box? Pot. pot. P.O.T. P -O -T pot. pot. Hello. Hi. Hello there. As well you know, Mr. Haldane is no longer a man of the cloth. He is a person of the cloth. All right, a person of the cloth. Uh, uh, cloth and he's wrong anyway. Well, because... that doesn't make him a bad person. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Hefty bag. A hefty bag. All right, that's sleazy. Brett, what's sleazy? Now, I'm telling you, if you were a real uh, congregational minister, you would have said brown paper sack. All right. <laughs> That's sleazy. Getting a little closer, but still no cigar. An old can. An old can, also sleazy. No one we know, by the way. Right. <laughs> Instead of serving it in a silver bucket, they served it in a... I'm really ashamed of this answer, but I'm never going to that restaurant again. A bedpan. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, 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 o
Bobby. That's good. I'm like shocked. That. I'm Nay. I love it. <laughs> Well, there's nobody sleazier than you. Of course you'd love it. Right. How else? McLean? Blue nun. Um, I said a brown bag with a wino. Brown nice. bag with a wino. Only I left the in off. The it's a brow. matching wino. Oh, wino. Uh, with a, <laughs> wino. Well, I got awful. A brow bag. <laughs> brown. There it is. Brown right. Now it's right. Now it's like throw it away. Cup. All right, Marsha. What a better question for such a sleazy panel. It's a shame we couldn't... I came through with horse, you know. Yes, right. For the right reverend doggy bag. Doggy bag. That would be sleazy. So we have a tie score here that's of good, zero to zero. That's, and that's since uh, went she went first last time, we ask you to go first this time. Okay, I'll still stay with B. All right. Anne said it's tough being married to a fireman. The only way I can get him interested in romance is if I keep a blank in our bed. <laughs> Anne said, it's tough being married to a fireman. The only way I can get him interested in romance is if I keep a blank in our bed. A fire. A fire. A fire. <laughs> Warm him up a little, huh? right? It certainly gets your attention, doesn't it? <laughs> get hot, honey. All right, Bart. Well, um, what I said is actually a technical term, a three-banger which is a, uh, a three-banger... Well, wait, I happen to know, having chased a few fires in my time, a three-banger alarm, alarm right. bell. See, it's a three-banger Certain uh, a amount three of A three-banger yeah. is a triple alarm. Yeah. That's a triple when three alarm. stations respond to a fire. Oh, However, really? it makes a sort of interesting double entendre in this yes, sense. Yes, in this context, of course. <laughs> Come in. Now, yes. as most of America is aware, when you are a fireman, you work 24 hours a day at a crack, and then you work 48 hours... And so you're never alone. You're always with your other friends, right? So I said the only way she, he could ever, well, whatever it was she wanted him to do, was to get another fireman in the bed. I keep a fireman in the bed. All right, Charles. Sparing those two awfully boring stories, I just offer the correct answer. Fire. Oh. All right, one for that. Abby, are you going to light his fire? This is something I've never seen any fireman without. A hose. A hose. Oh, I threw that one out, Abby. You did Tough being married to fireman. The only way I can get him interested in romance is if I keep a blank in our bed, McLean. No idea what this means. However, I did write it. Ladder. Ladder. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it means either. Well, thank you. But we all seem to be amused by it. To stand it just that's the whole thing, isn't it? Yeah, I guess so. Because yeah. in bed you just go one step at a time. That's oh, right. right. Right, exactly. One step at a time. Yes, never get rung up on anything. Right. Marcia. I like all these ideas. I'm making a note of all of them if I ever get lucky again, hon. <laughs> bell. A bell. Yeah. Well, yeah, that bell right. goes off, she goes crazy. Right. <laughs> Sort of like All right, Paul. Sue, it's down to you, my dear. Now, you need one to tie and two to win. You're kind of in the driver's seat here, Sue. Here it is. <laughs> Out at the home, old man Periwinkle said, You really turned me on. <laughs> I've always adored women with malocclusions. <laughs> it arouses me. Show me your malocclusion. Oh, I love your malocclusion. <laughs> You're really mad. He says, I don't get much exercise anymore. Why, well, I haven't even blinked since 1949. I don't get much exercise anymore. So have you thought about this carefully now? Let's see if you can, how many of the stars you can match. I guess he's red. Out of the home, old man Perringle said... I don't get much exercise anymore. Why, I haven't even blanked since 1949. Jogged. You know, I think you're going to back into it here and win with one, pal. Now, you would expect these dingbats to say jogged? You would. Well, I don't think it's going to happen if I had to make a guess. It's not what do you going say? to happen in this seat, I can tell you. Hiccuped. Hiccup. All right. <laughs> See, that's very little because he's old, see? Oh, what you say? Man was so exhausted he hadn't even belt. All right. Walk. Walk. 
All right. Long way from jogging, Sue. Mm. Old man Periwinkle. What'd you I, say, Abby? I don't think they even knew what jogging was in 1949. No. Had to do with making cheese or something. Right. Got up. I haven't even got up since 1949. <laughs> yes. McLean? I, uh, simply wrote blinked or rolled over. Blinked or rolled <laughs> over. They got to match Marsha to stay in the game. More I'm, pressure. I'm, just my favorite thing. Right. Well, I didn't really know, so you know... Dolly Parton, Howard Cursell, boobs or wee-wee usually gets it. <laughs> so I tried this one, and it didn't work either. No, all right. So that means Bob wins. Come on down, Bob. All right, Sam, you would? Well, Sue, we have some wonderful gifts for you. We're going to send you a year-old tuna fish sandwich <laughs> and all kinds of wonderful things that I know you can use. Thank you for being with us. We'll roll her off and roll this message for America. And the star of our show, Gene Rayburn. Thank you, John. Ready? Let's go. We've been here before. We pulled an audience and said, write down your best answer to this. I told you blank. Okay, Abby. I told you so. Of course. One. Bart. What I heard all my teenage life, I told you not to. Okay, Brett. He called on you, dear. I know, Jack. <laughs> I want to give him the right answer because I had it before. You see, and I, I told you. I told you not to do that. All right, I told you not to do it. I told you not to. What did I tell and I told you so. I'll go with yeah, I told, told you so. I told, I told you, you so is what he wants. Ooh, ooh. All right. Let's find out if it's up there and if so, where. May we see the bottom one, if you please. I told you I would, is there. And now the next oh, one says... Well, yes, that's the... I told you to shut up. Uh-huh. How many times have I told you to shut up already? Well, I think you got a pretty good shot at it here. Uh, Bob, let's see. I told you what? So, and a boy. All right, congratulations. Uh-huh. That's uh -huh. the second time I've been kissed by a minister. Right. Up here, if you would, please, to see if you're going to play for 5000 or $10,000. Give it a spin. Not too hard. Then away we go. All right. Perfect. All right. Good luck to you for $5,000. All right, Brett, here we go. Higher and blank. No help from the audience, please. Higher and blank. H-I-G-H-E-R. Your job is to match bread. If you do that, you get $5,000. Here we go. Higher and higher. Higher and higher. Well, let's find out right now, Brett. Didn't I tell you about that darned organ? Didn't I tell you about that congregational church? Hallelujah! Didn't I tell you about all... We don't say hallelujah in the congregational hallelujah. church. Hallelujah! Can I get it? say hallelujah. Hallelujah. A wonderful bunch up here. Thank you all. Join us next time for the match game. Gene Raven, goodbye.